Thank you very much. You know I like it. Keep doing it. I don't want to interrupt you. Tell me can you keep it up? Hey, call. Am I going to bump you up to the top of my list? That's why I'm the best, huh? Every time we get one. Oh! I want you to stay home. <laughs> we will play until 2 a.m., guys. Jason Mercier, he went with his instincts, he made the call. There's the professional level, and there's the Ivy League. Double! Sebastian Pauli coming to terms with what he has just achieved. Nicky Corrin has done it! Two main event titles! Sebastian Mallets has gone from poker fanboy to poker champion. This is why people love the EDT. Hello once again, welcome to Paris and the PokerStars European Poker Tour. It's the penultimate day of the EPT Paris main event in partnership with the Club Barrier. We're down to two tables, 15 players remain. By the end of the day, we'll be down to one table, our ambition to get to the final six. Hopefully you can join us for all of today and tomorrow, and hopefully you can join in the conversation in the live chat on Twitch, and YouTube, and on Twitter, where we use the hashtag PokerStarsTV. And of course, there's plenty of stuff from around the event available to see on our Facebook page and on our Insta. I am James Hartigan alongside me today, Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And Nick Walsh. Hello, guys. Thank you so much for having me today. Yep, playing down to six. That's where we're at. Playing for big cash money today. Having whittled through this field, across days one, two, three, and four. Now Whittled. just 15 players remain. Absolutely. And here's how we got to 15. Here's what happened yesterday. 47 players returned for day four, and not even the mighty widget can predict the rate of eliminations. Three former champs were looking for the double, but all three fell short on the brink of glory. Nice. Down to two tables. Peter Jorgner's prayers were answered with a 10 on the turn. And we ended the night with 15 happy players, including Ras Van Balea. He ran up an impressive number of KOs on his way to the chip lead. Let's look at the stacks of all 15 players, starting with the shorter stacks. No one short stacked. Sal Wilf, 22 bigs. Nicholas Ustet, the online legend that is Lena 900, 23 bigs. Similar size stack for Arta Conan. And then you've got Medi Chawi, Fabrice Bigot, Mattia de Meglio, and Sven Stock, all around the 30, 35 big blind mark. That is a key observation, Nick. Everyone kind of bunched together. Yeah, absolutely, and that's obviously going to play a big role in their decision-making as the ICM becomes much more important as we get to these bigger pay jumps and, of course, that final table where the pay jumps are the largest. Yeah, right now everyone has locked up 59,300 euros, but it won't be long until we, until we start hitting the six-figure scores. Uh, let's look at the top end of the leaderboard. Harry Lodge, Brian Delaney sit inside the top eight, but have below-average stacks. Constantin Held was chip leader for most of yesterday. Now sits in sixth. If you look at the top five, we've got Henri Kasper from Estonia, Peter Jogner from Sweden, Denzel Speckman from the Netherlands, and then Johan Schultz, who's got more than 100 big blinds. And it is Ras van Balea from Romania. Year of Romania. Who is the commanding chip leader right now with more than 120 big blinds. When we get the action started, well, we'll be kicking off level 27. The blinds will be 30,000, 60,000 with a 60K big blind ante. Can you see this huge disparity from the top five to everyone else? Yes. Should make for a very interesting dynamic as we prepare to get cards in the air. And as you just referenced, Nick, with the ICM considerations that we'll look at with the prize money in just a moment. This is going to be the lineup at the feature table. And if you were watching our coverage last night, it is the same lineup. Same players taking their seats. 
And obviously I know that a lot of people are very excited to have Lena 900 making his deepest ever run in a live event. Certainly his deepest ever run in an EPT main event. But is on the short side right now with 23 bigs. Some of those short stacks are going to double up. Not all of them are going to go out in that order. Good point. Well made. So let's talk prize money, shall we? Once we hit 10th place, we're going to see an increase in prize money with every single elimination. Six-figure scores for everyone who makes the final nine, apart from the winner, who gets more than a million, 1.17 million euros. We're going to see that sum of money paid out tomorrow, along with the main event trophy presented. And a reminder, you can join our final table action from 1 p.m. Central European time tomorrow. That's when we kick off the stream on the final day, 1 o'clock local time. But right now, we're going to get the action started on the penultimate day, day five, Underway, let's kick off level 37, 30, 60 blinds. Let's shuffle up and deal. <laughs> and one of the day underway on the main stage. And action is going to start on Mehdi Chawi, who is under the gun. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a it was the exact same thing. Shall we? On, on you. It's on me? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it is on me. Shall we? Obviously, shot clock still in play. Additional time bank cards distributed this morning. An additional six, adding to whatever the players brought over from yesterday. And it's Nicholas Ostad who's going to get the action started, raising under the gun plus one with ace queen, raising to 125,000. Oh. Just bear in mind as well, guys, everybody who's been at this feature table or has had any time at the feature table over the last couple of days has had the opportunity to now potentially review some of that footage from the stream. Obviously, game integrity purposes, we are on a 30 minute delay, but can go back, rewatch VODs, and try and figure out. Any information that might benefit benefit them going into day five here. You saw I saw like 1 1 at 1 least 4. one of these players starting charts at breakfast this morning. Charts all day. You know I'm a big chart guy, Joe. You know that, right? So Harry Lodge defends his big blind with 10-5 of clubs. We have an 8-8-6 eight, eight, flop. And... Lena 900 retains his advantage. 69% favorite here with ace queen high. Seeing that Nick ate three burgers last night before bed, I'm sure he's a huge fan of charting. <laughs> three of clubs on the turn, and Ari Lodge picks up the flush draw. About as best as you could hope for with 10-5. And with no continuation bet from Osted, Harry is going to lead the turn. Yeah, if you are going to have any checkbacks with ace highs on these textures, you absolutely in one million years can never fold the turn if you have a hand as strong as ace queen because your opponents will lead with flush draws. They will lead with gut shots. They will lead with stronger straight draws, not just gut shots as well. They will just have complete airball bluffs as well. And the queen is a very nice run out. Obviously, Harry's going to be aware that the queen is one of the cards that will connect with some, some of his uh, check back range. Might still be tempted to represent anyway, because obviously ace king still might have to fold. Ace jack might still have to fold. Ace 10 might still have to fold. The queen doesn't always hit him, but he's going to be aware of the fact that he's going to be one of them. So really could go either way on the river here. Harry bet 160,000 on the turn, checks the river, and now we see if Ulstep wants to go for value on the river. Does indeed, betting 400,000 into a pot of 660,000. Harry Lodge folds. Uh, Peso H watching on YouTube says, is Bauman still in? We literally went through the names and stacks of <laughs> all 15 players remaining. Gail Bauman was eliminated yesterday. Her name was not on the list. And you're being eliminated today. You're banned. Thank you for your comment.
Don't use the excuse you were late. On time is late. Under the gun fold with 8-7. Ryan Delaney is out. Fabrice Bigot has passed. Peter Jogner folds. In fact, it's a round to Saar Wilf on the button. 8-5 of spades. Saar, a former EPT finalist. Is the shortest stack at the start of the day, but is not short stacked. Has more than 20 bigs. Folds the button. Harry Lodge with King-10 in the small blind. Yeah, I, I dig that fold. You got position. You know what it's like, guys. You're, you're on the button. You want to play your buttons, right? 8-5 suited probably just a little bit too weak, especially when you're starting off 21 bigs and you're playing into Harry. You're playing into Harry, and also, you know, you're raising from a position that the weakest of holdings is going to three-bet you out of the small blind. Yep. And Harry's definitely somebody that just takes all those spots, right? We've we seen it all day yesterday as well. Just such an accomplished player. Knows how to put on the pressure. You've got no answer at 21 big blinds. If you don't have a hand that you're willing to call with or shove with, you know, you really don't want to be in there with too many weaker holdings that you're just going to have to be giving up to three bets because you will get three bet a lot against uh, good players. So it was a call and then a check, blind v. blind. These hands are actually relatively strong, blind v. blind. I appreciate that Harry slowed down a little bit here. The effective stack, stack is about 27 bigs. So a pair of sixes for Chowy was ahead pre, is ahead post. Harry not really connecting with this board, has checked it. Nine, yeah, eight, it's a gut ten. shot. Okay, thank you. How do you just work that out right away? It's like looking at the matrix. Very slight check, and look at that. Always coming seven, and Harry Lodge rivers a straight. So I was about to say, maybe Nick, you can uh, tell me how flawed or correct this thinking is, is that when you got bottom pair there, right, and Harry checks to you, you really don't want to give another card, but you're not really going to fold out much either, I assume. You're not going to fold out many better hands. You're not going to fold out even dr such a draw-heavy board, too. You mean on the flop or on the turn? On the turn, you know, yeah. Given the opportunity to bet the six, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like probably if it were me, I'm going to go ahead and bet flop a lot because yeah. if Harry's checking, he probably never has a top pair. He's going to lead his top pairs, right, a lot. Sure. If I meant has, the turn check more, but yeah. Sure. I mean, I think on the turn, if you're not getting any more action, you probably just have the best hand. It requires a lot of protection. So I actually would have bet flop or bet turn in this situation for sure. I think, you're, I think we would have probably done the same thing, Joe. Um, but... I don't know if Harry having check flop check turn would give up king 10 on the turn, given mm -hmm. the fact that he's already kind of under repped king high. And he has the gut shot with two overs. And he gets called. Shall we? Calls the value bet of 180,000. And Harry Lodge will add 300K to his stack. Now has 38 big blinds. Shall we drops down below the 25 big blind mark. Yeah, I think I would have just liked to have seen a, a bet from Chowie there. I mean, I think having a six specifically, like he's, his hand is quite disguised. If if Harry has a six, some of the time he will just check flop when it's when he has second pair. And I think betting flop right away immediately gets you action from some traps that uh, that were there pre-flop, some better ace highs that you've now sort of um, you've beaten on the flop. Uh, the domination rotation, for example. Some king highs will just check call there on the flop because they think you're just going to bet at any board that you're not betting at. So you get plenty of value, but you also protect your hand. And I think probably two bets there from the six would have would have done the job. Even just a decent one on the flop might have won that pot. So what good is value, getting value with a pair of sixes there if it's very hard to get to showdown? Well, I think the point is that you probably don't want to get to show it on too often. So by betting in position with the A6, okay. you're, you're just going to deny equity from some of those. But That I mean, part I can understand. Right, okay. yeah. But but I think also my, my point is that, you know, you don't really want to be betting in a situation where there is no value because, of course, you're <coughs> bluffing or, you, or you're getting value. When you have a, a made hand as strong as that, I think you're 
trying to get value from some of those, but probably you'd prefer if they just get out of the way a lot of the time because you really don't want to be outdrawn in the way we saw. So a raise from Jorgner with King Jack suited. Ostert defends with 10-6, and it's top pair for the pre-flop aggressor. Ostert has checked to him. This guy got kicked out of the Hemsworth brothers for being too handsome. He has continued. For 90,000. Adios. You're on the move as well. Who's on the move? Yeah, someone back there. Yeah. As mm -hmm. Lena 900 folds, I think Brian yeah. Delaney yeah. might be moved off the feature table because I think we need to balance because I think something has just happened at the other table. Let's check in on what happened. Okay, you'll be back on the Sven Stock Ooh. all in with Kings against Belea's aces. A brutal, sick cooler in the first few minutes of day five. And spades not a factor. Oh, stonk. Sven Stock drawing thin. And eliminated in 15th place. The great stonk market crash of 2023. Sven Stock celebrated his birthday yesterday. Now he cashes out in 15th place for 59,300 euros. 14th will pay the same. Then there's another money jump. He was the one that was studying charts at breakfast, by the way. So a lot of good that did him. <laughs> Once again, what a waste of time. Should have been eating croissants. <laughs> and that means more chips for Balea. More chips for the year of Romania. So Razvan Balea qualified for this event for 530 euros. Been playing poker for quite a few years now. Has $1.25 million in online caches, 112K in live caches. Says he plays around five days a week, but studies even more than he plays. That's a good place to live, people. Take note. Meanwhile, we are back at the feature table. We have had an under the gun raise from Peter Jorgnot with fives. He has been three bet by the other Swede at the table, Nicholas Ostet, who has ace 10, and Jorgnot has folded the fives. Nick, look, going after that perceived wide under the gun range from one of the chip leaders. Jezrex watching on Twitch says, how far is CDG from the venue? I flew into that airport and I'd say it took about 25, 30 minutes in a taxi? Yeah, without traffic. I think sometimes the traffic can be savage. I have no recollection of the ride. The event is actually being played at the Hyatt Regency Etoile, close to the Arc de Triomphe. Close to the Canadian Embassy. <laughs> Very close indeed. A little bit too close. We've had under the gun race here from Denzel Speckman with Queen Jack. Sar Wolf with 9-8 suited folds. Speckman, the biggest stack at the table. Yeah, 88 big blinds. By the way, word from the other table, considering that Stock starts Ooh. the day with a stack of 2.1 million, there's a very good chance that having just knocked him out, Raz Van Balea is over 9 million chips now. <laughs> wow, year of Romania. Yep, Jorgner wakes up with Ace-King in the big. 
What's he What's he sporting there on the wrist there, James? What is that? What do we got? Oh, we got one there too, Speckman. Watch on watch action. Ac ac action. Self winding. What do you think of the movement? Good movement. How about the face? I got a nice face. What do you call the numbers? The numbers? They got good numbers on those? <laughs> Numerals. Numerals. Numerals, sure. Numer Numerals. But, but you were right with movement. You're right with faces. Speckman's going to call. Does have position. Number one and number two in chips. I love a good unnecessary confrontation. Let's go. Nine, seven, deuce. So ace high still ahead. Jorgen has continued for 300,000. Very speculative call from Speckman. Okay, five of clubs on the turn. Neither player has a club. This hand's just going to come down to who wants it more. That might be a Rolex Yachtmaster. Yeah, how are the hands on that thing? Good hands? I think it's a Yachtmaster <laughs> 2. Let me just check. Jorgna is not messing around. He's going to go again. 1.4 million in the pot. He's got literally ace high, no draw. Does have the best hand still, but honestly, a lot of players might be tempted to slow down on that turn given the action. 425 into a pot of 1.46. Gets the fold, well played Jorgna, takes it down. Nice hand, fight. Yacht Master. He removed? It takes the wrong page to the table. Oh, wow. That's what I told him. I think James might have hit the nail on the head, just seeing some <laughs> reference material here. Oh, yeah, the blue, uh, the blue dial. The blue bezel, excuse me. It's not one of my favorites. Oh wow! Bear in Shots mind, fired. No, no, no. I mean, look, everything's More like subjective. More like the knot master. Everything's subjective. It's just not one of my favorite designs. I personally would 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 not wear that. So just going over to the other table, where of course we now have Brian Delaney. He got moved off the feature table because we have to have two tables of seven. Uh, Delaney's an interesting story, by the way. Okay, I'm this listening. This is his first ever live tournament. What? He is an online PLO player, a very accomplished PLO player. Wow. And here oh, he is playing ball. live on the European yeah, Poker Tour for the ball. first time. Yeah, of course. Like, look, when you're used to playing a game that has five cards, <laughs> now you you jump down to two, it's like yeah, taking the weights off your ankles. Like Rock Lee. Yeah. Made me fall at night and so. He made you pull straight, so... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just waiting for the chat for us to jump in on that one, Joe. I mean, who is expecting your bluff? Jürgen has the graft at 10-9 of clubs. Yeah, yeah. It's even harder to find bluff. That exact hand, I guess. Like, just run a race. Oh, it's going to be Jorgna Speckman again. Round two. No, no. Blind v. Blind. No need. You're folding a nine anyway. Fuck you. <laughs> All right. Take it easy. <laughs> I did fold. <clears throat> you have to give him some credit. Like, All right. Sure. Blind, blind v. Hey. Blind action. Fold. And I'm here for it. He made a massive bluff against this. <laughs> but yeah. To him, that was really interesting. Wow. There we go. The Ace, I seven, five. We've got to top pair versus a flush draw. Action flop for sure. <laughs> I pulled it. Uh, I Joe, this is one of those weird ones where even if he turns the flush, the ace 10 still has the nut flush draw, still yeah. has the back door. These are two trains on the same okay. track right now. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely some chips going in the middle here. This is, uh, is going to be an interesting confrontation. What I've seen. Continuation bet from Speckman 185,000. He's still folding. He's still folding. Hmm? He's still want to fold? No. Because I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I 
30 lampes. Like a... Non, j'ai perdu un petit coup. 24, 25. Oh boy. Okay, oh boy. so that indeed is the flush for Yorkner, but of course Speckman has a redraw to the nut flush. The dance on YouTube says, James, are the players allowed to check their phones during the break? They could go on YouTube and check the gameplay of the other players, correct? And yes, they are allowed to use their phones. And it's just something you understand about the dynamic of the game. That if you're playing at the feature table, you do have access to that information. But everyone has access to the stream. Everyone has access to all the hands that were played. Correct, yeah. So guys, again, small bet here on the turn. There was 880K in the pot. Whoa. 225 is about a one quarter pot size. Whoa. Is he check raising? That is more than the original bet which oh, indicates wow. a raise. Wow, 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 did not expect that. I mean, ace-10 is just gonna be the best hand a lot of the time, plus you have the draw. A lot of players just choosing not to turn this hand into a jack raise very often. Obviously, 9 10 of club's pretty happy about this, but now concerned about possibly some overflushes, but not really, we're playing hold'em, guys. It just doesn't happen that often. Nine of diamonds, no change, 9 10 of club's still the best of it. Speckman, I don't think you're gonna get him to fold this hand, buddy. Slow it down. I know you got the blocker, but you also have mad showdown, brother. Would you say this is more the Jorgna supremacy or the Jorgna ultimatum? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, goodness. Is that a million? Well, there's 2.2 million in the pot. It's a bet of oh. 500,000. Sorry, guys. It looked like a lot more from here. Yeah, those green chips are 25 each, so a stack of 20 would be 500K. Thank you, James. 500, right? Such yeah, an easy easiest call of all time. Off. Yeah. And Speckman sees the flush, folds, and they will flip at the top of the leaderboard as far as this table is concerned. Peter Jorgner now playing more than 120 bigs. Denzel Speckman drops down to 50 bigs. In fact, he's now a below average stack. Peter Jorgner, the only player at the feature table who's got more than average. The average right now being 3.4 million. The Jorgner supremacy. I have to apologize, Chad. I actually thought the hands were reversed. That's why they thought the action was so <coughs> wild. I thought you check raised with ace 10 with the ace of clubs. It was the other way around. It was the flush raising. Yes, yeah. that makes more sense. Sorry, chat. My bad. Day five. You don't know that much apology. I know, but you know, if it was confusing what I was saying, that's probably why. <laughs> I thought he check raised with the with the top pair of the net flush draw. It was check raised with the flush. Makes more sense. Harry Lodge wants to get in on this flush action. Fun Champion asks, what went down yesterday with chat pros? I'm afraid to ask, but I'm still going to go ahead and ask. Yeah, it was a little bit feisty yesterday. And so, unfortunately, you're all being punished for the nefarious behavior of a minority. And chat pro Saste has been vetoed this week. No pizza party. So don't get me wrong. You're still allowed to comment. You're still allowed to provide your thoughts, but not everything will be accepted and bans will still be handed down. You might lose next Chat Pro Saturday at this rate. Not sure who's planning on streaming next Saturday, but you know, these, these have serious consequences, you guys. I'm sure one of our team pros will be online. Official internal memo, absolutely no chat pro Saturday for any <laughs> any poker star stream. I mean James is already looking for any reason to get rid of it. Once you lose me, then you're in big trouble. <laughs> if you guys start losing me, you know you're in big trouble. Probably the most tolerant for uh, for the chat chat pro Tom Foolery. And it was getting a little bit out, uh, out of line yesterday. Mommy's sure. got a hair trigger, right? <laughs> Mommy's upset all the time. But when you when you when you make Uncle Daddy mad, how about you? Twenty-four, twenty-five. What do you guys think, Yorgna, uh, to replace Henry Cavill in The Witcher? 
Wow, that's he's not a bad a shout. <laughs> he would make a great <laughs> witcher. Yeah. I'll talk to my guy over here first. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you need <laughs> In, yeah. <laughs> Don the deck. It's been nice having you. Goodbye. <laughs> And I took with the yeah, band. Frank, she told me you were injured. Yeah. Ari Lodge in the big yeah, blind with the Ochos. Little blind if you find action once more. I, mean, no, no, I think there's definitely got to be a raise here. Wolf, Thank by the way, only 21 crazy. big blinds effective. Oh, must be Peter Roth. Yeah, it is. <laughs> no messing around, just goes for here, the straight I'm all in. To not uh, riffle my ship all the time, but it's, it's tough. I, I got a 41 shot in my in my hand, so it's like for now it's okay, but you know it's no solution. It's just like. Patch we are going back to the other table. Ooh, ooh. We're on the river on an ace, king, ten, deuce, deuce board. Brian Delaney, having been balanced the table, is in action against Constantin Held, and Delaney is all in. We know that Constantin Held was ahead of Delaney in the rankings at the start of the day, and I think he still has him covered. So this is an all-in for Delaney. And do we know the board? Oh, that's a call. call. Yeah. So five deuce, that's trip deuces. Pocket tens, that's a full house. Ooh. So that is going to be a double up for Delaney. And Held is holding on, but only just. On a demon Held ride right now. The stacks are pretty close. Yeah. And I don't think Held's going to have much more than a couple of big blinds. I guess this is the sick cooler table. So Held actually has around 10 big blinds. So still short, still in the danger zone, danger zone. but crucially still alive. I wanted to try and decipher some degree, yeah. but like, I remember they did an experiment. I this question like, from Jezrax. Like Has a dealer ever been famous black, like player black, does? Like cocaine Is this asking if a dealer has become a poker <laughs> player? No, I think like, does a, does a dealer become a character? I think Sean the dealer from the World Series became a bit of a character for a little while. Right. <laughs> no offense, but if the dealer's becoming a character, they're probably not doing their job the way they should be. I mean, or of course, many of the dealers became players. I think that's also quite sure, a- Sure, of I mean, course. Somewhat, somewhat but I think, I think that's how I interpreted the question initially, but I think Joe's interpretation is correct. Right. It's asking if we have like a famous dealer. I mean, Elise the dealer became pretty famous just for her precision and how fast she is, and that's pretty cool. If you become famous for that reason, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Unfortunately, if you want to become a famous character, dealing is probably one of the worst ways you could do it because your, your job is really to be invisible. Yeah, and you need to be incredibly neutral too. I think people right. like people who are who have opinions and have a certain flair. You know, it's but, hard to have character and also be silent. <laughs> right, but also having said that, like you said, really people that are really good at dealing have their own kind of flair, but it's a very Not muted flair. Meanwhile, unleash the El Chapo Pablo Escobar jokes. Lol. <laughs> fair, fair. Uh, is this more more blind be blind guys? Yeah, shall we? Shall we? In the small blind, I think Mr. Asted's going to be raising it up here. So effective stack here, guys. About 20 bigs. Nicholas Asted has about 26. Uh, Chowie has about 20. But um, I think at this stage, it's going to be a raise and a fold a lot of the time. I'm trying that. If it works, I will. You should, you should read um, the books that is related to phase two one, like um, the pleasure trap, like okay. where it's actually explaining how everything you eat is related to your body and how it impacts it right, like on the long term. And one of like the chapter is actually related to sugar. And the other one is like the difference between feeling sweet in your mouth when you eat something and the impact of like sugar 
it's for example like sweet potatoes, it doesn't have added sugar inside. Where like related like just normal potatoes, they actually have like super high sugar uh, in the body when you eat them. So it might be like just good to just do some research before just deciding to cut every kind of sugar. Do your own research. <laughs> Void Speak says this guy about to start talking about horse meat. We have had some interesting food related conversations at the feature table over the last few days. But we have got Sar Wilf raising here with Queen 10 and Harry Lodge considering his options with Ace 8 of Spades. That is a three bet. Yeah, what were we talking about, guys? Wilf just is so handcuffed in these situations. He's just going to get. Three bets so mercilessly by Harry. One of our uh, one of our 2.1 million chip stacks. 36 big blinds to Sar Wilf's 19. I think the name is Ripple's Revolution. The name of the second book related okay. to. How yeah, no, I don't think he was asking any follow-up questions. This one is crap, which is super famous one. Yeah. I mean, sweet potatoes, sure, but have they tried the snail fries? That's what I want to know. Have you tried uh, looking up your star sign, how it relates to uh, gluten intake? I've been playing with my keyboard lately, only. Hashtag yeah. cringe nation. I'm a, I'm a Libra <laughs> with asparagus <laughs> rising. <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm a fan. I, I used to play a lot of rising. Like, so it must be feeling like playing the same game. All right, a raise and a fold from Wilf. And I, I mean, that's really been the theme of the last couple of days. When you will stop your By the way, I am with GTO Pone. Just ask for Jorgen's okay, diet and follow that. <laughs> yeah, amen. It's for breakfast, pull ups. <laughs> for lunch, sit ups. <laughs> Dinner, a baked potato. <laughs> but only sweet potatoes. A big sweet potato. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so Sar Wolf obviously having to raise fold quite a lot now. He's been at this feature table. We saw that a little bit yesterday with some King Queen suited. Now Queen 10 suited. What's he supposed to do, Joe? He's got the hands to play, but he, it's just hard to play back when you're that short. I get it. I totally feel that. No, really, what are you supposed to do, Joe? <laughs> Please tell me. I, I mean, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> so we're 30 minutes into the day, one elimination so far. Sven Stock, first man out, ran kings into aces, cash for 59-3. One more elimination, and then we have a money jump. We've got Denzel Speckman opening under the gun with ace-king here, and it's round to the blinds. Fabrice Bigot with ace-five in the small. Super Mega in the chat suggesting maybe just raise fold the old rip and dip. I appreciate the reference, buddy. And we've got four yep. deuce of clubs for Peter Jorgner. He folds as well. So raise and take it for Speckman, who lost a huge pot to Jorgner, <laughs> but is now being applauded for winning the blinds and ante. Thank you. He's got a railing crew. <clears throat> and when I say crew, I mean there's like one person on the rail who's clapping for him. Well done, Mugana. Respect, men. That's what I call him. He's multi he's multi oh, his like one person there. railing crew is a person of note. Oh, really? It's another Dutch pro. <laughs> Looks like it's Tom Vogelsau. Oh. And here is a hashtag fun fact from Stat Trick. Tom Vogelsang was the guy who chose Tuan Mulder's like horse avatar. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. Yeah, I to play the 10K. Pop up. Does he have a piece? No. no. Of course yeah. not, what do you expect? You don't Shall need we? this to, to rail a friend, do you? No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe to multi-table the 10K and rail, yes. But. Yeah. Speaking sure. of carbs, here comes a little artisanal sourdough. And Ace 5 suited has been raised. Nicholas Elstead's made it 125,000. Fabrice Bigot with Ace 10 on the button. I think he's going to lean towards a three bet here, guys. Yeah, and I'm wondering, ace five. The old ace five suited is sometimes a, a rip and dip. Yeah, it's definitely a rip and dip, but I think also of all the players most likely to rip and dip the ace five suited, it's going to be the online kid, right? Yeah, I just don't know. 
I guess he's got the right size sack for it. it does have some fold equity. It's not a snap call. I'd love to see it. Yes. Oh, yeah, baby. Let's go. Sourdough suited. Snap fold from the ace 10. Is this the first time we've ever seen this work, you guys? Is this the first time? Sour do's and sour don'ts. So that's how you do it. This whole time, we just needed Nicholas Astet to show us how to play it. Damn. So good. I didn't want to be predictive there, but when I saw ace five and then ace 10 on the button, I was like, it's happening. I'm sorry, if you see Lena 900 with ace five suited, there's only Sour one dough chance. is happening. It's only going to happen one way, you guys. Come on, let's go. 2 tables in action, 2 tables of 7, trying to get down to 1 table today. Still got most of level 27 to play. Blind's currently 30,000, 60,000 with a 60k big blind ante. Looks like it's going to be blind v blind. Speckman in the small versus Wilf in the big. That's been the theme of today, right? Blind v blind action. And I'm here for it. You guys know I little, love a little bit of blind v blind. Speckman going to raise to 175 here. Good old Sar Wilf. With the King-7 suited, same hand. I'd really like to see Sar run up his stack. I want to see a battle of the Zaddies. Sar Wilf versus Peter Jorgna. Yeah, and just to be clear as well, I was commenting just now on him having to raise fold quite a lot. I don't, I don't know if he's doing really much wrong. He's just been up against a lot of big hands or just being put in some really ugly situations against some very top players. King-7 suited, definitely a hand you want to be defending here in the big blind, though. He's going to take a little stab with King-high. Interesting. I, feel I mean, like a lot of people are going to peel King High too, right here. Yeah, if you're checking King High on this board, I don't think you're checking to give up too often. But also, a lot of players aren't going to bet their King Highs when they're checked to because they think they're just going to get check called by Ace High in this spot a lot of the time, right? So unless his intention is to barrel down here and try and get Ace Highs to fold, it's going to work this time. Very nice. Really, really interesting outcome there. It's kind of the texture where you see a lot of C bets from the King High as well. It's kind of unusual to see the small blind check there, I think, but just decides against it. Fair question from B My Girl. Lads, merch yeah. question. Oh, next the merch guy. Not seeing much EPT Paris garms being worn by the players. What's the crack? Any decent hoodies and tees? I have seen merch. The FPS stuff actually was really, really nice. I think that because this was I mean, such a huge event with a big turnout and lots of qualifiers. For this one, most of the I'm merch sure went to the actual qualifiers. Like and amount. now we're at these late yeah. stages yeah. where we're mostly just, pros. Uh, You're not seeing pros wear the merch. Mechanic, mechanic. Right, but if I can also yeah, point out, uh, our friend yeah, Fabrice like, Bigot is literally wearing one of the one of the merch hoodies. It's just very, very understated. It's just the white hoodie with some red, white, and blue in it. That's it right there. That's it. He's actually wearing it right there. That's the main EPT hoodie. There's just it's a not little FPS, just go. Go, like sort of decoration <laughs> near the zipper. I don't know, bro. <laughs> just call it off. So apparently, over at the other table, Constantine Held is using all of his time bank cards. Oh. Obviously, we know he's a short stack, and he's got a big decision. What's the held up? Obviously, he's waiting for someone to go broke at this table. That's what the hold up is. <laughs> Backman on the button with a suited king. <laughs> All right. Oh, three bat. Okay. And Sarwelf, hungry like the. <laughs> I 
Uh, Joe asked, and the universe responded positively. Yes, give Wilf an opportunity to get some chips. He's on the hunt. He's after you. One move, all in. Don't don't use the time bank. Is there any strategy at all to using a time bank to making this seem like not such a slam dunk shove? I think that's actually totally reasonable. I'm I'm being I'm being facetious here. I just think uh, I think maybe using a time bank might sort of indicate a slightly more marginal spot. Maybe you will will right. garnish a little bit more of a loosey goosey call, but. Yeah, I know. I think it's time, fine to use time banks. I'm only joking around. But I think that in this situation, we're definitely just going to see one move and one move only. Okay. Two time two banks Two time used. banks. So when you use one, they think you have ace-queen. When you use two, they think you have ace-jack. <laughs> there it is. Bear in mind, guys, there is also the dynamic of what's going on at the other table. Ah, uh, yes. Very good point, James. Very good point, indeed. The battle that did you fold before I folded? Yeah, and Tanks. Oh, sorry, the react off. Sorry, you uh, both fold. I looked out of my yeah, cards and you both uh, folded. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> they both fold before yeah, I was you. Sick. Like, you know. I could have ended up with a six spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry, my bad. Well, the shove gets through and Sar Wolf chips up to 1.86 million. He's got more than 30 bigs now. Uh, like Medi Chowie is the shortest no. stack. In fact, he, he and Fabrice Bigot play 19, 18 big blinds respectively. They are. Not quite in the danger zone yet. <laughs> so Wilf now up to 31 bigs. There you go, Joe. I'm really rooting for a zaddy, baddy, daddy battle. Zaddy, daddy, baddy battle. <laughs> Bobo says that is not live. That is from yesterday evening. True. No, this is live. Yeah, I, 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 I do appreciate that one, people two, are watching from all around one, the world, but it is possible that in some part of the world, for example, Paris, France, mm -hmm. it is early afternoon and not an unreasonable time for people to be playing poker. I mean, can you imagine showing up to any stream anywhere and your first comment being something so stupid? Without really. taking one second to think about what you're watching or when or where it might be or who's still in or uh, Joey. Guys, uh, very important information here. We have another blind view blind spot. It's all blind view blind. This is the meta. I only play off them in the small blind versus the big blind from now on. <laughs> Raise and a shove. Chowie at risk. Definitely needs a count here. I think this might be a call, you guys. Oh, it's a big chunk of his stack, though. Oh, he might ICM fold this. This is a really, really, really big spot. So Chowie's got about, is it 20 bigs, guys? It's about yeah. half, half of Harry's stack, though. Honestly, this is dead close. If we're playing purely for Chip EV, this is a snap, but I don't know, guys. If you got nines, I think you're always calling. Seven, eights, probably still calling. Sevens, I think we're getting into some Weird territory with 14 players remaining. Harry will know best, though. Okay. I, I default to his uh, to his knowledge. That's a call. Yeah, it makes the call. Has done this so classic race underway at the Good feature table. Yeah. Medi Chowie at risk with Ace Queen against the pocket sevens of Harry Lodge. Like a Peugeot versus a Doshevo, one of these two things has a slight mathematical advantage. Flip indeed. Well spotted chat. Queen nine four advantage Showy. Now a nine to one favorite. Showy. Has to fade a seven, a card that many people think is always coming. The side club. Two cards in the deck. Send him to the rail. To 10. That is a double up. So, Shoei now playing 40 bigs. Harry Lodge now playing 23 bigs. Yeah, and I think what's really important to note here, guys, is how the action played out and from what position. When you're playing blind v blind there, 
Chowie is going to shove literally deuces, threes, fours, fives, sixes, which is really, really important in that consideration because you destroy those hands in equity. That's an 80-20 spot, right? He'll shove sometimes ace, deuce, spades, ace, deuce, off, ace, some... three, off, ace, four, off. There's lots of hands that you dominate, and therefore this is a much higher value equity in terms of ICM and in terms of actual chips than it would be if it was from a differentiated position. Well, we are going to go over to the other wow. table and we're going to go back in time. Let's replay what was happening during the previous hand where Constantine Held was utilizing most, I if mean... not all, of his time banks. <laughs> oh, he's time bank rich. <laughs> So basically, Ras Van Balea has put them all in. So not that I personally have a problem with this, but <laughs> is this something that they're trying to crack down on or no? You know what I will. In 20 seconds. He's not committed. Do I? So he's been shoved on by Ras Van, who's wearing the FPS hoodie. <laughs> oh, the Hollywood. He didn't use them all, okay. <laughs> so, Balea shoved on him with Queen Nine of Spades. Constantine held at risk with the Spraggy A7 offsuit. Will Constantine hold? Ace high flop. So drama. I'm sorry. Looks like it. Oh, oh, oh. Held. Holds. Indeed. Still holding on. Uh, 585, I think it was. 585, so now he's going to have a million. Now he's going to be close to 20 big blinds. Held me, thrill me, kiss me. Held still holding on in this EPT Paris. And obviously not too much of a dent to Razvan Balea stack, who we know was up to nearly 10 million at one point today. Uh, halfway through the level, 45 minutes still to play at the 30-60 blind level. He's not going to win any Oscars, guys, but I think he certainly won that pot. <laughs> yes. There's no denying that. So Bigot has opened under the gun with ace-jack. Ostet defending in the big with ace-nine of clubs. Queen, eight-five on the flop. Alessio, watching on Twitch, says Lena is out. Yep. I mean, yep. Nope. Don't. I, Shh. Just. Yeah. Sorry. Better tune out. Lena gone. <sighs> Nicholas Ashstead still in though, playing this hand. 340k in the pot. Continuation from Bigo. Lena's got such a such a cute little glance. He's like, really? <laughs> I feel like every time. Are you sure? Because I'm not sure. Are you sure? Now I'm facing not. facing this tiny tiny size, guys. He probably is supposed to float with a hand as strong as Ace Nine suited. Obviously, backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw. We do have those pay jumps looming, and when you're playing players like Fabrice Bigo. You're going to encounter a lot of barrels in later streets. It's much harder to get to showdown and realize the equity of your hand than if you are playing a more recreational player, of course, does decide to give it up right then and there. So now we're at 14. Whoever goes out next will cash for 59.3, same as Sven Stock received for 15th place. There's then a money jump to 71K. Now you know why those time bank cards were being deployed by Constantine like Held and Sar Will. Just, just, yeah. I hope that weren't some of my blues that are not lucky. <laughs> what? I hope it wasn't some of my blues that are not lucky. No, you, pay, you paid me just in, in greens. And no, you had 190. There were three blues. Oh. And you put them on the top of your stack and then gave okay. it straight to it. <laughs> be careful, Fabrice. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the vibes. Yes, good karma. Know? I just gave the time bank when she didn't saw it, so maybe... Yeah. Cancels out. Cancels out. Okay, good. Action starting here with Peter Jorgner folding. Denzel Speckman is raising with pocket fives.
Duckman starts to hand with 43 bigs. Raising up for the min. Just realized we haven't mentioned mini EPT Paris yet today. The online series that's oh. running alongside our streams. A chance for you to play some poker this weekend while watching the action from Paris. Has its own tab in the PokerStars lobby. You'll see all of today's games. There are three of them. The first at 3.15 local time. The second at 6.15. The last one at 8.15. First up on the slate today, starting in just under two hours' time, is an $11 PKO. Oh, that sounds so fun. Ugh. 20k guaranteed plus EPT satellite tickets added to the prize pool of every single MTT in this series. It'll run today and tomorrow with the mini main event tomorrow. And that awards an EPT Monte Carlo package to the winner. Speckman stacking up there, 46 bigs now. Had a lot of people in chat write in to say that speck means bacon in Dutch. Also in German. Bacon man. The bacon man. Do you know the bacon <laughs> man? Well, he's married to the bacon man. Bacon man back in action. That's a great uh, screen name for Poker Stars, isn't it? Denzel Bacon Man. Not bad. Bring home the bacon, man. Harry? No. Shall we? at 900 on the button with queen eight of spades. Right in the mic. <laughs> <laughs> and now Peter Jorgner in the bag with eight seven offsuit. Seriously, he could definitely be the next Witcher. I think that was a great shout, Joe. Jorgna defends, and it's these two again. I didn't make it past the second episode of The Witcher. Really? If I need a, like a, a dictionary to look up every word, that's being used. <laughs> These are the fluffle <laughs> scenes, and they're they're in charge of the blopple bins and the and the biggle blops. It sounds like an episode of Rick and Morty. It was just, <laughs> it was just non. -st I was like laughing hysterically. We're headed to ca Camp Flabanaba. Sure. <laughs> check check on the flop. Speckman's still ahead on the turn. Barry Greenstein makes an appearance, which does not change the outcome of this hand. Speckman's still good. Every time you say Barry Greenstein makes an appearance, I get a shudder. The robe. Thinking of the, uh, that appearance. Barry and little Barry. If you had seen it, you would know that that adjective is not appropriate. I think you nailed that watch, by the way, James. Hmm? 8i. Oh, 8i. Sorry, I didn't hear you. I don't think he was expecting to win. <laughs> no, no, but the... the Slow roll! The, like, uh, <laughs> I wanted to see his hand. That was... Lurchy, I don't know what version of the PokerStar software you're using, but when I fire up my client, and I click on all games. 
across the top bar has Cash, Zoom, Home Games, Tempest, Sit and Go, Sunday Million, mm -hmm. and next to that, Mini EPT Paris. And when I click on that tab, it shows me all of the tournaments in that series. My guess is that there's like an 80% chance that Lurchy lives somewhere where the Mini EPTs are not available. Not available in all territories, that is for sure. Lurchy's sitting in Iowa, complaining that he can't find the mini EPT. Here is a nice hand to play on the button. Bigo has about 21 bigs, guys. Why would you not play Jack 8 suited from this position? It just You just would always, always love to do it. Oh, my goodness. The gentleman with 115 big blinds in the small blind is now looking down at a top three hand. So what do you do here? Do you make, do you give a really good price on a three bet here? Do you give a bad price and hope to get a call anyway because it looks like uh, you're just attacking the button open? What, what would your strategy be here, Nicholas? I would be, it would always be the three bet. I would three bet small, yeah. like something like 2.5 as opposed to like a more conventional 3X. You don't want to go so small that it looks really obvious that you're strong, but there's also kind of uh, a balance to that, right? Because if you can three bet small from this position and look strong, then you can do it with your bluffs as well, right? right. So you can do it small here and not have it be a telegraph in the way that if you were 50 big blinds deep and you were making it like 2.5, everyone's going to be like, ah, he does this when he's strong and he goes bigger when he's bluffing, right? If you want right? to really pronounce it, it's sar. Sar. That's close enough. But uh, in English, it would be sar. So I really like this size, guys. One, two, five was the initial. He makes it three, five, five. Obviously, Jack hates you to getting out of the way, but can still get looked up for that price and obviously always want to get action with aces at the stack depth because it's not going to cost you your tournament life. Right. And because, of course, it would be a great opportunity to stack an opponent there. So well played to Peter Jorgna. Uh, English pronunciation is like, I don't consider it as like open. No, it's the English. Uh, down by Arthur, like six and a half big, like edge jack. So and the guy like wakes up in so child, so eight, seven, so good. And sound long time. Okay, guys, one conversation. <laughs> good spot, I go. Well, actually, we're going to go over to the other table. Bro, you need to because all in and a call. It's Arta Conan at risk, but ahead. Conan with ace jack. Johan Schultz with ace seven. Conan has the triangle, but does have the best hand. The flop is queen Ooh. nine six. Ace seven is of spades. Two oh. spades. Nine of clubs on the turn. Two opportunities now. The river. It's a seven! Oh, wow. It is always coming. And it is going to send Arta Conan to the rail in 14th place. He's the last player to cash for 59,300 euros. Everyone else benefits from the money jump. Conan the Destroyer to Conan the Destroyed. And here is a hashtag fun fact from cameraman Liam. Since the redraw to 24, Every single bust out has come from one of the outer tables. No one's been eliminated from the feature table since we got down to 24 players. That is improbable. Are we keeping this feature table? Uh, 30 minutes till the break. I think we're going to flip them. Interesting. Wonder if the trend will continue. 
king seven versus fives, and five still good on a queen eight three flop. Second time Speckman's had king seven offsuit in the small blind against Sarwilf. And raised into Sarwilf and defended. Yeah, this is the same as before. The last time Weird. Wilf had king seven of clubs, if you recall, this time with the fives. Yeah. Wants to continue on queen eight three. James, I see your thinking cap is on. What's, what's happening over there? No, I'm just checking. I forgot that we already had Delaney balanced off. I was concerned that we had too many players at the feature okay. table, but it's right. We've got seven on the main stage and six at the other table, so 13 remain. It's a pretty good card for fives. Hotter in here for pocket fives after this bet of 350,000. But it looks like Wilf's counting out the call. It's going to take a little bit more time with this decision. And love that reflection. Playing with the chips, checking his cards again. That's dope. Does make the fold, however. Nice. Well played there from Speckman. Two barrels did it. Not sure about that one. Close one. Yeah, Wilf knows that there's a chance he's getting exploited in that spot. And sure enough, King High doing the right ting. It's one of those weird ones, though, Joe. King seven barrels turn as a bluff. River seven check check. Oh, sorry, I win. It's one. Of, you still have two overcards. Still have a decent equity against that specific hand. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's got to be what you're thinking about when you're thinking about calling fives. There, you're like, okay, well, this is. If this was a showdown, maybe. Yeah, it's a. He puts him in a tough spot there. I think the two barrels are really nice. Out of the gun, folds five high. Sailboats for Nicholas Ustat, opening under the gun plus one to 125,000. Fabrice Bigot, ace three in the hijack. This feels like a big no. Bigot, B folding this hand. Yeah, there's a lot of action behind. Ostet raising pretty early. A nay. Jack three for Jorgner. And what could he possibly be thinking about? I don't know, but my guess is his life's pretty good. He could be just reflecting. I mean, if he re-raises here with jack three. Respect. I think he's just lost in the sauce right now, honestly. <laughs> this doesn't look like he's actually thinking about <laughs> anything. He does know it's his turn, right? I uh, think he's back now. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. <laughs> My live reads are dead on. Uh, oh, sorry. That's going to cost him a time bank card. It's okay. I need a coffee. Sorry, I'm just thinking about how great my life is. Uh, <laughs> the live reads. 
Nice work, Joey. Is that the first time bang the whole tournament? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's keeping them for like release. Yeah. Taking small, small nap. Yeah. yeah. Power nap. Power nap. Yeah. Like 30 power second nap. power nap. Yeah. Oh, God. We got, we got the ball wrong from the beginning. I feel bad that he's embarrassed. Who cares? He's like, sorry, everyone. You're like, yeah, fine. You used a time bank card. We're good. I saved up three days of time bank cards so I could take a quick nap between hands. As we said before, a little bit shaky night. Huh? A little bit shaky in the night. Sleep. So we've had a three bet from Speckman, who's re-raised on the button for 375,000 with Queen Jack. Also, imagine being that comfortable in at this stage of the tournament that you can just check out for like two whole minutes. <laughs> I'd be like, "Is it my turn? What's going on? What's uh, uh, I'm all in. Uh, Where am I? Who are you? Uh, how did I get here? <laughs> what year is it?" <laughs> It would have been really rude if no one to ask him if he knew it was on him or not, and they just let him burn through all six time bank cards. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alstep folds the fours, and he gets a coffee. I don't know. I'm kind of jealous of that. The fact he can be on the feature table and be so relaxed that he just checks out altogether is. Yeah. I, I I think I'd, I'd be sweating it more than more than that. I don't know if you guys saw that, but that was Online Beast giving coffee to Online Beast. It was Dinesh Alt, a.k.a. Nasty Minder, who just brought caffeine to Lena 900. You know what I really like about Dinesh Alt is that he seems to really enjoy <laughs> being out and about. He's, like, not a dude that acts above it. He posts on social media. He takes pictures when he's in the various cities he's in. He actually seems to, like appreciate being on the poker tour, which humanizes him to me. Yeah. Which is difficult to do when you watch these people play online and win tons of money, and they're just like absolute beasts. Seems like a really sweet guy. Yeah. I've, I've, I've only spent a short time with him, but he seems like a really, really, nice, a, a real good one. I agree with you, Joe. Plus his screen name sounds like a website I'd subscribe to. <laughs> Should I see if nastyminder.com is a real thing? You open the blind, I think. Yeah, it's there you are. Another opening raise from Nicholas Ostat. He's made it 125,000 with ace nine. Sar Wolf's got fours on the button. Yeah, but I, yeah, of course. Now round to Harry Lodge. King Jack suited. Tally Savalas, the uh, good Kojak. Yeah, the real one. I have a 20 blind, I'm just checking. Yeah. Oh, oh, coffee for Peter Jorgner. Get this to him now. He's falling asleep. He doesn't know the actions on him. Nick Walsh is about to register nastyminder.com. <laughs> you just doxed my, my domain, mate. What the hell? <laughs> Gonna sell it to Dinesh Alt for an extreme amount of money. Oh, I thought you and Joe were going into business. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you nasty minders, get online right now. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. Going to be placing a big order with Logitech. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was being real incognito there. Nice work, Joey. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Heads up. 10, 5, deuce, ace high still ahead. That's right, Polisa, UTG, also known as FTA. Check, check. Oh, sorry, just a check from Harry Lodge. We could see a C-bat from Nicholas Ostet. Pretty disappointing board for King Jack of Spades.
Sorry, me and my girlfriend have a dance we do to that song. <laughs> you want to see it? Could have cost me a lot of time. I regret saying yes. <laughs> I was pretty sure you didn't know because you've been acting very quick all, yeah, yeah. all the time. And suddenly, <laughs> you know, you were just in your own. <laughs> it's cool seeing everyone a little bit energized today, a little friendly, more chat than we're used to, especially compared to last night when things were pretty tense, everyone yeah. was tired. Um, so unlike Lena 900, <laughs> The other Swede at the table, Peter Jorgner, is not a professional poker player. He is an investment manager and former CEO of an esports company. Oh, wow. That's very cool. Well, now i got to figure out which esports company it He's was. He's also impossibly good looking. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not really fair, is it? That's what I'm saying. When he was just staring off into space earlier, it could probably be literally any memory of his life. That he's just like, ah, yeah, pretty great. <laughs> Ace King in the cutoff for Sar Wilf. Starts the hand with around 25 big blinds. Opens to 125,000. Harry Lodge on the button. As King Queen of Strawberries. We saw Sar Wolf having to fold King Queen suited a few times last night to three bats, but in position. 22 bigs. Raise. Oh, sorry. It's not on Sar anymore. Sar's the one with Ace King. Excuse me. Lodge has the King Queen in position. And this is a virtual all in from Harry Lodge. This is a committing raise. And this is just kind of a, a slam dunk, get it in spot, I think, for Sar Wilf. Yeah, I yep, mean, absolutely. With 975 committed, 200 behind, Harry Lodge is going to have to call this off, and it, it's going to be a domination situation. He is going to be at risk and way behind. Joey asked for the moment. This is the one for Wilf to get way back in this game with 13 players remaining. And there's no money jump right now. Twelfth and thirteenth get paid the same, seventy-one, one fifty. So there's no real reason to stall here. Cool. Maybe, maybe he's pulling a Yorgna. Hello, <laughs> guys. Says the word "call" very reluctantly. Shows the king queen. Realizes he is behind and Whoops. is going to need to get lucky, or we are going to be down to twelve. I mean, you hate the domination situation. You hate that. The hearts aren't exactly live either. You need the exact right number of hearts on this board. Not two, not four, but three. Not five either. Well, five cards to come, which will decide Harry Lodge's fate. Jack, seven, five. Just the one heart and ace, king, high holding. Lodge now with 17% equity. Ten of heart for the four. <laughs> Turn card is the jack of spades. So no additional outs. Three queens. Needs to hit on the river. River card. Here's a seven. You, Harry. Nice playing with you. Good luck. And Harry Lodge, who made the final table of EPT London last year, will be eliminated in 13th place. Does cash for 71,150 euros, but will not I'm be going. making his second EPT final table um. of the recent months. You're a blizzard, Harry. Left out in the cold. So now we're down to 12, two tables of six with 16 Going minutes to run on this well. level, and then we'll have our first break it's of the day. Be done before dinner. And Sar Wolf. How long are we playing today? The he zaddy, daddy, up. baddie battle continues. Just woke up, you're always, yeah. But like, okay, time to go to bed. 
No, no, I mean, yeah, kind of. No, not yeah. that. Not that. <laughs> I wouldn't mind me being six. <laughs> Still a huge score for Harry there. Just absolutely you know, crushing these tournaments of late. Such a good player and uh, still a very nice score. I know he'll be disappointed not to go deeper, but GG yeah, I went out to Ari Lodge. <laughs> That's what I guessed, like when your girlfriend came. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, were, we were going out for her. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, yeah she's really nice. Uh, food. Where did you go in for? Went to a Japanese place. Okay. Great, great sushi. Same girl. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we? <laughs> this is definitely a nice hand. shall has got about 37 bigs, too. Wow. I would argue that is an exceedingly tight fold. I don't think either player particularly short to the point where you want to be avoiding a raise into those two stacks. You got both players covered. 8-6 yeah, like, suited uh, seems very playable there. And Fabrice Bigot, as a result, gets a walk in the big blind. How he just decides he didn't want to play it. Fair play, sir. But 8-6 uh, suited on the button, Joey. It was so pretty. This has just been a really fun, action-filled day so far. I'm having a blast. Yeah, me too. Me too. Loving this action. I'm surprised we're already down to 12, you guys. I got to be honest. Yeah. It's going to slow down and get real boring at some point, but I'm enjoying it for now. I'm here for it now. Some people have more tendency to, I don't know. The deepest final six of any EPT ever? Question mark. See a few people inquiring about the widget. Where are we at? Level 27. Well, the widget predicts we will end this level with 12 players. <laughs> I've never been more jealous of AI. <laughs> Truth like, I'm so mad at this AI widget. Joey. It gets nearly as much attention as I do, and it's really starting to piss me off. So the widget <laughs> was one out in the sense that it predicted so that we So sick would, of hearing about this widget. <laughs> it predicted that we would end level 26 and therefore start the day with 16. We actually started with 15, so it was one out. But if we don't get any more eliminations, it's bang on that we would be at 12 players at the start of level 28. And it predicts that we could be, oh, it's right on the line, 9.5 or 9.6. So we could get fence straddling douche to oh, a awesome. single table what in the next level. Right? Pick a lane, widget. What kind of hardware are you running there, James? How many, how many servers you got it's running there? Just unreal. Like, I, look, I can call this, out is, all the hands perfectly <laughs> all day long, right? And I get some suit wrong. <laughs> and the chat's all over me, and then the widget, they're like, oh, it was so close. Is, is the, oh, is the, the big round of applause for the widget for being near the right answer. Get out of here. <laughs> is the widget a neural net, or is it machine learning, James? I, I need to understand how this works. We do have a hand happening here. It's Sorry, guys. the most bog standard formula in a spreadsheet you could possibly input. <laughs> I know, that's why it's funny. <laughs> Thing. James, <laughs> James versus AI, the topic of the next have. Poker in the Year's podcast. Oh, it's not I'm going to unplug that thing. It's in Excel, right? So all I have to do is put something in one box somewhere and it ruins it forever. Oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Joey breaks in, Mission Impossible style to change one Henry. formula, and it's always off. Of you. I, say, I told you, I told you, we can't trust computers. Like It'll never it. replace like humans. Like Henry Cavill is the Witcher, and Peter Yorgna is the no, Widget. Uh, yeah, now it makes sense. You know. Are you from here? Then? Yeah. Okay. Just to go first, and then move back to London. All right. And probably gonna move to Andorra now. Just I miss. Andorra. Yeah, I miss the sun too much. Yeah. Hiking, skiing. Everyone keep saying great things. Andorra Spanish guys can literally affect the population by moving there. I'm going to go out and change the sign. We're up to 45. <laughs> Where do you live then? Morocco. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. yeah. Like train figure it out. Like I just finished my studies, so like, it's like my first professional year of <laughs> nice. poker, you know, cool. so, like, yeah. Yeah. This, this one might help yeah. with a kickstart, huh? For sure. Yeah. Uh, like, at the exact same day, 
uh, some date last year. I won't like Can I have a look at your stack? The clock is back in my feet. No! So, like, a one, one. Oh! Thank you. My queens. Joey, I think this is another small three bet spot we were talking about. Mm. So well, one, the last two, five. one, when we recommended small, wasn't that small. And this one is smaller. Well, they were both less than 3x, right? Yeah. And from out of position, that is quite small when you consider okay. that we kind of 4x a lot of times from out of oh, position wow. when we're deeper. That escalated quickly. The go responds to the three bet by moving all in with ace five offsuit. Oh wow! And Speckman obviously calls. Yeah, all day long. And B go finds himself at risk and a three to one underdog. The flop. Ooh, gives B go a wheel draw. He can win with an ace. He could win with a three. Did you say real draw or wheel draw? <laughs> wheel. A real draw, okay. Well, it's the ace on the turn, and now just has to fade a queen on the river. Yeah, so nobody goes broke from the featured table, huh? Apart from Harry Lodge. Oh, right. Six on the river. Oh, Bigo gets lucky to survive. And he's now going to be playing a 40 big blind stack as Denzel Speckman drops down below the 40 big blind mark. You got big got. Man, what a time to run good. Final 12 EPT. Jeez. You see, the widget knew that ace was coming. <laughs> I'm so sick of hearing about this widget. Unbelievable. <laughs> But does the widget know how to love James? That's the question. It's a formula in Excel, Nick. <laughs> yeah, 38 something. Didn't answer my question, but fine. Fabrice Bigot, <laughs> 39 big blinds now. Well, let's check in on what's happening at the other table. We are down to the final two tables, two tables of six. When we're down to nine, we'll have the final redraw, and all the players will be on the main Ooh. stage. But you do see the triangle there. Two nine. And it's Mathieu de Meglio versus Ten. Constantin Held. And Held has moved all in on the turn. You can see the board. Ace of spades, eight of clubs, ten of hearts, four of spades. And that is a fold from de Meglio. Held. Shows five deuce of spades. Had a street flash draw. Probably was behind, though. <laughs> and it looks like Held bet that flop, and Demeglio used four time banks before even calling on the flop. I was like, Elton. So a reminder that we're going to flip you, flip you for real. We're going to bring that table to the main stage for the next session. So this becomes the outer table. The outer table becomes the feature table when we have the break in seven minutes' time. Imagine when IA will be so good that we're going to have Joe and James' voices out of a program. IA. Iowa? Eternal Affairs? Eternal Affairs, yeah. Jesus Christ, are we being investigated? <laughs> 90. I ain't no snitch. Well, this is fun. Oh, Wilfie. The Wilf man's brother. Firing. The heart draw. Excuse me, Asset firing second pair. Wolf. 
With a tough hand to fold. Yeah, always a call here for sure. I don't think this is a texture you ever really check raise with a flush draw just because your opponent's going to be so much more weighted toward an ace combo, king combo kind of starting hands. Oh, always a combo draw, Joe. Always the combo draw. Now any tray, any five, any heart will give Wilf the best hand going to the river. Lena might be tempted to check turn now. Does have showdown with that king. But uh, whatever he decides to do is probably the best line. Check, check on the turn. No help. For the five tray of hearts. Okay, the human solver. I will allow it. Saw Wolf, Simon Cow. As bad lookalikes go, that is acceptable. Yeah. It's pretty bad. I like that any shot with Wilf, we get like a dual camera situation. Cool, yeah. We get a good reflection. They're very clear, those sunglasses. Yes. I didn't love my chances. Well, yeah. Nicholas Ostet, remember, starts the day with just over 20 bigs, has chipped up to a 44 big blind stack. He's actually the second biggest stack at this table now. And some three X. <laughs> Lita just seems like such a good hearted guy. Seems very kind. He's like, yeah, I'm great at poker. I'll totally destroy you, but also, I'll take you out for lunch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do you want a drink, buddy? Sure, I'll buy you a drink. I do like lunch. <laughs> I do like drinks. Hey, somebody picked up on my fish reference. Nice. Hi, Scott Graham. Did I win that super fan subject? When we did fish on the podcast, I feel like I came close I at least. I honestly don't remember. There are certain quizzes that I'm just utterly lost in because I don't understand the subject matter. That was one of them. Really good to get better. Oh, you know what I wanted to suggest for a future super fan subject? If Statric is listening, because I think you'd enjoy it, party down. They just rebooted it. I watched the first two seasons again. It's hilarious. It's a, it'll be a real treat for anyone to challenge me to party down, and I think Patrick would like watching it as well. He'll thank me. Wow, this is interesting. So previously, we saw Chowie avoiding the 8-6 suited from the button, having absolute position against both small blind and big blind. This time opting for the raise blind v blind versus Wilf, and he is dominated. I'm like Jack-10 versus Jack-5, boring, and Nick's like, this is interesting. I'm just trying to pick up on some tendencies here. I think Chowie in that case is an indication that he was trying to avoid action from Fabrice and from uh, Nicholas Asted in that case, right? Perhaps he's picking up on a tendency he thinks Wilf is likely to limp fold or perhaps limp and then call and then fold to a C-bet more frequently than his, uh, his other opponents at the table, that kind of thing. He must be so mad right now. He's like, I have avoided every confrontation. I finally raise and I'm getting three bet. Go. And he's mm. going to be forced to fold. The live chat on Twitch is so weird. It's a mixture of poor analysis, people being thirsty over the dealer, and then you get some random guy quoting Shakespeare. <laughs> Jerry D. Crabtree quoting Friar Lawrence in Romeo and Juliet. These violent delights have violent ends. That's I thought that must have been a quote from something. That's I thought it was maybe quote. Fish, though. <laughs> I thought it was from Family Guy. <laughs> I jest. Hey, nice play there, though. Thought Wilf was a bit of a soft mark, but Wilf pulling the limp raise pre. <laughs> Absolutely bossing the jack five. Would it be the case like all bricks? Is it, is it going to be an advice decision from the director? No, just kidding. No. Okay. Okay, okay guys. Okay. I'm aware the quote was used in Westworld, but it's Shakespeare. It's from Romeo and Juliet. From it's like way over He's not quoting Westworld. Westworld is quoting Shakespeare. I have a few, few restaurants I just love there, so I always look forward to, to, to go to it.
Pico seems a little confused. Beckman, starting with 38 bigs, decides to open from the cutoff, ace deuce off. Wilf gives up the button with the queen jack. Chowie. Chowie. Wakes up with kings in the small blinds. So Chowie here, guys, 32 big blinds behind after he puts in his small blinds, so 33 to start the hand. It has three bet exactly zero times today. He's been relatively snug. We've seen that already, yeah. apart from that Jack-5 ISO that we saw, which actually ended up in a raised fold. Now, I think at this stack depth, Joe, we might want to be closer to a full 3x. Looks like we're going close to three-something. Yeah, much, much, a uh, little bit more than 3x. Well, at least Chowie won the last hand of the level. Chowie! He can take a little bit of consolation in that. Um, well, let's just check what's happening at the other table before we go on break. 20-minute break scheduled, and then, of course, we're going to flip the tables. And there does still appear to be a hand in progress. Three-way action. Johan Schultz, Matteo De Meglio, and Brian Delaney. Jack, 9-8 on the flop with two diamonds. Wow, don't mess with the Johan versus the Demeglio Maniac. Action checked around. We've got the four of hearts on the turn. Oh, Delaney's in there too, huh? I just can't see him. Yeah, three-way action. Ah, there's the bet from Delaney. 340,000 to fold from Schultz, but De Meglio considering it. Okay, we're going heads up to the river. That river card is the jack of spades, which pairs the board. Delaney bet the turn, and it looks like he's betting the river. Yep. He announces all in, shoving on Demeglio. And Demeglio already playing a couple of time bank cards as he thinks about whether to call it off. Prepaying. What do we got there for watch, buddy? What is that? Is that a uh, Casio? No, uh, it looks like a Rolex. Could be a date just or a day date. We think Demeglio might be the shortest stack in the tournament right now, so. Fold here, what is that, 400, 500? Thank <laughs> you. 
10 seconds to act, five seconds. And De Meglio fold. So that is going to take us to the break. And a reminder that when we come back from break, this table will be the new feature table. That means we're going to see the current chip leader. And Ras Van Balea had a phenomenal session. He is going to be coming to the main stage with a stack of more than 10 million chips. Year of Romania. The blind will be going to 40,000, 80,000 with an 80K big blind ante. So we're going to be back in 18 minutes time. These are the players we have been watching. But a reminder, we're going to flip the tables during the break. New feature table coming your way on the other side of the break as we continue to play down to the final table here at the Paris leg of the PokerStars European Poker Tour. Action is on Olashemi, and he is raising under the gun with Jack-10 off. Round to Patrick Antonius on the button. He folds. Sadri Sella is in the small blind. He's got King-9. And I think yesterday, towards the end of the day, we saw Shemian getting a bit liberal with his opens from early position. and. Not everybody would open from under the gun with Jack-10 off suit. And Lenini, he's got a good spot for aces. It's fun to get aces in the big blind. It's fun to get aces in the... Any seat you're in, any position. Let's see your chips. You have a stack behind there? more. I don't mind that he's three betting right now because you usually assume that people's under the gun open range is quite strong and that you will get more value this way. But Shemion is a bit weak, but he has position. He's like, no, 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 I'm gonna see a flop. I'm gonna outplay you or or just crack out your you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh Shemion oh. flops <laughs> trips. <laughs> I like I oh. like this check by Lenini. Hold my hair back, Maria. Not on my shoes, no. Joe. I'm, I'm going to, hey, there's a turn in river still. I like to see Lenini check call. Shemian, that's 130,000. If you check call here with aces, you just keep all the worst hands in, and you also give someone like Shemian the option of barreling on later streets. Is that an ace? <laughs> Close, but no. Shemian now a 95% favorite. Lanini check called the flop for 130,000, and suddenly he elects to lead turn. Yeah, this this lead doesn't make much sense to me. I think that if you check call the flop, then you just open it up for Ole to do so many things on the <laughs> turn. The worst thing, you have nothing to protect from. Either Ole has a jack right. or eights full, or he's going to barrel off with no real equity against your hand. So, uh, and you're also just letting Ole off the hook. You're like really to fold hoping. In this spot. You're really hoping he has kings. It's very wishful thinking. And based on the pre flop action, that's highly unlikely. Right. So, this is roughly half pot, 250,000. And realize that Shemian has more jacks in his range than Lenini does, because Lenini is not likely to be three betting ace jack from the big blind against Shemian's under the gun open. He's not going to three bet, you know, queen jack suited, king jack suited. He's probably just going to call those. When Ole, Ole. 
stares at, yeah, Lenini there. He's not actually trying to figure out if Lenini has him beat, right? No, he's just trying to figure out if he moves all in, if Lenini will call him. Indeed. Well, Lenini had 500k behind, so when Shemian shelves on him, it's a snap call from Lenini, and he's now drawing to two outs. He will need Barry Greenstein. He will need Ace on the river, or Ola Shemian will claim his scalp. Just a 5% chance of survival. Is Shemian going to get Greensteined? The river is a nine. And Ola Shemian eliminates Davor Lalini in 14th place, taking us down to 13 players. And Shemian is now closing in on the chip lead. He has got 3.7 million, close to a 150 big blind stack, while Lanini walks away with 35,500 euros. Goodbye, Davor Lanini, and goodbye, audience. Kings against 9-5. Classic confrontation. <laughs> it's just one of those matchups, one of those unavoidable confrontations. Well, and there's still plenty of chance he can win this. It is always coming seven. Alternatively, he may choose to try and represent the ace. Ole is like, I'm running so good. I am just going to call with my gut shot. I know it's going to come. I don't even need to try to outplay this person. I'm just going to hit the card I need. 45,000 was the C-bet from Jozonis. That's actually not a bad card for Shemian because he calls the flop a lot with second pair. He did call the raise from the big blind. He certainly has a lot of eights in his range. Oh, I forgot what you were saying, Yozonis. Yozonis. Sorry. And I like this lead because you know that Yozonis would check back a lot on this particular turn card, even if he had an ace in his hand. So it's definitely very believable. No, Yuzonis. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is. <gasps> Always coming seven. Uh, what, 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 what do we play at the end of this hand? Do we play the swag meme or the or the sevens meme? Well, we just had the swag feature, so I vote sevens. This guy, swaghetti and meatballs. Seven, it is always coming. 390. And I think this is just the run out where Yozonis can get away from his hand. It's a big bet from Shemian. Did Nearly this, full pot. Did this dude crack aces and kings in back to back hands? Did that just happen? Yeah, that just happened. Cracks aces with Jack 10, cracks kings with the Dolly Parton. <laughs> Those kings just got Dabney Coleman, but. Folded on the river. He got there on the river. Yeah. Right. Shemian. Second in chips. 94 big blind stack. Opens with queen jack from under the gun. Plus three. Makes it 90k. Pocket fives. The Sadri Sala. That's a call. Crinkling is getting really tilting. <laughs> oh, my bad. I was going to say, did you pass your bag of potato chips along to somebody at the feature? I gave one to everyone. Izonis has Jack 8 in the big blind.
it's the combination of the crinkling and the shuffling actually that bothers me. <laughs> That's it's approaching nails on a chalkboard status. <coughs> His own is calls as well. Three way to the flop. And that flop <laughs> is 10 9 7. Yzonis flops it. And Shemian has a gut shot to a better straight. What do you do here, Maria? Play and flow? Yeah, I mean, I think the reason why it looks like your Zonus is going to lead into the pre-flop razor is because he feels like this is the kind of board that's going to get checked around a lot and leading can actually look a little bit weaker than obviously what he has it looks more like you know protecting top pairs or a pair in a straight draw doesn't really look like you flopped a joint 150k from his onus, called by Shemian. Salah gets out of the way, and it's heads up to the turn. Let's see how good Shemian is running today. <laughs> He's got the swag factor. It brings a five on the turn, which would have been a set for Salah. He saved himself by not getting involved post-flop. Post, uh, post Unfortunately, he doesn't know that just yet. He's probably a little tilted at the moment. I was actually a little disappointed that uh, Honglin folded 8-6, which would be in really big trouble right now, too. Although he would have a straight flush draw. Zonus. Fires again, 375,000 into 630,000. And this is the part where, you know, Shemian's also thinking maybe my overcards could be good based on the way the hand was played. I don't think he would often call with just a straight draw if that's all he thought his outs were. But it's the <laughs> eight that comes on the river. There's our answer to how good Shemian's running today. Shemian swag factor, eight out of 10. What in the world? Well, this is gonna result in a change at the top of the leaderboard. This is just so unlucky. Twitch Seven, chat's five. kicking off. As Yazonis bets 725,000. <laughs> and Shemian's sitting there with the nuts, right? Yes, and he has you know, 3.18 million in chips total. And he's just thinking about a sizing that is gonna get paid off. I don't think all in is that sizing. And Yozonas' hand looks pretty strong here. To think that Yozonas is betting three streets after this kind of run out, Shemian has to believe he has a straight. So why is all in not the, not the because he blocks the nut straight is the problem. I mean, yes, Yozonis could have the same hand in this spot, but a lot of times he could have a hand like Jack-10. Well, how much is that? Two million? 2.5 million. If you threw up earlier, Joe, I don't know why you're not throwing up now. I got nothing left in my guts, that's why.
And of course, every decision has that 30 second timer running. How are you supposed to get away from this when there's one hand that beats you? I didn't say it was uh, it was something he's gonna get away from, but it's a very tough spot for Shemyon to bluff, given what I said about how strong Yozonas's hand looks with the action having been what it was, but. I mean, can Shemian do this with just a jack? Just to be clear, he doesn't have to play those time bank cards. They will be deducted from him at the end of the hand. Every 30 seconds that passes, the dealer resets the clock and starts it again. He will be warned when he's on his last time bank card though, because if the clock hits zero, his hand will be dead. Whew. Looked like he was going to... Oh! It's a fold. Wow. Well, Shemian... Wow! ...takes the chip lead. The blinds are 30-60, and Davidi Katai is the super short stack with just eight bigs. Action folded to Andreas Klatt. I'm a kitty Klatt. Meow. The chip leader passes. So it's round to Katai. Okay, let's see. He has ace, nine of clubs. He's in relatively early position, so he's probably a little worried about that. I'm all in. He decides to go for it. Gets through Diego Zaita. And Raffaele Sorrentino. Kolkovic folds. Paniak has jacks. This guy is across all the yaks. He is Paniak. He is also Pan Jack and definitely not folding. He calls out of the small blind. Nardan folds the big blind. The cards go on their backs. <laughs> <laughs> and Caroline is already calling for an ace. Sorry. I'm so sorry for you. <laughs> Even Pan Yak's tickled. No ass. <laughs> Maybe the turn? <laughs> She's a machine. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to lose Davidi Katai unless there is an ass on the river. What the actual? <laughs> this is fairly unbelievable. <laughs> what a lady. How can I lose this tournament? Davidi Katai's fiance comes to his aid again. Welcome back to Paris at the Pokestars European Poker Tour. It's the penultimate day of the main event in partnership with Le Club Barrier. 12 players remain. That means we had three eliminations during the first session. We have two tables of six, and we have flipped the table. So this is our new feature table, headlined by the chip leader, Raz Van Balea, who's playing 10 and a half million, a 130 big blind stack. The other big stacks of the table are Johan Schultz and Brian Delaney. Henri Casper around average. 
And then the shorter stacks, Constantin, Constantin held with 32 bigs, and the shorty, Matteo De Meglio, with 12 bigs, because we're about to kick off level 28. Blinds now 40,000, 80,000, with an 80K big blind ante. I'm James Harskin alongside me, Griffin Benger. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, Griffin. So sadly, Griff, Ari Lodge no longer with us, but we've still got 12 pretty interesting players trying to earn a seat at the final table and earn some of the big money up top, the biggest slices of the 7.7 .7 million euro prize pool. Tomorrow, when we play down to a winner, we will be awarding a first prize of 1.17 million euros. So those are the guys we had on the main stage for the previous level. Sam Wilf, Nicholas Ostet, and now our new feature table. Of course, we get to see all the remaining players on the stage once we're down to nine. Yeah, and a pretty interesting feature table here. Constantine held, of course, held that big chip lead yesterday, has, is now down to just 32 big blinds. Brian Delaney made a big bluff yesterday, and then I believe the last hand before the level there put Demeglio all in and then showed his car, so I would have to imagine that was a bluff. I'm sure there's some eagle-eyed viewers on Twitch or YouTube that saw that, so... You know, you combine that with the chip leader of Balea. Just a lot of fun to be had. And of course, even if we get down to nine, we'll keep going today, hopefully get down to six. Have you been here already? Chaos, have you been on the TV table this tournament? Yeah, for your time. You as well? I've been 30 minutes. <laughs> So, so Belair's opened under the gun with Jack-8. <laughs> Delaney's got Ace-9 on the button. Uh, we Thank talked about Brian Delaney, Delaney during the last session, Griffin. Uh, it's his first live tournament. It's his first EPT. Wow. He is a very accomplished online PLO player. He's been doing some traveling across Europe. Was snowboarding in Austria last week. Has stopped off in Paris to play the EPT before he heads back to Playa del Carmen, which is where he now lives. Obviously, originally from the UK. Well, Delaney's called on the button, and the short stack, Mathieu de Meglio, calls as well out of the big blind. We've only seen one of his cards, the Four of Hearts. Ace, Trey, Deuce, all diamonds. So a decent chance that Delaney's ahead right now. No continuation bet from Razvan Balea. Delaney's going to bet. 600,000 in the pot. Using a combo of blacks, greens, and blues. 185? 185. Only an ace or a five being the other card for Demeglio should garner any serious consideration. He has folded and looks like Balea has folded as well. The crowd goes wild. You got it through. I threw out the best hand. <laughs> sure. Huh? Sure. sure. I'm 100% not sure because you guys folded. <laughs> Obviously, we'll keep tabs on the other table. Any significant action will head out there. Any potential eliminations or double ups.
trophy now front of stage, Griffin. And the final table and the big prize payouts for the final table is now very much in sight. And then impact. Yeah, very uh, close idea. to that idea. elusive idea. six-figure idea. mark. Top nine, of course, paying at least 111,000 euros. The reference that Held was chip leader for most of yesterday came into today as around average, but then lost a huge pot. And at one stage, was down to three big blinds. Managed to get to the double up to ten big blinds. Then double up again and has managed to cling on, or hold on to use the pun, 30 bigs at the start of this hand and opens with Queen Jack. A few people asking about whether we have any online qualifiers in the mix. The chip leader. Razvan Balea is here via a 530 euro satellite. He's been playing poker for 10 years, has been a pro for the last seven. He says if he makes the final table, he wants to help his parents by buying a house for them. He said he would also invest into playing more poker, especially live, and using some of that money to travel around the world. A colleague of yours, uh... Oh, yeah, these big scores at EPT yeah, events yeah, can yeah, be yeah, life-changing. Huh? Even for a pro playing, you know, as many you years as Balea <laughs> apparently has. Maybe you know, until you have a big score like this, <laughs> times, one time it's tough to, right? to, to yeah, you know, up, the, table, sure. up the volume <laughs> of the traveling or buy a house for family. Yeah, yeah. But it's within sight, within reach. It's annoying, though. Why do they have to keep 126 blind big blinds. Lines every level. <laughs> it's so easy if it's just the same all the time. True, yeah. And why even like do the like, just play with cash instead? <laughs> Allow people to stand up and take the chips if they want. And throw in a, uh, a car key or something as well. Yeah, that sounds cool. <laughs> so what about adding two more cards? <laughs> Three. The dealer decides. Oh. I think <laughs> this could be some. <laughs> this could be a real game. Just two random added cards to the deck. <laughs> Not even to your hand. But you only get to use two of them. 160. So Delaney raised, held with the Spraggy in the big blind. Re-raises. Power poker. You started with 2.6-ish, 2.5-ish, thank you. And what is it, 5.40? The power of the blocker. I'm sure held very aware how wide Delaney sometimes opens. How tough he is to play against post flop. So, you know, sometimes you just want to take these kind of hands, and and it looks like, yeah, there he is, Delaney, wise to it. And you see, you don't even need to make it more than two x that 540 amount. Yeah. Because it completely jails hands like this, Ace Seven. Just a single blocker kind of bluff type hands. You don't have to worry about your opponent calling, and you don't have to worry about putting in so much many chips that you're committing yourself. You know, if you'd made it 1.2 here, you would have put in 1.2 of the 2.6, but by making it 980, you can get away on a five bet shove, but that ain't coming with the Spraggy. Delaney up over six and a half million, more than 80 big blinds. A reminder that we have the chip leader at this table, Raz Van Balea, who's playing more than 125 big blinds, more than 10 million chips. 
And we are at the 40,000, 80,000 blind level right now with 12 players remaining. And a starting field of 1,606 entries. Nice to have good hands. Indeed it is. 40. Mm -hmm. Might have a good one. Delaney raising here, 160,000. And it's going to be Omri Kasper in the big blind. Kasper from Estonia. As Cash is going back to 2004. Has defended with King Deuce. And has paired his Deuce on the flop. However, it is top pair for Delaney. Yeah, going to be plenty of reason for Casper to continue here facing a bet. Bottom pair, backdoor flush draw. Who is that and what are they doing? I suspect it's Matteo De Meglio. The way he had his hoodie up over his mouth just now. Yeah. De Meglio, stop it! Nine on the turn. Delaney's C bet was 145,000. Second barrel on the turn. For charity. 430,000 into 730,000. You can't call this with a deuce. but does let it go. And we have got about half an hour to go until the first of today's mini EPT Paris tournament starts. This is the online series that runs alongside our live coverage. Runs today, concludes tomorrow. Three low buy-in tournaments at 3.15, 6.15 and 8.15 Central European time. First on the slate today is an $11 PKO. That's at 3.15, half an hour from now. Sorry? EPT satellite tickets added to every Dang single it. prize pool. And Over tomorrow, problem. when we have the mini main event, there will be an EPT Monte Carlo package added to the prize pool. And that'll go to the winner mm, of the mini main. I don't know where he is. He, he should be there. <laughs> <laughs> With a flag or something. <laughs> don't even know if he watches the stream. No. Is he playing a 10K problem, right? Yeah, probably. He played last night at least. Yeah, I guess he's playing it unless he in for two bullets. I guess maximum. Yeah, I imagine so. So the layer has raised from the cutoff with ace four offsuit. Jack six for Casper in the small blind. That's a fold. And now Brian Delaney in the big blind with 8-6 offsuit. He defends Griff. Oh, yeah. Playing great, playing with confidence. King 
King Deuce. Ace high still ahead. Stevie on YouTube says, I could never afford to play the mini main. $5.50. $5.50 is the price point of the mini main. Now, I appreciate genuinely, and I'm not judging that that is outside some people's poker bank rolls, but hopefully it's within most. <laughs> Considering the added value, I think it's a pretty strong proposition. King, King, Deuce, nothing can even happen on King, King, Deuce. Yeah, it's, it's quite a boring flop indeed. Yeah. Come with some low cards or something. Yeah, some fun stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah. A couple sixes or you know, some sevens. <laughs> Nine, six, six, something like that. That's a fun <laughs> flop. Demeglio running out of runway here. Eight big blinds about to hit the big blind, going to lose big blind ante and the big blind next hand. Yeah, I'd forgotten the Meglio is really short right now. And we are on a payout jump. Whoever goes out in 12th, 71, 150, and then we have 85 and a half near enough for 11th. but on the button. The W asks on YouTube, cash games at the Hyatt Regency? No. Just the tournaments, which are being run under the license of Le Club Barrier, but the cash games are at Le Club Barrier itself, which is on the Champs-Élysées. There is a shuttle service that runs between the hotel and the casino. Raise and take it for Balea. Is it my imagination, Griffin, or even from the first session to the second session of the day, has the pace of play slowed down somewhat? Yeah, a little bit. And should I be right to assume that's because the sums of money that they're now playing for are becoming more significant? It's the theory. Casper, King Nine in the cutoff. Great way of phrasing it, Zanika. When will the tournament be collapsed to one table? When we're down to nine, so three more eliminations, final redraw, final nine players will take their seats at the feature table. And obviously right now we do have to kind of balance the fact that there are 12 players, there are two tables, and we have to kind of try and give them equal time on the main stage. And what on earth has happened here? Well, Schultz has shoved blind on blind for the eight effective with eight, seven off. And Demeglio has called rather quickly with the king four, which does surprise me a, a little bit, just in the nature of it being no, snapped. I think this probably is a call, but the confidence to which Demeglio called it off, just the king high at this yep. stage, knows the range as well. and prepared to put the money in <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's ahead here you believe it 
There you go, it's a seven in the window. Come on the turn, seven of hearts. Ace, Trey, Deuce. Great start for Demeglio. Even if Schultz gets lucky and hits an eight or a seven on the turn, Demeglio still has that wheel draw. Six on the turn. So Demeglio just has to fade an eight or a seven on the river. Seven always comes. <coughs> Oh, shouldn't have said it. There's no doubt in my mind. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's always coming. And there we go. No, nope, it's a jack on the river, and King High is good for a Demeglio double up. Yeah. 580. Yeah. So, yeah. There we go. So Demeglio. Again next time. Almost out of the danger zone now. 16 big blinds. Danger zone. 1.1. Schultz still hovering around the 60 big blind mark. Is an above average stack. The average right now being 4 million. Exactly. Exactly 50 big blinds. One two seven. Little cheese slices, what year is this from? Uh, the 2023 season of the European Poker Tour is being played in the year 2023. Thank you for your question. Looks like Speckman involved here with Lena 900. Niklas Astat. Casper opening here to 160,000. Action on Johann Schultz on the button. And now on Mattia De Meglio in the small blind. Casper has ace three suited. De Meglio five three suited. Did you check the stacks out of the other table in the break? I didn't. Me but they're all in now. Oh, there is a $14,000 pay jump, so pay. certainly that might explain Demeglio taking a little a bit more time than usual. I did hear them reference an all in at the other table. Did you say that it was? Speckman versus Ostad at the other table, Griffin. Uh, I saw that they were involved together. Um, How's it looking? Uh oh. He lost kings to jacks. Yeah. Lena is short. He lost king? kings to jacks. King king versus jack jack. Oh, I jack would, nine, nine flop. I would imagine uh, that jack? Speckman actually no, no, would be now covering Lena, Lena, so that might be an elimination. I almost feel bad for. I can't explain how horrible I feel for Lena in this moment. I saw Brutal want to lose, even for Lena. Yeah. Unfortunate. Game's the game. Sure is. Game's the game. Coin flipping for some money. Oh, it's a nice <laughs> millable. <laughs> oh, we're playing for that money over there. Oh. I did not realize. Oh. Well, this was a friendly game. Is it real money? No, 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 it's fake money. Yeah, yeah. Very aggressive play here. All that internet money yeah, Balea yeah, yeah. flexing that chip money. lead. For everyone watching, this is just acting. Right? Oh yeah, this is not real. Casper has a decent candidate to <laughs> wow. you know, shove all in, but you're doing so it with 
<laughs> Almost 50 big blinds with 11 left in this event. You would hate for Balea to have actually woken up. and I've been trying to do That's why it's so nice to take advantage of these middle stacks in these spot deep in these tournaments, but you do have to make a stand every once in a while or you're gonna get exploited too much. And that looked like a fold if I've ever seen it. People outside <laughs> waiting to meet me up when this is over. So, Raz Van Balea still up over 10 million, closer to 11 million now, 135 big blinds. But we did hear that the hand escalated between also, Specman and Ostet, and it did not work out well for Lena 900. Let's just recap what happened. Kings for Ostet, Jacks for Speckman. And as narrated by the players at the main feature table, that Jack on the flop. See Speckman get lucky. He doubles up through Nicholas Ostet. And Lena 900 is going to be left with just 105,000 chips, just over one big blind. Yeah, it doesn't matter how good you are at this game. It is cruel to all every once in a while. And the player that many consider one of the very best in the world falls victim to the 18 percenter and is all but out at EPT Paris. Obviously, we'll keep tabs on that other table very soon. Ostert's going to be getting a double up or going home. Everybody ask uh, how much Lena has. <laughs> no, just if he's really short, that's important for me. Yeah, oh, OK, yeah. I, I, it looks like he's relatively short, yes. Yeah, I would say. <laughs> Yeah, and of course it's important to the other players because we have reached that pay jump, as previously referenced. You know, Just over 71k for 12th. Nearly 85.5k for 11th. And Balea really going after it now. This is a... An out of position three bet, only three X against a very capable Delaney. Roughly. Uh, he's gonna be in most Interesting likely. that he's very you know Balea used the sizing uh, of over four X with the seven six suited, really not wanting to Casper to be able to Hello, peel. Right. But now such a smaller sizing over, against uh, just like two you know, I think behind. fair to assume maybe a, a stronger post flop player. I mean, with this price, Delaney's going to have to continue, I think, in position. You know, maybe you just don't want to inflate a pot against a good op opponent anyway. But Balea was hoping maybe that Delaney had a hand that couldn't really continue against any size, really. Nice free card for Delaney here. A lot of good backdoor options between the three hearts and the five, six, and eight interaction. Check, check on the flop. Ooh. Seven of hearts on the turn. And every now and then you get a post-flop flip. This one, 50-50 on the turn. Look at that. Well, Delaney is going to bet the turn. And it's an overbet, Griffin. 1.1 in the pot, and he's bet more than 1.5. Yeah, and even if you think that you might be good here with the six. Yeah. So hard to 
deal with this maneuver. Playing a couple of time bank cards. Of course, with the shot clock in play, you have 30 seconds on every decision. If you need more thinking time, you have to use those time bank cards to extend the clock. One card used so far. Wow, player really giving this some serious thought, Griffin. With just a six. Well, the line doesn't make a great deal of sense from Delaney. You know, I guess you could have pocket sevens or pocket fives here. But you also have the queen six, which blo blocks that other set. Would you really be betting this amount with just a 10? So it looks. Here's a five or something. And that's a question about the sizing, I think. You can't really continue. So the fold from the chip leader. Like to bluff. And Sorry? Delaney, like now playing like 7.3 million. million. <laughs> <laughs> or bluff. Always better to have hands than bluff, right? But he can't have them all. They don't believe him, seven, James. We've seen a lot of bluffs shown down from Delaney. I really dry that time. Oh. Well, we need to go over to the other table where we have the super short stacked lean. Lena 900, Nicholas Ostet all in with four deuce against Denzel Speckman's Queen Jack. The flop is ace, six, deuce. Nice. No club, no jack, no queen. Could be set for a Lena double up here. Three on the turn. Just has to fade a queen or a jack. It's the jack! Ugh. And that will send Nicholas Astet to the rail in 12th place. Cash is for 71,150. So that means Mathieu de Meglio, who's hovering around the 16 big blind, big blind mark, does get the money jump. Sorry? Everyone that? now guaranteed 85 and a half K. Okay. Uh, Kings versus Ace Jack. But obviously a lot of disappointment. Lena 900 has a lot of fans, Griffin. We've talked about Nicholas Elstedt's online accomplishments so much in recent days. Yeah. $24 million in total online winnings. The second highest of all time. Yes. Who's first? Uh, the previous aim. Oh, the previous aim. Mormon? Was yeah. Good question. Mm. 100K. Ah, so it's super short, right? Yeah. I was super focused on Okay, that. held here. 25 big blinds in the small blind with 10 nine suited. <coughs> and does just shove it in there. Takes that Grafton and stuffs it. You got to stuff the Grafton. You got to stuff the Grafton sometimes, you know? And yeah, we are 30 minutes into the level. We have 11 players remaining. So that means we have a table of six and a table of five. Big bands are expensive now. Two more eliminations until we're down to nine and we redraw for seats at the unofficial final table. So confirmation from Stat Trek that it is Simon Matson, C. Darwin, who ah. is number one with $29 million in online winnings. Uh, Chris Mormon, by the of way, course. is fourth with $21 million. Any 
Anyway, sadly, Lena 900 no longer it with us. Out in 12th, 11 remain as we continue the quest to get down to the final table today on the penultimate day of the EPT Paris main event. The camera moved over there, taking photos by the poster. Mm. David Crockett says Lena is a girl's name. 2.5, 2.1, Correct. 2.2, 2.3. Well, thank you for your comment. Alexandra asks, who went out in 11th? No one. There are 11 players remaining. Thank, Thank you for your, your question. question. By the way, just to remind everyone, it is not Chat Pro Saturday. That got vetoed yesterday. You are free to say whatever you want, but you do not get to say it without consequence. Nobody will be judged to be correct. Nobody is objectively right, and the ban hammer will be swung if necessary. Joshua says, you guys are my favorite commentators. Love you guys. Thank you, Joshua, for your compliment. Crystal 109 says, chat pro Saturday is the only reason I came here. Well, bye. <laughs> bye. Don't blame me, blame the idiots yesterday who ruined it for everyone. box your What's cards. in the box? Well, Ace-10 is still ahead on a 9-8-8 flop. We just need to be there for two seconds. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, it's Ace-10. Five of diamonds, and Schultz now a 93% favorite. Fifth aid, QFT. Do you really think the Geneva Convention applies to the live chat on the Pokestars Twitch channel? Come on. I mean, all for people fighting for human rights, but this is not a fight worth picking. I love Corporal Poon's take on what happened yesterday. I think a woman was called a name or something. Yeah, and it's that tone of voice which was exactly the problem. Let me put it another way. Consistent and persistent toxic masculinity and borderline misogyny 
is going to result in certain nice things being taken away, <coughs> such as the right to have Chat Pro Saturday. But today, we're going to have a nice day. We're all going to say nice things. Right, Griffin? That's right. Speaking of doing things right. Yeah, Peter Jorgner just won a huge pot of Denzel Speckman. And that means Jorgner is now going to be second on the leaderboard. He's got around 8.15 million. It's Razvan Belaya, the online go. qualifier at the feature table, who is chip leader right now with just shy of 10 million. <laughs> Room, honey, or oh, no, another yeah, but not having the easiest time of it here against Delaney on this feature table. Delaney been playing real hard all day. It was a quote, I will never financially recover from this. Yes. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> well, the great thing is solid glass. Because chat pro Saturday is not a thing, I can do this. You're banned. JM says, compared to previous years, how does 1,606 entries compare? Um, we can't compare it to previous years. This is the first ever EPT Paris. But it is the biggest EPT debut in history, and it's the biggest main event played outside of Barcelona. So it's being looked at as a success. Like, what's it called? Uh, the cards game with like different stats. For, oh, I mean, a different, few different ones. I mean, the Pokemon cards, right? <laughs> one. Yeah, I thought of like with cards or something. Oh, like car cards. Yeah, the <laughs> German word is, word is quartet, but I don't know what the English word is. Yeah, like different stats and then... Yeah, we. I have a pretty good one. Ooh, 30. Ooh. On seconds? Wow. No, I can't beat that. German car. <laughs> a Volkswagen. Ah, oh. They are not doing well at the moment. I'm the banker. You might want to get rid of that. <laughs> I'm the banker here. Oh, damn it. Yeah, Monopoly. You can't take them home. I mean, maybe you can. <laughs> Time Banker sounds like from some sci-fi movie. Yeah, exactly, Time Banker. Was there a time banker in the Justin Timberlake movie, In Time? <laughs> there should have been. I mean, arguably that movie shouldn't have been at all. have that one. Well, I noticed that 800's a big bet. Joe Stapleton is engaging okay. viewers in the chat. Let's huh? see if he feels like engaging them verbally. Hello, my babies. 
I'm going to start things off on the right foot verbally with a fresh outlook and a positive attitude, although I do agree with everything that's been said. What are we at? We're down to 11. This one goes to 11. Sadly, due to the loss of Lean at 900, Nicholas Ostek going out in 12th uh, place. Yes, we are at a table of six and a table of five. Halfway through, level 28, 45 minutes of 40, 80 blinds. I I had a read on you. Yeah, Man, is it ever going to happen for Lean at 900? <laughs> Your mouth did this. Yeah, right. Yeah. Maglio, six, four, <laughs> off on the button. 13 yeah, big blinds. Don't do it, man. This is a Solid <laughs> bit of a posture. We did decide to call this fellow the Demeglio maniac, but that would be a little nuts even <laughs> for he. Razvan Balea. If he had a big stack, we could call him the Demegliodon. It's like a big shark, you know. I, I know. Jason Statham. I understand. Oh. If his name was uh, Clune, we could call him George Clooney. Yeah. The slow claps what I deserve. <laughs> Balea limping in, King Jack still got all the chips I see. Over 120 big blinds. Letting on the family with that performance, you know. Yeah. Low variance check Hi, back here. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Nice. Hi, his mom. <laughs> it was mom. Queen 8-8, eight, eight, <laughs> top pair for Held. First message I got from my mom after yesterday was, why were you and wearing Balea this jacket? holds <laughs> up a little bit. <laughs> wow. I think my mom's first message was laughing that I hadn't had a haircut. I will grant you one held joke during this hand if you want, Griffin. Oh, actually, okay. she was laughing at the fact Second that Second pair on the turn for held. That's also very rude. Ah, it's okay. We're sitting here acting, playing cars yeah. all day. Hey, doctors. Yeah, and Balea obviously picks up a few more ways to win this. Yeah. Yeah, I remember the king Seven still balls. live here. Seven real life dollars are not a fake one. Kings and eights do beat queens yeah, and nines. Like <laughs> I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying what it is. <laughs> All right, 400K in the middle. Heading to Fifth Street, which is the Ace of Hearts. Queen Nine still very good. But would be losing to Aces and Eights, I guess, huh? Yeah, good discipline here from Balea. Maybe could talk yourself into a bluff here to try to fold out a 9X type hand, but wouldn't be a very credible bet in a lot of ways. You know, if you did have an ace in your hand, you probably wouldn't be betting this turn. And Held is trying to get a little value here. Yeah, this is trying to get called by something like a 9x or maybe a king high and does get the king high call nice you know all those club misses the 10 sevens and seven sixes well done just betting a little bit to get some value and the chip leader makes the call i don't have it in me no i don't have it in me to value about that probably because i don't have it in me to call with king high there you go so i just so assume what's the point yeah I, i'm just like well if king high's not calling why am i gonna bet a queen pair of queens here <laughs> The Latin American Poker Tour is back. When are they going to send us to that? I want to go to Rio de Janeiro. Oh, yeah. They're sending Paul Jackson 
Action Jackson. Axon Jackson is going to Rio. March 2nd through the 6th. I'll be in Vegas for the Global Poker Awards. But that's cool. The Latin American Poker Tour. I am into it, but I will. I believe. It's not booked yet. But I believe I will be at the Irish Poker Open. The longest running Nell Nell hey Nell he, what is that? I don't know, but I might come too. Is that Irish? Yeah. They got a lot of weird it's words in Irish. Nille. Nihele. Nille. Try it again. Nille. Nihele. I'm trying to convince Hardigan to play the Irish Open. I don't think it's a done deal yet. No. But he does have Irish citizenship. I think it would be cool to see Hardigan play for once. Nihele. I'm going to have to get to the bottom of this. I'm going to go st straight to the Blarney Stone. Can you please call the coach? And find out. Like six times, seven times that he's doing this. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, no, 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 he doesn't. Yeah, but it's, let's call him for the page jump? Let's play first, yeah. Okay. Balea. For the other guys, I don't think they are doing because uh, Just yesterday. ask Laura. Yeah, yeah, I will. Uh, Drunk with power, <laughs> calling out to Maglia for the stalling. What is he using the full 30 seconds every time? Is that what's happening? I guess so, yeah. We are two players away from a 26,000 euro pay jump. Aces. I think it might be time for a little. ASMR, AA. Okay, go ahead. SMR. Really nice to get Delta's hand in the small blind here. Very aggressive player in the big blind in Delaney. He's been on a bit of a roll. Let's see how he reacts to this hand from Eld. Oh, my mistake. It's actually Casper the Friendly Ghost. King Queen off soon as Elephant. Especially about 30 big blinds effective. I'd love to just see a call here from Casper. But there might be a shove and it would be disaster. ASMR NLHE. <laughs> nice one. WTF Blizz. JMTG uses their first time ever chat to write stop. Which honestly only makes me want to encourage Griffin to do it more. You know how I feel about the word cringe. 650. Oh boy. Oh. This is what we, uh, in the technical term, call stepping in it. And now, what do you do if you're held? What indication have you gotten that Casper? would do this particularly light. So a part of you just wants to shove it in preflop, but you're so strong. What if Casper Blind off blind, I feel like you do, they don't have to be that strong in a three bat you hear, so maybe you can just call. But I think I heard the words all in. The old rip and dip. R and D, baby. Ooh, Casper asking for a count. Yeah, and this just has Casper covered from what we can tell. Yeah, this three bet is just, quite frankly, objectively a mistake. This hand is so strong blind on blind, but not really strong enough to get in 33 big blinds, which would represent, you know, 80, 90% of your stack. Facing that raise from the small blind, it just makes way more sense to just call, be under repped. You're gonna have the best king and the best queen most of the time. <sighs> can, I ask it, can I Instead, ask it? Instead, you've put in, you know. Can I ask a noob question? Yes, you always do. <laughs> <laughs> Is it better to get shoved on here and fold than to like flop top pair and then just get your lunch eaten on every street? 
Yeah, but you're you're operating under like a under the pre pretense that it's only aces yeah, and that I can like see all the hold like, cards. If Held had jacks here and this was the action, how you'd be like, "What was he doing?" Or you should call. Like <laughs> you know, it's just like mm -hmm. it's just it's a, such a an outlier scenario that Held actually has the aces. Um, and, and listen, certain board it, it doesn't just come in king and queen high every time too. It's just like what if you're up against king 10 and king jack here? I don't think that Held would raise and then four bet shove. Right. Would probably just limp or maybe raise fold. Nice fold. Nice fold, says Held. Floor table one. Floor table one. That's this one. Wonder what they're gonna say. They're gonna say, "Look, I think it was a, a mistake to throw a king queen." Also. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I hear an English too. Yeah, I was just explaining that the 30 seconds rule is not meant to be used in the 30 seconds all the time. It's normal time. So if he keeps doing it, something will happen? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, so just a reminder to keep the pace of play up. Yeah, and both players, you know, well within their right to. I wanted to know what he said. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously Demeglio is short stacked, does want to find those pay jumps, so has been utilizing what he can out of that time bank to get more hands played at the other table. But, uh, you know, that's not really what we want to be seeing happening as he does find his shove here and nothing on plus one. And then Balea has every right to be like, hey, dude, listen, no offense, but I have the chip lead and I have way more opportunities here to acquire even more chips when we're playing five-handed before the final table bubble here and you're taking extra 30 seconds every hand. Well, Demeglio wasting no time this hand to move all in. King Jack. Demeglio, the only Frenchman on this main feature table. How many Frenchmen do we have left? In the world? <laughs> what did you fold? Huh? You no, I know you don't know that. What did you have? Aces. Why? Oh. Well, we used On the other table, do we have any Frenchmen? I don't really like to separate people you by nationality. Have you you have told me that before, yeah. Oh, we have left. Okay, I didn't have aces. Yeah. No, I did have aces. Uh, you did have? I did have aces. Maybe. <laughs> there are two. <laughs> two total or two on the other table? Two total. We go. <laughs> They're under pace. They're huh? under pace because I think the, the French the represented 30% of the field. Mm -hmm. So we thought we'd have 50 euros. On if they if they broke even on their expectation, they'd have three of ten on the final table. That's, that's easy 50 euros. But two and one of them short. And Demeglio shoving under the gun this time. Queen Jack sweeted. So damn sweeted. Well, What's the best suit for myself? I gotta get the money back in somehow. Probably <laughs> clubs. <laughs> clubs, okay. Controversial. I guess we'll know in 30, 30 minutes. And the next day. Demeglio just steaming mad after but I had aces getting, I had the bet. He said he getting had his aces finger he wagged in his face. Yeah. Yeah, you can't I do that. Now he's all in, all in. Frenchman gum chewing has really <laughs> ramped up <laughs> quite a bit. I can afford it. It seems like as soon as he shakes your hand, you should give him 50 euros. <laughs> I don't understand this. When you have a strong conviction. <laughs> It's a very strong one. Very convinced I'm a liar. <laughs> the real first place prize. 
so much you're willing to lose are the fond friends. memories <laughs> <laughs> and the friends you make along the way. For, for this stack, yeah, I will. <laughs> Belea, Queen Jack, off suited. A club and a heart. Griffin's favorite suit, the club, of course. You do know I didn't open open jam, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was just Action thinking. Folds like, around to Delaney on the button. In that case, I wouldn't believe myself either. Either. With, jam. With Jack eight of uh, a lesser I suit. Three birds, I yeah. Yeah. Wow, Delaney, always willing to go after even the chip leader here. Look at that. 168, probably going to be upwards of 500 here. Not letting Balea run away with table captaincy here. A very worthy opponent is the Brit. And a quick fold. Nice hand. Nice hand. Respect. It's called not giving him the keys to the Lambo. That's how they stack up here at the featured table. Six on this table, five on the other. Balea, Bambalea. And Delaney been the most impressive by far in this level. You know, ended the last level, what we believe was showing a big bluff against Demeglio. Came into this level with 50 or 60 big lines and is all the way up to nearly 100. Definitely wasn't. So certainly someone to watch for this final table when it comes in just two eliminations. Unofficially. If you know he has aces, you you have to fold everything, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, aces you probably call. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Action's gonna kick off here with Casper. Actually, it already did kick off with Held, who folded. Casper joining him in the muck. Goes Delaney. Jack seven suited. Don't mess with the Johan. One, one. Oh. One. One, two. Schultz been a bit quiet slash card dead in this level. It's tough when you know you have the massive chip leader two to your left. And then a very active Delaney to your direct right, opening up a lot more pots. You know, if had Delaney opened up this pot, for instance, Schultz wouldn't have been able to make this open with Jack-7 suited. And now, right away, Demeglio waking Ooh. up with a pretty massive hand situationally. Button open. You're the short stack with 16 bigs. Got to be played as a shove. 40. And there it is. Emmeline. There goes the BB, there goes the DB. Nice little pick up D for Demeglio. How much do we have now? Up to 20 big lines is Mathieu Demeglio. 1.4 or something. Yeah. 1.5? 1.5 probably. 1.6 we got him on. 1.660, actually, which is nearly the amount of players that were in this event. Switch one of the zeros and sixes. 1606 runners in this incredible turnout for EBT Paris. <laughs> First of its kind. First of its name. on Henry Casper. The old Jack Deuce, a bye bye Ooh. Lady Luck. Lady Luck. Don't do it, Demeglio. Don't wake up with it. Good job. Good job. QQ for Delaney. What's up, Grenader Jake? Hey, buddy.
here just in time to see a raise and take it. Exciting stuff here at the final 11 from EPT Paris. Very impressive, sir. It's kind of like getting a, um, a really good gun in Destiny 2. The BFG, is that still a gun? Do you think about Destiny 2? My friend Jake's a Destiny 2 streamer. I mean, the BFG, ah, so I know what it stands for in Doom. Is it not? They don't use it in Destiny? I don't know. I think it's originally from Doom, but they probably put it into Destiny. Okay. I know it's from Doom. Do you know what it stands for? I do know what it stands for. I'm not allowed to say, though. Uh, I think... The BFG 9000. Right? Yeah, the big funny gun. The big Six, funny two, gun. Two, 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 seven. Nine, three, three point one, and a bit. Schultz out. So is Demaglio over to chip leader, Razvan Balea, you're of Romania. Pocket fours. at 160,000. Constantine held in the small blind. He's got something. Queen eight suitor, that is something. Strictly speaking, likes to take spots are held. And this is, I think that looks like a fold. What, how many have? How many are these? Casper in the big blind with the jack 10 off. Fun hand to defend. Henry Casper from Tallinn, Estonia. Owns a PR company. Used to do a bunch of work alongside like poker stars in Estonia. Back in the aughts. Incredible. <laughs> And the saddest thing is nothing. Chopped a seniors event in Barcelona last school. year. Nothing. Wow. I mean, Not a word. The, the TV and if he comes first yeah. or second, he'll yeah, go to the so top of the Estonian all-time money list. Nice. Was a good speech. All that info courtesy <laughs> of Howard Swains. Thank you, Howard. <laughs> King, queen, yeah, tray, I'm three hearts. Time, I might as well make it a little bit entertaining. Yeah. We're playing time bank poker. <laughs> Mochino son asks, isn't there a song on the Tenet soundtrack named Talin? Who has the Tenet soundtrack memorized? Not even Nerd Alert Griffin Bender over <laughs> here is going to bite at that one. Balea continues for 90,000. Nobody's got a heart. But Casper so needs to continue for this <laughs> really wow. small price. 90,000 into 440. No! Later. Look, you got a, you got dirty outs, buddy. Do they still use that? Dirty outs? Is that still a thing? I know why he folded, but that doesn't yeah, mean that, that I agree with it. Very expensive. Now? Maybe it's fair. Ethan agrees. He says that's not a good fold, surely. <laughs> Keep your opinion to yourself and don't call me Shirley. Of a table, brief little glimpse over there. Looks like today's mini EPT has just gotten underway about 20 minutes ago. $11 PKO, I hope you all are playing. On to Casper now, 10-9 off suit. Casper apparently was supposed to go on vacation tomorrow with his wife and kids, but if he makes the final table, they're coming here instead. Nice. Why 
And uh, blind Casper v. Delaney. King at 10 6. Pair of 10s for Casper. Trying to add the blue one. Yeah. <laughs> check, check. Another king on the turn. Maybe a 10 will bet now. Could do. And nope. I was going to say Delaney doesn't always just fold here with this queen high. But now I think I imagine it's going to have to go check, check. River is an ace. Check, check again. Ten's good. Nuts. Behind. Super nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Greg. He doesn't well, try anything. Casper up to 30 bigs after that hand. Pretty big disparity between the bottom three stacks of this table and the top three. Yeah. <sighs> top two, I should say, and the bottom four, maybe. I'll stay my ground this always. Three players much, under 40 bigs. Do we have combined six, seven, six? Two seven, players seven, with six, more six, than 90. Seven, I have three and a half. We can. A lot of ti uh, time to be wasted on TV, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 right now. <laughs> that makes sense. Action once again on Henry Casper. <laughs> oh, thanks. Hold 6 3 suited. On to the blinds. I don't think it's a good. <laughs> it's a good way to be the Delaney first. Delaney versus <laughs> Schultz. They were gonna remember, but uh, I already misplayed it. I should I should have done my speech here. Uh, yeah. I would have had guaranteed TV time. Yeah. Delaney limps in with a six. Schultz knuckles. The king do suited. The yeah, both speech. a little bit under repped here. Mm. You guys all know, <laughs> know it. <laughs> but I like the way this is being played. By the way. Uh, I doubt that at the TV table, Brand someone was going all in at that hmm? time. Someone was going actually all in at the same time. So you yeah. made it blue. It was I could have uh, five minutes before it got. Yeah, had yeah. Queen, Jack, 10, two spades. Big old flop for Schultz, who is behind, but the statistical favorite. And all of them outs. Especially when a pair for Delaney makes a very good hand for Schultz. Top pair, I should say. Yeah, drawing to the nuts, are you, with this ace six? So, need to call one. And there is the King high flush and the royal flush draw for Schultz on the turn. A royal street flash. Yo ho, yo ho. A king high flush for me. Bank card going in while Schultz decide whether or not to value bet, and if so, how much? Yes on the value bet. 430 on the how much? You win, sir. You win with your queen seven. Mm. Oh, so close. close. He was only off on each card. <laughs> the seven was right, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you were she. <laughs> Let's bet right. 50 euros on what I have. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what side do you take on the road? <laughs> <laughs> nice try. 
Having a little fun. B banter. Mm, these guys. Do you think they'll get together after this? Yeah. yeah. Duh. <laughs> okay. I feel like you're not, not uh, taking that bird in the end. I might not. <laughs> McCatalan says, why dealers doesn't change? I don't know. Sometimes it takes a long time to figure yourself out, to get it together. <coughs> Balea. 9-10 suited. Min raises. Exactly. Dessert Fox says maybe they're just happy with who they are already. Exactly. Exactly. Banana Bread says it's 10-9 suited. I'll, uh... Here's this one for you. Band ya. Also known as ya band. Thank you for your comment. No problem. Demeglio defending. Defendio? I don't know. 4-3 off, huh? yeah. and a pretty nice thing. flop yeah, here. Well this is not the hand I'll you want to defend with. Yeah. I was on purpose hiding my card. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was about to call you out. Looking for a read, and a read I got. <laughs> Meglio checks. Well, I have bets. 135,000 should be the end of this hand. It is indeed. Must be nice, 123 big blinds, 11 left in EPT Paris. It's all coming up Balea right now. Does anyone know what Balea means in English? I don't know. Do you know, Griffin? No. No, I guess we'll never find out. Is it that thing you do when you go like rock climbing? Belay. You belay. Uh, belay. Belay. Belay are the point. Okay. Nope. Turns out nobody in chat knows. There you go. Quinn says pretty sure belay has something to do with rock climbing. Nice. Nice. Ace King suited for held. UTG. Thank you. Seems like a lot of people are having trouble coming up with what Balea means. Uh oh. Ace three suited for Demet. Whoa. Good fold. Insta fold. Not that easy with how active this table is. It's weird. I, I asked what Balea means in English, oh, and everyone's just having time. trouble. I think we probably play another level. I think so. Yeah. It would make sense actually if we switch every level. I think it's two levels and then switch. Oh, okay. Because yesterday um, I was on the. Why is everyone having so much yeah. trouble yeah. figuring out what Balea means, means in English? It shouldn't be that yeah. hard. Two levels. Yeah. Two levels. I think more. We just switched Paris. like immediately yeah. Yeah. after just one level, right? But that was. Maybe because Queen Seven here for Balea defends against yeah, the yeah, Ace four. King. We yeah. a little Queen there. Hello, Queen. Right in front. I think it's meant to be two levels on switch. When there's 16 players. Yeah, when everything's yeah. going your way and you have all these level chips level. flicking in the one, yeah. the one level chip of yeah, the min yeah. raise, oh, even with queen seven, <laughs> it sure seems okay. Well, especially if the queen's going to hit. <laughs> yes. 
11 minutes left on the level, 11 remain, and 1,100,000 to the winner <laughs> of this event. Nine on the turn. Not super scary for the queen nine. Queen seven. Sorry for the queen seven. And not very helpful for the ace king. Ricardo El Costa says trouble. What are you having trouble with? It was a simple question. Three of spades on the river. After check check on the turn. Balea should be popping his head out here. Instead plays it as a check. And if the design of this check was to induce a bluff trying to fold out, you know, your perceived five, and that's, but I think a held is wearing it a bit too much on his whole body right now to turn this hand into a bluff. And, and he's going to wave the white flag expecting to lose to something like a five or a nine. And going to be happy to see a queen because, you know, no bet would have gone, would have worked there. Nope. One considered bluffing. Three bet. Check, check, check. Yes. Boring, by the way. Yep. Oh, I think it was on my part the best line I could have checked. <laughs> yep. Well. Yeah. What do you, what'd you want him to do? Mm. Never bet because he didn't make the best hand? You got a trap. Spice this game up. How, how uh, could he have trapped? Time. You got a trap with Ace King. To, uh, drink. Sure. Oh. What are we doing here, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing here? Min betting to protect themselves. Future game purposes. Okay, so people are now saying Blair is causing a lot of trouble for Romanians. Not sure about that. What do you mean? Eight minutes left on the level. Delaney going to kick things off here with Ace-Jack offsuit. You know, if we call offsuit hands off, like Ace-Jack off, yep. couldn't we call like a suited Ace-Jack, Ace-Jack on? Jacking should... on? Sure, yeah. Ace Jack on. Sure. It is on usually too, right? When it's suited, it's on. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah it is on. Delaney with Ace Jack off. Ace Queen off for Balea. And Balea going to go aggressive. Balea's got all the chips. This might be a bit too high up in Delaney's range here to fold. And I think that's why we're seeing it being played as a call here. It's also too strong to really want to turn into a, a bluff with a four bet. So we're going to get the call and we're going to see a flop with well over 1.2 million in the pot. These are the two biggest stacks. At the table, king, 10, nine, two hearts. So both players having this flop kind of surrounded. <laughs> yeah. They're going to need to fire something here. Loading up. Ooh. 
That's pretty big there. 900 into 1.4. Really going to be attacking the hands that are on base here. And Delaney might just fold this hand. Even though you flopped a gut shot to the nuts, you might think your ace could be live. I don't know, sometimes this is just gonna be what it looks like, right? You just dominated pre-flop. Don't have a lot of outs post-flop. Other than that, gut shot to the nuts and Delaney does ditch the worst hand. Oh, it was the bluff, huh? The look back at the oh, hand. I, I just wanted to check it. Ah, uh, just wanted to check it with the ace five, huh? Nice hand. Rio Oyer on YouTube is having trouble coming up with the meaning of Balea. Michael Zimmerman says Google's having trouble coming up with the meaning of the word Balea. Okay, but who is the better? I don't know what could be so hard about this. Are you trying to? <laughs> Find your way out. <laughs> Buy out it sounds hot like price. It. It sounds <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Razvan Balea now over 11 million chips here as we I want to drink from my get <laughs> close to finishing up this level 28. 11 left here. Yeah. 140 bigs. That's more big blinds than the bottom four stacks combined. Action is folded around to Constantine held in the small blind. Ace two suited. Oh yeah, sir. Or on top. You can put it goes right top again, yes. huh? That's the easiest. Casper Berg, Berg Casper. King five for Henry Casper. Checks it. Hello, ace, ace, queen. Casper is gonna think that he has the best hand with king five here a decent amount of the time, but held has not elected to bet the flop. Look at that. Hard to get out of chip out of Casper, but Held has figured out one way to do it. Set the trap. Casper bets 80,000, Held makes the call. Turn card is the Nine of Diamonds. Casper drawing deed like a ghost. Dead like a ghost? A friendly ghost. Nice. Held checks a second time. Maybe a second barrel will get it done. Well, just kidding. Yeah, I'm very surprised by this line from Casper. Um, you know, if you do think king high is the best hand, it's going to be better to just check back. You're never going to fold out a queen. It's certainly not an ace on the turn here. 170,000 the bet now, just under half pot. is going to continue to, nope, not smooth calls. Going to raise to 550,000. Not the most comfortable man right now. No. 
doesn't look comfortable. Kind of looks like he's trying to turtle up. <laughs> Don't waste the time bank. Yeah. yeah. Casper folds <laughs> the king high. We're going to squeeze in one more hand. Hey, what was the other one? That's the unknown one. That, for that, you have to go on stream. Uh, After the break. I guess we're the same here, no? Fuck. Yeah. No, we are moving. No. Okay. Yeah. Are you sure? I think they told us we're moving, right? So lucky. The last. Oh, we're moving, right? Big black. Okay. After the break. Completely sure of that. Yeah? They said it, right? Oh, they did? They said? I think. I don't. I don't know. I no? But it was oh, two levels. Damn. We'll figure out in the mistake. Should have never shown then. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. All right, my babies. One last hand in this level. Johan's folded. Demeglio's out. Balea, King Nine suited. Chip leader is going to chip lead. Here comes your raise. After the table, uh, change. Change. Okay. <laughs> Move backwards. Uh oh, more hearts for held. Lesser hearts. Queen 10. Aki Lock asks, what happens at the end of a level? We take a break, and when we come back, the blinds go up. Just, Just a call here from Held. Make the call in position. I like to pay now. Oh, I can pay. And the flop is ace, nine, six, just one heart out there. A pair of nines for Balea. And Alex not to continue. It's gonna give Held a chance to bluff at this and Held will oblige. One hundred forty thousand, and Balea is going nowhere. Nope. Oh, Balea means trouble. I think that's what they were trying to say. Ah. King on the turn, Ooh. two pair now for Balea, and held drawing just to the gut shot now. Uh oh. Wow, held this checking really... twice is working out for Balea. Well, Held wants to attack those 9x hands that will have to fold on the turn here. You know, if this, if this turn card was the jack and Held bet, you know, Balea is going to fold that third pair, which is the 9. But because it is the king and it's pr improved Balea to two pair, you know, if Balea had the 9 10 suited here, would check call the flop? Probably check full the turn. So Held is just running into the top of Balea's range here, and suddenly the pot is going to be, I mean, an SPR really of one to one um, once Balea makes this call. I mean, if you don't improve, do you, do you give up once you get stationed here? Well, the thing is, it's difficult to put your opponent on something as strong as two pair. At this stage, you probably think, okay, he has ace X. He would fold out all those nines that aren't two pair. So if he has ace X, do I think he's ever folding if I shove river? Probably not, and definitely not now, even though this hand, this technically has not improved. This is a bad card for Balea, of course. Yeah. But Held's perception of this hand is that, you know, Balea has a lot of ace Xs. Well, Balea's checked for a third time. And Held does give up. Good. That's an appropriate face, I think. Yeah. And huge chip lead going to the break here. Over 12 million for Razvan. 
Balea. That's 150 big blinds. And we'll be taking a look at the chip counts in just a second, and you'll see what a huge disparity there is between Razvan Balea and the entire rest of the table. Razvan's got about twice as many chips as Brian Delaney. And then everyone else is really lagging from there. We'll be switching to the other table after this break, as you can see, 123 for Belea, 65 for Delaney, 47 for Schultz, and then three stacks that are not comfortable at all. We are headed to a break. When we get back, new feature table, more from EPT Paris when we return. Ace King, the hand for Campbell, and that is a raise. It's a 5x raise. And there is a significant re raise. Joe Hashim makes it 1500 with pocket aces. Yep. And actually, 3x in position is about the norm these days. It went from being really small, and then we, we got kind of thought that really big was bad, but we're kind of at about 3x now in position. Just a call from Campbell, and he flops dangerously well. Checks to Hashem, who bets 2,000. Continues the aggression. I feel like there's very little getting away from this in a three bet pot. He announces all in. Seven and a half thousand is five and a half thousand more. Shake the head from Joe Hashem. Perhaps fearing the kings, queens, and obviously king, queen. Queens. No, but I can. As aces. Bit of a cooler that one. Bit of a setup. And looks like James Campbell is the at risk player here. Yeah, needs oh. to find the king, and he does on the river. Unbelievable. Escape. Unbelievable. Well, Hashem will still be in the tournament, but losing a big chunk of chips here on day one, when he was a significant favorite, aces versus ace king. open with seven, Samson calls with tens, Jensen in with eight, six. Hashim in with seven, five. And the blinds fold, so four way to the flop. Nine, seven, five. So this is two pair for Hashem, but the set for Fegerli, the straight for Jensen. Samson with an over pair to the board. How much is going to go in here? This could get ugly. Uh, I'm going to say almost all of it from everyone, potentially. Samson, you've got to say maybe the only player who could get away, but everybody else flops impeccably well. An insane board given the three sevens right there. That's obviously the key card to have dropped on the flop. Jensen raising, 
And Hashem has a bottom two, which is very strong, but very vulnerable. There's almost no good turn cards for Joe Hashem. So I think he's going to be incentivized to play as quickly as possible and get as many chips in when he's most likely to have the best hand. This is an outrageous board, by the way. It's gone bet and raise, I believe. Yep, so we do see him re-raise re the flop. To four and a half thousand. Action now back on Frodo Fagali, who has the sevens. The middle set, facing a lot of action. I'd be so confused right now. Yeah, me too. It's a really tricky spot to navigate. It looks like we see Frodo make the call. So Samson folds his tens. Yes. I think that's pretty easy at this point. But it's Jensen who has the stone cold nuts. And once you see this amount of action, it's very, very likely one of these two players has something really strong. So I like playing quickly here. You don't want the six of diamonds to roll off on the turn and kill all of your action against a set or two pairs. So I think Jensen makes a great decision, moves all in. And I just wonder now, there's been so much action on this 975 flop. And, and Hashem does have bottom two. I, I wonder if he can get away. I mean, the action, and bear in mind, this is still very early levels of the event. It's level two, right? It yep. smells of a set against a straight or set over set. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, we saw tens folding, so that, that and that seemed like a pretty standard fold even even back here in 2005. So bottom two pair here. Actually, I, I think there's a good chance that Hashem can get away with it, given the action we've seen. And, and I don't think any of the action is incorrect. I think everyone here is right to play quickly because it, it, it's a very vulnerable board. Yeah, Joe gets away from the 7-5. Well, Fagley get away from his set is the question now. This would be a lay down. Yeah, Joe Hashem's lay down. It's, it's nice, but it's kind of expected. I don't think Fagley can fold. Just because there's some consideration that even against a straight, he still has outs, and he could occasionally be up against something like Jack-10 of diamonds. Actually, Fagley in a lot worse shape because we saw Hashem toss the seven and the five, so pairing yes. the board going to be a lot tougher. Jensen, the at-risk player, big favorite to double up. And holds. Huge pot for Jensen here on day one. Yeah. Very early stages of day one. And there are two clubs on the flop. Helm checks to Anderson. Bets 40k with just queen high. And here is okay. Helm raising with his flush draw. Sure, as played. You're going to be in there at 9 and 5 and flop a flush draw. I mean, this is clearly where all the money goes in, right? <laughs> Oh, wow. I think the money is all going to go in here. I mean, you just don't see this anymore. No. This is awesome. Makes it 280k total with queen high, which is actually the best hand right now. to call. 160 to call. Call. And Hill oh boy. just calls on the come, as Joe would say. <laughs> Weird hand alert. 
More than 600k in the middle. And now Helm Does has he a gut shot to go with his flush draw. If he goes 6-7, that would just be incredible. But I don't know that we're going to get there. And Anderson shoves on Helm. I'm retracting the weird hand alert, and I'm actually going to replace it with the amazing hand alert. Yeah, this is crazy. Well, Hilm folds his draw. Anderson did officially have the best hand with Queen High. You can see the equities are very close, though. So, hey, getting a fold there. Plus, in your mind, you think he folded out much better. Yes. I would tell him I folded a three. Oh, well, this is ace versus ace, and this could be a, yeah. All in from Skervold, called by Anderson, and Skervold is the at-risk player, and he is behind. Domination Nation. Dispatcher Farva out in front. King 9-4, all hearts. Skerville does have the 10 of hearts. Can he fade all those hearts? Anderson pairs his queen. Don't celebrate prematurely. Your opponent still has a flush draw. I mean, it's a red card that isn't a heart, I think, is the only acceptable celebration there. No heart on the river, and that will see Mads Anderson take it down. Edgar Skervold is the runner-up for around $220,000, more than 400K US for Mads Anderson, the winner of the Copenhagen leg of season two of the European Poker Tour. This event played back in January of 2006. You guys know I'm a bit of a dreamer, so I hope that one year it is 50%, at least 50%, the rest of the world, 50% the America, and maybe one year, 75%. I guess a good starting point, Eric, would be to kind of establish what you do as president of the GPI. What does your job actually involve? It's, um, you know, we're a very small team, so the, the title sounds grandiose, but what it really <laughs> means is everything, right? Everything that needs to be done is done. Um, I'm happy to say that I have a small team, but the team is, is quite exceptional. So Quite inept. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys know half the team. You know, not the best, but we'll we'll keep them around. They they don't cost us much, so we'll keep them around. <laughs> Cheap um, is always the number one quality when putting together a team. That's right. So number one role for me is, of course, motivator, as you can see uh, for for the team. Yeah. But it's the guy guide, guide the team, talk to a lot of uh, the big wigs in poker. Uh, you know, we work with with uh, partnerships with. You know, it was some of the best in the industry, including uh, PokerStars. We're very happy uh, to be partnered with PokerStars. So a lot of discussions like that. At this time of year during award season, uh, I'm a politician, basically. You know, trying to yeah. talk to one, talk to the other, you know, smooth some egos. I'm sure on Friday night uh, I'll have to smooth a few uh, a few of the egos, which is fine. Uh, but it is whatever needs to be done uh, gets done. So a lot of the partnership stuff, trying to create, uh, find work for the team. You know, during the pandemic, it was a pretty rough uh, time for us. So trying our best to, to to find some old results or something like that. So working with the team for that. So yeah, a lot of not not necessarily presidential stuff, but a lot of uh, a lot of the stuff you'd expect as someone uh, who heads the the GPI and the Hendama. Eric, as far as your total year-round workload is concerned, what percentage of it is uh, the awards? Uh, and then the rest of the year, what are the rest of the p percentages? Like, is it keeping track of stats, updating the website? Like, how does that all break down? 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, right now, you know, we had a, because of the date for the awards, and those, of course, are always de determined with our partners at Poker Go, uh, the awards are about a month earlier than we'd like, uh, you know, in a usual term. So we literally had to finish out the year, do our players of the year, which is always stressful, having to recount all the data and make sure everything's fine, and literally have the awards going on at the same time. So right now, it's 100% awards. It's been like that for, I guess, since January 1st or end of December. Mm -hmm. um, and then the awards, you know, we, we do take it's not just a one month thing we, we do we've already started working on the 20 i guess the 2023 appearance of the awards uh that's already already started or uh, sheets tons of meetings have already started what categories are we going to look for matt this year? savage has already been nominated in 2023 <laughs> four, times, four nominations already <laughs> um including breakout player of the year which is quite an honor uh, for, for matt you know, given his experience and then you're right um, the the rest of the year you know talking to the players seeing if we need to to adjust things uh, over on the GPI and then, you know, to, talking to clients and all that good stuff, uh, trying to find as many new results, new schedules. You know, we're really pushing schedules on our end as well. The Handamaba has traditionally always been a place for people to go see their results. But to me, it should be a one-stop shop where you can go see your stats as well and upcoming schedules. So that's a big, big priority for us. I sometimes get the sense that trying to do this as noble an effort as it is, can be a bit of a thankless task because there'll always be people sure. bitching and whining and pointing out the flaws. And, you know, Joe raised it already. It does feel quite US-centric. I think it makes sense this year because if we talk about live poker in 2021, 99.9% .9 of it was in North America. But in previous years, it still felt that maybe Europe now slips under the radar more than it did when it had its own award show. Sure, and you're right about that. You know, I, I do find it funny that the, the Europeans complain, but what about the South Americans? What about the, the no, Asians? That's they're fair. getting that's very they're fair getting comment. ripped to shreds too. Um, I'm proud to say that this year we have some categories. The poker personality, which was voted by the fans, has four nations represented, including Japan, France, uh, Canada, and the U.S. That's, I, I think we're building towards that, James. You know, we always say that. Let's not forget that poker is at least 50% US driven in yeah. normal years, right? 50% uh, of the players that play poker on the hand mob are American. 50% of the players ranked on the GPI 300 are American. So we can't lose focus about that too. And it is that there are several talented Americans. You know, it just so happens that Joe flies the American flag, but he could be flying the, the Australian flag. So, but I agree with you and I, I've been very vocal about this. Uh, I, I always come out and say it. I think the, um, the BSOP in Brazil is yeah. one series that gets totally shut out every year. And that's Ready bullshit. I mean, that is, uh, so they do amazing events every single time, not just in Sao Paulo, everywhere around the country. I think that's where my ideal is. And you guys know I'm a bit of a dreamer. So I hope that one year it is 50%, at least 50% the rest of the world, 50% in America, maybe one year, 75%. Welcome back to Paris and the PokerStars European Poker Tour. It's day five of the main event in the French capital in partnership with Le Club Barrier. As we play down to the final table today, coming back from break with 11 players spread out over two tables. And again, we've gone with the big flip as we bring the five-handed table back to the main stage. Peter Jorgner, the table chip leader with 85 big blinds right now, it is. Ras Van Balea, who is the overall chip leader with around 100 big blinds. Uh, big stack for Denzel Speckman, not so many bigs for Fabrice Bigot. And Matty Chowy, Saar Wilf, two players in the danger zone. Danger zone! That is the voice of Nick Walsh. I am James Hartigan, and this is the start of level 29. Blinds 50,000, 100,000 with a 100k big blind ante. Uh, looking at the fact we've got two short stacks here, Nick, and we know We've also got another short stack on the six-handed outer table. I predict that during this level, we will get to nine. I think we are going to see the redraw in the next 90 minutes. Yeah, I think you might be right. We're getting real, real close now. And of course, all of the prize money is now on the board because 10th and 11th pay the same. 85,400 euros. And then you see a money jump with every elimination. And today, 
we are going to start paying out those six-figure scores. 111,000 for ninth, 144,000 for eighth. Our quest today is to get down to six. So tomorrow, ridiculous sums of money culminating with that 1.17 million euro prize for the winner. And a reminder, in France, the gaming laws will not allow us to facilitate any deals. It's almost time to get the action restarted. Average stack right now is a little bit below the 50 big blind mark for the first time since we started covering this event on day two. We have slipped below a 50 big blind average, but as we just referenced, we will probably correct that over the course of this session. Expecting to get down to a single table during the next session. There is the outer table. As we make our way to the main stage. This is where it counts, James. This is where it counts. Those pay jumps looming. Our final table so close now. Imagine sitting with a middling stack and you're just going, guys, if, if you could just leave now, that would be great. Make another, like, I don't know, 100 grand, something like that. Yeah. So this is hand 60 of the day. The blinds are 50, 100, and here is the super short stack. Sar Wilf starts the hand with five bigs, ace queen on the button. Even I know how to play this. Sounds about right. Yeah, he is all in. Ace four in the small blind for Shoei, who, of course, has got 11 bigs. Wow, this is really interesting. Honestly, ace four diamonds could definitely make a call here in the small blind. I think with the ICM pressure and it being half of his stack to make the call, SB, you know, this is not easy. This is not an easy situation. So far, Wolf being pretty solid, not getting too out of line. So I don't imagine he'd be doing this with a particularly crazy range. But at five big blinds, effective, James, you know, you're, you're getting it in pretty, pretty wide here. You're not going to have too many more opportunities to steal blinds. Shoving from the button is usually a good one. Nice fold there from the ace four suited. Honestly, if it wasn't for the stakes, I think there's a chance we might have seen the gamble. King 10 will call, though. Bigo can afford to take the flip here. 21 and big blinds to start the hand. Sorry, James. Not quite a flip, but Bigo does have live cards. Yes, indeed. The 60-40 scenario, the sort of almost flip. So Wilf slightly ahead, but at risk. And obviously gets the bad news, knows that with Mehdi Chawi thinking that long, there's a very strong chance he folded an ace. And confirmation, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> Jack, 7-6 with two diamonds. So kings and tens right now, the cards that Wilf needs to fade. Of course, a diamond on the turn would give Bigo additional outs. The nine of diamonds would be extremely, extremely spicy. Yes, backdoor straight possibilities oh. as well. Or he could just drill the 10 on the turn, leaving Tsar Wilf with eight outs, aces, kings, and queens. Needs to hit on the river. It's an eight, and that is a KO. Sar Wilf dispatched in 10th place. 11th place, my apologies. 85,400 euros, so we are now at 10 players. And that means we're going to have to balance the two tables because we're four-handed on the main stage. They're playing six-handed at the outer table, so a player from that table is going to move to this table. Yeah, GG to S. Wilf. Great spot for the ace queen. Great spot to get back in the mix. I feel like he, I feel like he played really well throughout um, his time at the feature table in these final two tables today. Uh, just unlucky there against the king ten, but it is a 60-40, guys. Equities run close there. 34 bigs for for Brees Bigot, and just going back to the payouts, Nick. And I'm thinking specifically tomorrow when we're down to the final three or four players, and. I think one of two things probably happens. Either we are going to see people in ICM jail and the average stack become ridiculously shallow, or 
the players are going to step away from the table and they're going to go and have a conversation somewhere and we're not going to know what they're talking about. <laughs> nudge, <laughs> nudge, <laughs> wink, wink. That's always the danger when we're enforcing French lie. That's always the danger. <laughs> I mean, obviously, in an ideal world, you would have all deals done transparently, yep. authorized, signed off and approved by the tournament staff. But if that legally cannot be done, yep. then you do open the door to players discussing remuneration privately. Indeed. And um, I think it also comes down to chip stack as well. It's like how we finish up today, I think, will make a big difference to those conversations if they occur at all. But also... Obviously, that we could see one player start to really snowball and then have loads of other players covered and start to really put others in ICM jail where they're more equally stacked and we have one big stack bullying all the shorties. So play paused on the main stage while we await the arrival of a new player. So having lost our Wilf in 11th place, we're down to four here and we need to be playing five-handed, but there is still a hand in progress at the outer table. Once that hand is concluded, Whoever was due to post the big blind next will move to the main stage. And in fact, I believe that the player due to take the big blind on the next hand at the other table is the chip leader. So Razvan Balea will be coming to the feature table once they've finished the hand they're on. Wow, he is so stacked as well at this point. <laughs> So a reminder, guys, that our plan today is to get down to six. That's what we normally do on the penultimate day of an EPT. We play to the last table and beyond. We consider six-handed action to be the official final table. And in terms of who decides who has to move, the tournament staff will always take the player who is due to post the big blind on the next hand. That's the random nature of it. So we can see the button in front of Delaney. So we can see that Belair will be the next big blind, so he will be the player to move. Yeah, the big blind thing is fairly standard everywhere. Yeah, it makes sense, right? That's how you randomize it, quite right. Well, that hand concludes with a win for Delaney. And we're going to need a lot of racks because there's a lot of chips to move. It's a good feeling when they bring over like six racks to make the move. And we think that Balea still has around 100 big blinds. Of course, the current big stack at the feature table is Peter Jorgner with 83 big blinds. We still have a short stack here, Mehdi Chawi with 11 bigs. And Meglio was still short at the end of the, right, the last session, so. Interesting dynamic to follow. Yeah, a couple grins around the table. I think people are really pleased to have arrived at this point. Obviously, this is where it really starts to get interesting with the pay jumps. As James mm -hmm. already pointed out, 10th and 11th getting the same. Now we see a pay jump very next knockout. It's a big one, too. About 30-ish, 30K, something like that. Uh, while we're waiting for Balea to arrive, Nick, yeah. just want to quickly we'll highlight like the next to Amsterdam, and now mini EPT Paris series and today's first tournament, which did start more than an hour ago, but is still in late registration. It's an $11 PKO. The guarantee's been smashed. There are EPT satellite tickets added to the prize pool. Still time to get in. But you will come there? Yeah, if I can fly on We got the chip leader. EU, so Yeah, guys, get involved. There's so much added value there. And obviously, as we alluded to before, it would be super cool to have one of yes, our EPT special right. tournament players <laughs> then become qualifiers and then end up going deep in future EPTs. Absolutely. That's, that's, those are the kind of Absolutely. stories that are great for you as an individual, but then also you know great for the game of poker, creating those really, really cool spin-up stories that are really so important to the MTT mythos. Well, of course, tomorrow we have the mini main, which actually awards a Monte Carlo package to the winner. 99 bigs for Raz Van Balea. 
Uh, yeah, it would be great if we could touch base, as the kids used to say, with the winner of that package tomorrow so that we can uh, highlight that player on our Monte Carlo live stream. So play is back in action now. Shall we? Handed at each table and not officially hand for hand. At this point, the staff tend to operate what's known as soft hand for hand, where they will monitor the pace of play at both tables. And if one table is playing significantly faster than the other, they may hold the deal. As we are now five handed guys, you're going to see much wider ranges. We're going to see a much faster pace of play generally just because we have fewer players to get through, fewer players to play hands multi-way, etc. And obviously now a couple short stacks here. We could see a bunch of push fold players trying to bully their way into picking up some dead money and or getting the flips that they require in order to make it to a final and surviving in this EPT main event here in Paris. Looks like we had a limp and a check. Another blind v blind situation. Again, guys, one of the main reasons why I really advocate for, for you know, practicing your, your spins or playing spins in general, why I think spins can be relevant to any individual who wants to play tournament poker in general is just because you do get really good at playing these shorter stacked blind v blind spots where maybe you don't get as much practice if you're just playing you know, eight-handed, nine-handed and don't get a chance to go to final tables as often or the final few tables where you're forced to play them more frequently like we see here. This is where it really, really counts. So... Uh, Little situation brewing here. Jorgne in the big blind with the top pair. Bigo has the decent bottom pair with a good kicker. Again, blind v blind ranges are super wide. So it's very difficult to get away from pairs on flops. And this is quite the coup for Jorgne. Hundred thousand apiece. We get the four of clubs on the turn. Jorgen are now a nine to one favorite. I think on the turn it's going to be a similar scenario. Bigo is probably going to want to check this a bunch. Jorgen is going to want to bet a bunch. This might be a spot where, because we haven't seen as much from Jorgen, him being maybe a little bit less experienced than Bigo at these sort of late game scenarios, if we see a second barrel, I just don't think Jorgen has as many bluffs as one of our you know, really experienced EPT champions or EPT finalists. So I think you can give him a lot of credit here. I think just generally speaking, you might want to be more sticky against somebody that you recognize who's going to have more sort of like gut shot bluffs with, on two streets, maybe you know, had a gut shot on the flop, now picked up a flush draw on the turn where you're still going to have the best hand. So the second barrel Bigger now, 350K into a pot of 500, so really significant bet here. And he's definitely giving him a way to get out. Elkanut's pointing out that Saar Wilf was so close to being the first Israeli player to make two EPT main event final tables. Sadly, close don't count. Close, but no cigar. about to say there has been an Israeli EPT champion, Iri Gilboa in Sochi. How much you pay, sir? Uh, so this hand Folded to Mehdi Chawi, who has an 11 big blind stack, and Jack's in the cutoff. So now we are at 10 players, Nick. As we've highlighted many times, there is a pay jump with every single elimination. And that is something that Chawi has to be cognizant of before making a move with Jack's. Yeah, and if you guys are on, over on Twitch, you can type exclamation mark payouts in the chat to see the full breakdown. Um, Chowie not messing around here, all in for about 11 and a half big blinds. Hashtag human calculator. Yeah, 
Yes, we all fully embrace the convenience of the 5100 blind level. Jorgna, artisanal sourdough in the small blind. So 87 bigs for Jorgna. Mehdi Chowie has left one big blind behind, as is customary in many of these late game scenarios. Jorgna makes the fold, was behind, considerably dominated in fact. Big blind doesn't want to dance either. And thank you, Dana Craven, for reminding me of that awesome expression. Close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. So Chowie chipping up to 13 big blinds. Game Showman asks, will the tables merge once we reach nine? Nine is when we get the final redraw. So one more elimination. They'll draw for seats at the main feature table. They will all be playing at the same table. And then we will carry on until we reach six players. And I actually think that the way things are going, that is an achievable objective today. Oh, yes. Yeah, we've done really well here in Paris. I think there was a couple moments when it was looking a little bit dicey, but we're on track now. Be go here in the cutoff now. Queen Jack of the offsuit variety. Brutalus asks on Twitch, James, which Premier League team do you support? Is that a soccer thing? I, th I think they might be talking about soccer ball. Woof. Woof indeed. Bigo's going to raise this up. I mean, Jack from the cutoff seems good. He had about 32-ish big blinds here at the start of the hand. Into our big blind now. The Leia, 97 bigs, very, very deep indeed. Has a hand he probably wants to defend very frequently just as a call. There it is. Always coming seven, and the chip leader has the advantage. Three to one favorite. Checks and the queen on the turn. Bigo begot a pair better than a seven now. And he is a nine to one favorite. Yeah, I think Balea knows what's up though. When people check these kinds of boards and single raise pots, they will have plenty of queen high, king high, ace high. So he's not going to be thrilled about this turn. Plenty of turns that would have been a lot better for him to either lead or just, you know, confidently check call where he knows he's going to have the best hand a lot. Technically speaking, okay, decides not to. I was going to say, technically speaking, probably should still call a turn, but just in case, because he does have a decent hand here, given the fact we're shorter handed now, coming from cutoff into big blind. The check on the turn, extremely trappy from Bigo. Is there a blocker bet here, James? So 600K in the middle. A blocker bet size here would be like 150, maybe like 100. Oh, wow. Chunky bet there in the end. Very surprised to see that. 450K on the river into a pot of 600. Obviously, snap, snap called. Bigo's going to pick up a decent sized pot here. I was thinking he might try and target some ace highs that might want to check down, maybe try and get some crying calls from some ace high, king high type combos. Obviously slow down the action if his opponent did have a trap. Over at the other table, Nick. Looks like the action is on Constantin Held. Your friend with him? And Held is betting. Held is betting almost everything he's got. It's a virtual all in from Held. He's left one chip behind. Tell him my name, he doesn't know. Yeah. 
and then gets put all in by Johan Schultz. So Held is the at-risk player here. He's just tabled the Grafton, 10-9 suited, 10-9 of clubs. Schultz has got 5-4 of hearts. It's a straight versus a flush. The straight for Schultz, the flush for Held. So that means Constantin Held has just doubled up and we have not seen an elimination at the other table. So held in a much stronger position now. And let me just check. Yeah, Mattia de Meglio still short, still in the danger zone. Danger zone! And of course, we've got an 11 big blind stack at the main feature table. Mehdi Chawi in the big blind in this hand. That's what they're playing for, guys. Pretty trophy. So Bigot opened under the gun. has been three bet by Jorgner. Shawi with queen five can muck that. Action back on the original Razor, who's got the best hand. Yeah, he's got to be pretty happy with the ace queen suited here. Uh, Bigot here, guys, with about 38 bigs. Obviously, probably going to be calling and or four betting. I don't think he's going to fold here too often, but I don't think we've seen too many like out of line three bets from Jorgnes so far, James. So that's got to be playing on Bigot's mind. He's in such an interesting spot, though. Obviously, those ladders just puts it in the bin. I stand corrected. Perhaps he was thinking along those lines I just mentioned. Maybe a tighter three betting range. I think at this stage, though, that pay jump looming is so big, James, right? Like, even if you think you have the best of it there, just allowing one of the extreme shorties to bust at this point could net you another 30 grand or thereabouts. So he's playing it snug, and I completely appreciate that given the ICM pressure he's under. And he's one of the players feeling it the most, especially with Mehdi Chawi on this table having 11. Other shorties also on the other table, also at risk. Potentially. Like, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense if there is a redraw. Yeah, before like any action happens. Yeah, a risk, like it was both already over there and. I can confirm, by the way, that we have an EPT runner up watching on Twitch. Okay. Anyway, Russell anyway, Carson, no like, who was second so. at EPT Snowfest in 2010, the runner up oh, to wow. Alan Becker. Yeah. Ah, so that, that, that that's why I'm asking Russell that. thinks he might be the only person watching the stream who has a top two finish in an EPT main event. Nine, nine. Prove him wrong. Yeah, yeah well timed three bet there, though, from the King Nine. Nice little bluff gets through. Jorgna definitely making a few moves now, which is great to see. Balea is going to play from the button. Uh, obviously, licensed to play a much wider range here with the bigger sack, too. Quick fold from the small blind. Mm -hmm. well, like, you could have, like, waited for, like, seven seconds. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. No problem, like, uh, it's not... Uh... So it's over. So the discussion with the floor is about the incoming redraw. Because yes, we have so seen so action nine, at the nine, secondary nine. table, at the other table. And you might notice that there is a player missing from his seat. Let's recap what happened. Johan Schultz with Queen 10. Mathieu de Meglio all in with Ace 8. The board, 9-6-6 with two hearts. A 10 on the turn gives Schultz a pair. De Meglio 
Tries to gain a little bit of equity by putting his bag over his shoulder. <laughs> what a bag it is, too. Barry Greenstein does not make an appearance. The eight is too little too late. Macho de Meglio eliminated in 10th place. Cash is for 85,400 euros. So that's what happened. And they were discussing Thanks with the floor sure. that we now have the redraw. The final redraw of the EPC Paris main event. The final nine players will take their seats on the stage under the lights. Congratulations, guys. Nine remaining. All pay jumps from here. This is where it gets really, really interesting. 1.17 million for first gang. 111 now guaranteed. How exciting. And just to sit at this FT is an honor and a privilege in itself. So why don't you all check your privilege over there, guys? And a reminder that we are not done for the day just because we're down to one table. We're trying to play down to six players today. And there are potentially a full five and a half levels on the slate. And if we don't get to six, we will play out all those levels to pace the days. Make sure we do get down to a winner at a reasonable time tomorrow. So with nine remaining, it is worth highlighting that everyone has now locked up a six-figure score. 111,000 euros now guaranteed. Yeah, who doesn't love a six-figure score? And anybody in the chat willing to accept 111,000 euros right now? Anybody? Anybody interested in that? So once the redraw has been conducted, they will move all the chips to the table. We'll get the players' mic, we'll get them in their seats, and we'll play on. We are only, only nine minutes into this level. No, that's not right. We're 19 minutes into this level. I can do basic math. <laughs> what I mean is we still have a lot of level 29 left to play. Oh, Blinds yeah. will remain 50,000, 100,000. But of course, the dynamic will change because having just played shorthanded, they're now going to be playing nine-handed. So if you're interested to see how we got to this point, if you missed any of our day five coverage so far, here is a summary of all the key moments, all the big bust outs that got us to the final nine. Well, stock plummeted early. Spence Kings ran into Razvan's aces and he was out with 15. It is always coming seven and it was a seven on the river that finished off Arthur Conan. 14th place finisher. Harry Lodge ran king-queen into ace-queen. Could not improve. He was KO'd by Sar Wilf in 13th place. Online crusher Nicholas Ostet got his kings cracked. Fell to recover, and a few hands later, we lost him in 12th. Sar Wilf got it in good, but a 10 on the turn and a brick on the river sent him home. And as we just saw, Johan Schultz eliminated Matthew de Meglio to take us to a single table of nine players. And the players not going on break. They will retake their seats in just a moment. We will get the action restarted and carry on today. And yeah, just very quickly, Nick. That is a sudden change in mindset and dynamic, right? You're playing five-handed, now you're nine-handed. Yeah, we've spoken about this before at other EPTs. Kind of, you know, there's like, okay, cool, I want to make it to the bubble. That's the first stage. And then yeah. people go, oh, I want to make it to day three. I want to make it to day four. And then we've reached this stage at day five when it's, I want to make it to a final. And now I think everyone feels very, very relieved to be making a six-figure score. But obviously now huge ladders in play. Now you need to sit down, refocus, and make sure you're paying attention because this is where the money is made. Well, let's talk about those ladders, because again, now we see a significant increase in prize money with every single elimination. Next player out, 111,000 euros. If you ladder up to eight, it's 144 grand. The better part of 200K, 187,650 euros for seven, and nearly a quarter of a million, 244 grand for six. 317,000 euros will be paid to our fifth place finisher, more than 400,000 to fourth. 
more than half a million to third. And then, of course, you get the really big jumps. 780K for the runner-up, and a huge difference between second and first, with the winner receiving a seven-figure score. 1 million, 170,000 euros, plus the EPT Paris main event trophy. And again, highlighting, no official deal can be done. The players have to play for the advertised payouts at this event. And that is gonna make the dynamic tomorrow extremely interesting. A reminder that we're giving you the opportunity to play poker at home while watching the live stream from Paris. Two more days to run on the mini EPT Paris online series. Low buy-in tournaments at 3.15, 6.15, and 8.15. So the first of the day is in late reg. Two more to come later on today. We add EPT satellite tickets to the prize pool of every single tournament. That's in addition to the guarantees set on the monetary prize pool. And tomorrow, we will add an EPT Monte Carlo package to the mini main event. It has a $5.50 buy-in. 900 players are registered already, 50K guarantee, the winner will be going to the next leg of the European Poker Tour. They will be playing the main event at the PokerStars EPT presented by Monte Carlo Casino. So let's just check on the final nine. Let's check on the players who are still in contention here in Paris. And this is the players in chip order. And look at that. Raz Van Balea and Brian Delaney and Peter Yogne pretty much tied at the top, Nick. Three yeah. chip leaders. Yeah, really incredible to see. And like I said, we're, we have a couple shorties, but with three giant stacks remaining, it's going to change the, di the, the dynamic uh, very considerably, excuse me. Well, then you've got Denzel Speckman and Constantin Held, who are around average, around the 50 big blind mark. Fabrice Bigot, Johan Schultz may want to play it cautiously. Henry Casper, Mehdi Chowie are going to be playing the waiting game. And this is where the ICM considerations right, come in. Exactly. They're the two short stacks. They're both in the danger zone. Danger zone! But a reminder of that difference, 111K for ninth, 144K for eighth. But yes, two short stacks still in play, along with those big stacks and those middling stacks, as we kick off nine-handed action. Yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head. We're already seeing some tighter play. Fabrice Bigot folding ace-queen suited to a three-bet yes. is already an indication of how that pressure is going to be applied in this tournament. Love to see Peter Jorgne changing gears. Love to see Fabrice adjusting. So Jorgne representing Sweden. I'm pretty sure Denzel Speckman was Dutch the last time we checked in. The other Swede, Nicholas Ostet, was eliminated earlier on. The UK represented Romania in the year of Romania. Now, we referenced that French players made up 30% of the field, but only one local, Fabrice Bigot, has made the FT. I'm very happy to see it, too. We see him go deep in so many EPTs, you guys, and here it is. Here is his moment, and he's playing it real, real well so far. Yeah, I think it was Prague, right, the end of last year, where we saw Bigot also make a deep run? Yeah, was was he not sort of final few tables in London as well? Oh, is it London that I'm thinking yeah, of? Yeah, I seem I seem to recall him being final few tables in London as well, but I, I might okay. be wrong. Might have been a bit of both. Well, fortunately, yes. there is this wonderful reference tool called the internet. And I'm going to consult it right now. Yep, congratulations, guys, as we play on. Uh, 11th in Prague. Uh, no, nothing in London. Okay, I was just imagining it. He just lives rent-free in my dreams. Such a handsome boy. Anyway, guys, here we are. Hand number 66 of day five. EPT Paris main event 2023. The first of its kind. Blinds are 50K, 100K with a 100K ante. And this is it. Couple smiles. People are happy. Make the person buffing in lines feel bad? Yeah. <laughs> like, it isn't bad enough. <laughs> Delaney's going to kick us off here. UTG plus three, raising to 210. So two and a bit big blinds. Shall we in the cutoff? One of our shortest stacks. In fact, our absolute shortest stack here at our final table. Only 11 bigs. He's going to keep it real snug. 
although obviously the shorter stacks. The most impetus to double through the middling stacks now, according to ICM, the ones that are waiting it out to see the shorties bust or bleed to death when the blinds come around and they're forced to pay that really expensive big blind ante. Still 100,000 for the big blind and 100,000 for the big blind ante. So it gets pricey. Queen high flop. Balea now 84% favored against the ace jack off. Continue from Delaney. Balea going absolutely nowhere, makes the call. Really like the smaller C-bet size here as well from Ace-Jack of the offsuit variety. No diamond on the turn. Paired board actually not bad for Ace-Jack in this scenario. His opponent can still have gut shots, straight draws. Uh, gut shots, straight draws, even normal straight draws, like up and down straight draws, like 4-5, for example, in there. Maybe some diamonds. And we do see a lead from our big blind here, which I really think is cool. You do want to have some leads when you have a six, for example. If you have the queen and you're concerned about your opponent really going to town on later streets, this will slow down the action if they have a hand like ace-queen. It's very, very difficult for ace-queen to extract maximum value if you lead turn here, and then may perhaps you lead river again. You're still getting value from some combos, pocket jacks, pocket tens, pocket nines, maybe, maybe even some really, really interesting sort of ace high hero calls if they just think you always have a flush draw, for example. But uh, he does improve. Not enough, though. I'd love to see Balea lead again here, sort of smallish, kind of continuing that story I was just telling about sort of minimizing your losses against big combos but still getting value from some of the ones I described. Decides instead just to check. Does Delaney ever suddenly decide he's going to try and go for a value with the strong jack with the ace kicker. Oh, wow. He's going to get him. 1.35 in the middle. 350. Easy call. Queen nine, obviously, going to be doing it. I'm just chewing. <laughs> like, yeah, a little bit of a thinking face there. Maybe I should have just checked the river. It was kind of an unconventional line from the queen, though, I agree. Like I said, kind of thinking some of the time a queen would bet, bet turn or lead turn and then lead river again. Managed to confuse his opponent into putting in a value bet against himself in the end. Joe, you said I could angle. No, oh, no you could ever. just like no, and never. not show. That's what I it's not about angling. Just about like getting like his hand to you know, see it. Yeah. Like, oh, because you want to see both. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if he wants to fold, then I don't mind if he just folds. Yeah, obviously. Does, right. Well, they're clearly a team. That's the main oh. concern. Yeah. <laughs> I've, That's how they got all the chips. I've been onto you the whole day. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> all the... <laughs> that, you also know. That's right, chat. There are no deals allowed. <laughs> I don't know. Delaney's going to open the pot here. Delaney, third in chips at our final table. King, deuce of clubs. Chowie waking up with a monster once more in the hijack. So Chowie here, only 11 bigs. I think it's an easy all-in. I think that's the way you make your hand look weakest. You are facing an open from early position, and a lot of times they'll feel priced into call. Instead, going for the call. Maximum trap. 10 more. Oh, there it is. Now the full call, 210K. I wonder if that would be intentional once in a while. Makes hand look a little bit weaker. I don't know, flatting off an 11 big blind stack. But wait a second, Schultz behind him with the aces. Kings thinks that they're trapping. But aces... 
currently way out in front. Delaney, easy to get away from this one, I think, at this point. The flat in itself off, an 11, off of an 11B blind stack is already extremely suspicious. You're just not going to be calling here with very many hands unless they're extremely strong. King's all in. Yep. Yeah. Easy uh, call. Yeah, that was off Yeah. <laughs> I think that's off Oh. All right, so Schultz way, way, way out in front. This might be down to eight. What a setup here on our final table. Sometimes aces get cracked. Yep. Maybe not this time. <laughs> not quite so often now. This is very, very nearly 100%. I think it's saying 0% because we've seen a king folded already. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, ace is full on the turn for Schultz, and we are down to eight, James. So, yes, already a player out. Mehdi Chowi, ninth place finisher for 111,000 euros. Eight players remain. All now guaranteed 144 grand. And a ladder for Henry Casper, who's the other short stack. Yeah, that's a huge ladder to you guys. Huge pay jump there. Now all players guaranteed $144,300. Again, if you're on Twitch, exclamation mark payouts in the chat for the full breakdown. But Schultz, man, just really, really playing well. We've seen a lot of him on our feature table throughout the last few days, but a couple of really nice spots. And I mean, honestly, Cold decking aces into kings for a ladder on the final table of an EPT main is just huge. <laughs> Thank you for correcting me, chat. Euros, of course, not dollars. We are here in Paris after all. All right, hand number 68, guys. Speckman in the cutoff, going to play ace nine. That's pretty rough. Coming in for the minimum, 200K to go. <laughs> oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> did, did something happen there? Like, he said something. He wasn't all in, no. Yeah, he did. No, he didn't. He tried to open, but he didn't. Yeah, he yeah, didn't, he didn't see I open. Ah. He would have shot himself. Mm. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the hand goes. Because same. he went from like a worse spot where he flapped his king to like a really good spot just because he was squeezed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for it was. He was kind of sorry that. Uh, yeah, yeah, he, he felt bad. Because he looked kind of like. Yeah. And then he saw your ace and he felt less bad. I yeah. Was yeah. So <laughs> I was so surprised <laughs> he was flapping to begin with anything. Me too. I was like, what the hell is in this ring? Yeah. No, no, it's yeah. not. No, it's, it's not yeah. It was so obvious. Yeah, yeah, after he was so confused with the 10 extra, I realized what's going on. But. Yeah, I, I didn't notice. I was too busy. He was too busy just <laughs> with the ace of sight playing on the table. Yes, I can imagine. <laughs> Okay, guys, so ace seven of hearts here, UTG plus one. Lots of these suited ace combos being used as opens from earlier position, especially as you're one of the bigger stacks here. We've already mentioned the big stacks obviously can be wider in these scenarios now, given the ICM pressure. Obviously, if you guys are new here, ICM essentially is making reference to a way that we can model the way you should be adjusting your play according to the way that you're positioned on the table as we get to points where there are significant pay jumps. Basically, the big stacks can bully. The mid stacks have to chill because they want the small stacks to bust, and the small stacks have to get it in a little bit more frequently because they need to double up to remain in the tournament and have a chance to win. If I can condense it down into a two-second situation. Sorry? Chat pros, go. Yeah, I don't think you can ever call the river with that. This is not chat pro Saturday. Just a reminder. Yeah, tell them. Tell, tell the stream. Tell the guys that tell me I, I'm hunted off there. <laughs> tell them, blow them. <laughs> I'm grateful. <laughs> no. 
No, I, I lead turn, he raises, I check river, he jumps. Ah, okay, good call. I mean, it's not like I beat that. Schultz now king nine suited, another combination we like to play. The sort of theme here obviously is that we're looking for playability from early position. King nine suited, obviously being suited is good. Having some connectivity for some straights. Gonna open it up, folding round. Now on the button, held 10 six of diamonds. He told me he couldn't sleep. You felt good about that, huh? Uh, I like him. Uh, I like him a lot. Yes and no. <laughs> exactly. Casper here now, our shortest stack. Nice Ten big blinds. Ace five off going in the bin. I think I appreciate that fold. Seems good. UTG plus one is going to be very tight. You will be dominated by other ace combos that like to open from that position, so seems like reasonable. Delaney now, pocket tens in the big blind. 8.4? 8.3? I think Delaney's going to play it chill, just goes for the flat especially facing that earlier open from Schultz. And look at the flop. Talk about playability, guys. King-9 suited. Absolutely drills it. Okay, so a bet and a call here, guys. 125 into a pot of 550 called. Board pairs, a little bit more opportunity to make bows now for Delaney. A 10, a deuce, will do it. Pretty long odds though, about 8% here going to the river. Schultz having bet flop, I think probably wants to continue barreling here. He's got a customer of some variety. And I don't think this is where you slow down. You don't want another diamond to come and slow down the action. You want to still get value from the Jack X, where a diamond would slow them down if they didn't have a diamond draw, for example. If he has a deuce, which of course he should some of the time, here in the big blind, the defend will contain some suited deuce X. That means he wants to continue barreling and go for a big size because you can really punish the trips here, get maximum value from those. So two calls now. This pot's getting pretty big at this stage. Two million in the middle. Schultz got to be thrilled about this. But the 10 on the river, that's 10s full for Delaney. The absolute catastrophic outcome. Oh, this is such a weird spot for Delaney now. He has to decide if he's going to check it back over to him or he's just going to lead. Oh, man, this is really savage. Absolutely brutal river for Schultz. I mean, he can't not bet this, right? I mean, the check here is just so sweet. Honestly, Delaney's done so well. No, there's no chance. You can never miss a bet here in 100 years. Never. There's no chance. Schultz has about 4 million behind him, and the pot's already 2 million. Schultz is going to bet big here. 1.5 million. That's a three quarters pot river bet. Delaney just going to double check. He does have tens full. I mean, it's just an all in, right, guys? I mean, does he ever just go, I don't want to get stacked by Jacks and just flat? It's already a huge pot. I feel like that might be way too tight at this stage. You're literally losing to quads or Jacks, deuces or Jacks, and that's it. Take your time, Delaney. This might be the most important pot that you play at this stage in the tournament. Oh man, I would be absolutely sweating this moment. So excited to have rivered such a strong holding and just trying to get my head straight to figure out exactly what the best line's gonna be. I think he can just go all in. He's all in. Oh, wow. Oh, Schultz is in such a bad spot now. So Schultz has to decide whether to call it off with 25 bigs with the second nut flush on a paired board.
knowing that you've got Henri Casper with a 10 big blind stack. Oh my God, this is crazy. This is absolute madness. Yeah, give him all the cards, buddy. You're really need to go, gonna go into the tank for this. I think one of the only things he might be thinking is he's probably not gonna do this with a weaker flush given the way the board runs out, especially that we're playing for such huge sums on the final table. So it's not like you're gonna get him here if he has five, four of diamonds and they probably would have played the hand differently on a previous street anyway. So he's repping nothing or he's repping a boat. There's no chance a player like Delaney would overplay a hand like six, seven of diamonds or the like at this stage with so much on the line. This is absurdly difficult, but can Schultz find the fold? He only had three or four time banks left. I mean, what a horrible spot. Oh, it's just savage, honestly. You really got to feel for Schultz here. This is such a tough spot. I mean, this is where you use all the time back cards, right? I know you put them all forward. And that's a pass. That's wow. a fold. Excellent fold. Lays down the flush, gets away from it. Yeah. Meanwhile, Brian Delaney takes the chip lead up to 10.6 million. Honestly, guys, get your claps in the chat for Schultz there. That was a world-class fold. Honestly, what a horrible spot. Still 24 big blinds on a final table. Still the opportunity to be a champion. But wow. I'm asking you. Thank you. Love so? You want to know now? I mean, you say what you folded, and I'll tell you what I had. I would not have folded a flush. Clearly. Okay. I river the boat. Wow. A little bit of honesty there. After that huge shift in chip stacks, Delaney now 10.65 million, our new chip leader. And Schultz down to 2.45. Still represents 24-ish bigs. That's a really sick fold from the King Knight of Diamonds. Seriously, guys, that's just a great moment here in Paris. Random. <laughs> Both have nothing. Double floaters. <laughs> <laughs> I think another one of the other players said it best. If you have a bluff here, I am, would be very impressed. And yeah, quite right, given the action that we saw on the streets. Anyway, on to the next one, guys. Held now King Jack Diamonds in the cutoff. Casper. Great spot to be all in here. He only has 10 big blinds, and it's ace nine suited versus a cutoff open. He is all in with the best hand. Might still get looked up by King Jack Diamonds, though. It represents about a quarter, or just under a quarter, of Constantine Held's total stack. Yep, held keeping it tight. <laughs> Seems reasonable. We do have some big money on the line. So, eight players remaining. Omri Casper stole the short stack, but not as short as he once was. Joe Stapleton back in the booth. I was 
I was in my room cranking it. Did it work? <laughs> you killed it, man. You killed Can it. Can you slow down the crank? Sure. <sighs> Honestly, Joe, that Forearms was... Forearms are burning. <laughs> <laughs> Roughly halfway through the level. And just to remind uh, you, when we came back from break, we still had 11 players. We got down to nine. We had the redraw, and we've seen another elimination since. So we are at eight. Now... I hate having to caveat everything, but whilst the plan is to get down to six today, <laughs> if that happens <laughs> like, like during this level, we have to play on. I would agree with that. I think we've agreed that at the very least, at the very least, we need to get to the end of level 30. So that's play out this level and all of the next one. Yeah, that seems reasonable. <laughs> I mean, if we have a couple more coolers like that, guys, it's really I mean, a serious possibility. That was a massive shift in, uh, in equity. That's the problem. And, of course, look, if we get to the end of level 30 and we're still at seven players, we'll take the dinner break, we'll come back, we'll still go carry on and get down to six. But if we get to six or fewer, we do, we do want to keep going tonight. Indeed, indeed. Schultz, man, seriously, unreal respect for that fold. Just a very, Pretty great. very, very great fold from uh, from our from our player here having a hard time coming up with hands that could be shoving for value there right like there's not a ton well that yeah that's exactly what i was getting at was you know he's not at this stage with on a paired board river where it goes raise bet 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 if you have a six high flush seven high flush eight high flush whatever it is you're probably just going to check call all the way down or you're <laughs> going to raise at some point and then slow down on a later street right so it's not like he's going to turn over six, five of diamonds and go, oh, see, yeah, cool. You must have folded top pair or like aces or something, right? He's, he's going to be too concerned that his opponent has jacks full, tens full, right. quads, threes full. And so there's so much, not that many hands that can really be doing that. But yeah. then also, how many bluffs are there either? <laughs> well, exactly. I mean, if if you were playing a much lower stakes tournament, you could you could say some people would just maybe overplay a flush and therefore I have to call. But we're not here. We're not there, sorry. We are here in Paris, EPT main events, and these guys are playing a very good poker. Yeah, I think that you kind of have to lean toward fold there and just be like, all right, if you bluff me, if you're like an ICM, I mean, absolute dive bomber, cool. Yeah, it's, uh, you yeah, got me, bro. E exactly, honestly. Like, 10 big blind stack. I think, I think that's a good mindset as well. Like, I think a lot of people who are trying to get better at poker really start to go, oh, I can't be exploited here. Like, I can't allow myself. I can't make this fold because even though I think he's got it, you know, if I do it too frequently, I'm going to be exploited too often. And ICM, or, or sorry, GTO won't allow that. And I think sometimes you just go, okay, he's always got it. And if he doesn't, and this is the craziest bluff I've ever seen, and he's pulling it off, fine, respect. Just have it. That's okay. You've earned it. You know, you've pulled, the, pulled off the impossible. Folding around to the shortest stack, who still has 20 big blinds at this point, Henry Casper. Jack Deuce. Johan Schultz. Don't mess with the Johan. <laughs> so back in the mix. He's going to open the button. A7 off. <laughs> you can ask me. Do you see some deviations on the table? Yeah, a lot. Denzel Speckman in the small blind with pocket sixes. <laughs> that, that I'm pretty sure. Mad Respectman just calls. Maybe. And Razvan Balea second in chips, but not by much with over 10 million. Queen eight in the big blind. This would be the craziest three bet uh, squeeze I've ever seen before, Joe, honestly. Like, he can put Schultz in a terrible spot. He can put Speckman in a terrible spot. If he makes it like four times the open or five times the open, because he's out of position, honestly, this just gets through a ton. Especially against the initial opener, obviously, when people flat the small blind here. Especially knows that Schultz will just fold anything. Just <laughs> fold a king high flush. Yeah. <laughs> What's he going to do with the spraggy? He's just going to call it looks like, yeah, seems good too. I don't think folding was ever part of this. We're going to the flop. 
Eight for Deuce, two clubs, top pair for Balea. The Rugged Boy asks, may I ask who the three commentator? His insights are really interesting. I'm Joe Stapleton, thank you for your question. No, he's asking about Nick Walsh. Thanks, man, I appreciate that. Glad you're enjoying the content. Ooh, a five on the turn, Bree is a little life into this hand for the A7 and the pocket sixes. Blessed <laughs> out in front with a fun amount of equity. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Balea bets 580 into 700. Here you go. You want to draw your gut shot? Good luck. Have at it. Barry Totem says, yeah, but Griffin is funnier than Nick. <laughs> Question. <laughs> yeah, but now you're banned, so. Yeah, uh, you're banned. Thanks for coming. And Speckman did make the call. Got rid of Schultz, and it's an ace on the river. So no gut shot for Speckman. Check, check. I'm only Josh, and I love Griff. He is funnier than me. And with that pot, Balea is back on top over 11 million. There are a lot of chips in play. Thank you. And that's what the room looks like when there is only a final table in play. Eight players remaining of the 1,606 who started. Record-breaking premier EPT Paris. Biggest premiere of an EPT to date. In play. Just imagine him showing a card. Imagine the death button showing. Holds around to the blinds. How much did pay? That's quite the flex. <laughs> Big Go's got about 32 big blinds to Belay's 112. Man, that's a lot of chips. Gonna play it slow. Senor Bigo. Woof. Or Monsieur Bigo. Jack three offsuit. Uh, he's looking to his right, Joe. Uh, it's the chip leader. Yeah. Um, uh, on the middling stack. Um, um, I'm just gonna check and hope to hit Jack, Jack three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, no. Is gonna try. To get a pre-flop fold from the chip leader that makes, sense. makes it four hundred thousand. I mean, I always thought it doesn't sound very Danish, but, Not at all. Yeah. but uh, I just accepted. Never it mind. Reality, He's just gonna go for it. <laughs> That's you, what I mean. Like, what <laughs> what two cards is Belay gonna fold? <laughs> you gotta love Fabrice Big O, man. Honestly. He's been surprising us all over the joint, and it's working for him, and I'm here for it. Big going for it. Eight, seven, seven, one club. Obviously, Balea with the best of it, but I'm sure Bigo has no intention of slowing down once he's played this really wide range and position. I'm expecting him to continue here. 
Balea doesn't really have a hand particularly, Joe, but if the size on the flop is too small, we go. Uh, yeah. Might not merit the fold. Balea with the backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw, queen high might just continue. Looks like he does want to slow it down. Fair play. Turn card is another eight. I mean, and you got to be feeling okay about queen high at this point. No? Yeah. When it get, when <laughs> I mean, sort of, but I think also Bigot's check on the flop can be indicative of king high and a side, right? Where he just doesn't want to inflate the pot right sure. away on the flop. He thinks he's got showdown. So honestly, the delayed c bet on the double paired board here might be enough to get queen high to fold. And, you know, again, Fabrice just showing us that he's he's got these moves even in a high, you know, high intensity, very high value, high equity spots. Big Goat knuckles back a second time. River is an ace, so this is a chop pot if we get to showdown. What are the chances of that here? Does Balea really limp too many ace-x combos against one of the middling stacks who he can really bully blind feet blind Joe? That's the big question. You could bet so small here and get him off a chop. Just 225,000. It's looking to be around that amount. How much? How much? Okay, I'll take 300 it. 300K, a third of the pot. I'll take it. I got one streak sort of right, Joe. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> It really feels like he has ace high when he checks back twice, though, right? It's just so easy to get folds in this spot now. Yeah, very nice. Absolutely beautiful from, for, 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 excuse me, for Fabrice. Now up to 37 big blinds. Cooperative run out. And Fabrice made good use of that run out. 100% of the pot when you're supposed to be getting 50% of it. What's the time? <laughs> we didn't break the time. Yeah, it was a break. We didn't break the time. Oh, yeah. Oh. I think there was. I, yeah, I why don't you look at your expensive yeah. watches? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh, they don't actually tell I'm time, Joe. Oh, really? <laughs> They're ceremonial. Apparently, five. Five? What? Five p.m. Yeah, we went to talk to you. Really oh, oh, yeah. Five at nine for your hand. Schultz, everybody, shut up. Shut up, I got a hand. Shut up, shut up. <laughs> Schultz has got a hand. <laughs> Been raising from the hijack with the pocket nines. Looking at my watch. Oh boy. Troubles are brewing. Ace King for Balea, the chip leader. Ain't gonna have a problem putting more chips in and trying to get Johan Schultz to commit the rest of his chips pre-flop. Schultz just has 20 big blinds behind. He's one of the shortest stacks. I mean, honestly, Joe, I think it's gotta go in. I think it really does. Nines is just getting way up there. You're playing against one of the chip leaders who's gonna mercilessly three bet you here as a bluff. So not only do you win this at non-showdown pre-flop a lot, but you also just have the best hand an absurd amount of time. Three bets to 570,000. All in. There's the all in from Schultz. Eight left, Joey. Is this the rip and dip? Balea will not be making a belated call. He'll be doing it instantaneously. <laughs> we are flipping for Schultz's tournament life. Like Asterix versus one of your French girls. One of these two things has a slight mathematical advantage or two French drawings. Anyway, Schultz, the slight favorite here, made a supreme laydown moments ago. Avoided elimination there. Will he be rewarded by the poker gods in this flip? 
Not looking likely. Ace, Jack, eight. Schultz in big, big trouble. Two outs, two chances to hit. Some sweat cards on the turn. The queen. No, I'd pick up them. Not one of them, unfortunately. Imagine so. Schultz has fought valiantly, played really well. River card is the four of spades. That's going to be it for Johan Schultz. Your EPT Paris eighth place finisher. They did mess with the Johan. <laughs> Very good. Oh, man. But boy, yeah. oh boy. Tough to believe how. Did Johan give him what for? Man, what a performance from Johan there. Wow. Really, really, really stellar. And that fold, honestly, will go down in EPT history for her, for sure. One of my favorite hands from the last five days that we've seen here in Paris. And he had to fold his flash and not flash. And just lose his flip. Johan cashes for 144,300 euros. And we are now down to seven. Everyone just laddered up another 43,000 euros. And then happened to fold the flush. And if we get down to six, we're not going to call it a day. We're going to play to the end of the next level regardless. He basically only has good flushes. And that position when he opens. Yeah, I mean, he's high on king high. Yeah. I think he can also have like point ten or nine ten. Maybe. I do. Yeah. But basically, nice comment here from Kurt who says Schultz was gangster in this event. Absolutely. Yeah, I totally agree. Honestly, guys, that was that was a real performance, and, and I think we're going to see a lot more from Schultz in the future. Balea now absolutely stonks over there. 13.4 million, 134 big blinds at this stage, seven remaining. Feeling really good. This might be the snowball that we were making reference to, Joe, starting to form the avalanche. Okay. Which is, I believe, a French word. Sounds for, like it. For Avalanche. <laughs> Balea raising queen six suited. Casper with king eight suited in the big blind. Feels good enough for a poke. Do you still play after we're down to six today? Or I imagine. Or, or imagine it will be good because they have the eight six. And they need the, the OK, yeah. Well, it was just because yesterday this day was weird. It changed. I didn't like it. Yeah. Yeah. You can play. And somehow, <laughs> Balea still manages to flop top pair with a six. Poker players don't like change, Joe. You heard it here first. That would have saved me. All right, so Balea now in front, as Joe just said, 73%. Looks like Casper's already checked, I think. Looks like it, since he's. Cutting out a bet here, 570k in the middle now. <laughs> 560,000, the C bet from Balea, and that's one way to protect top pair. Wow. Machinator says, lol, again with the fold. It was easy fold on that check raise all in. Stop it. Machinator. Do me a favor and just go ahead and send me a link to your uh, your hand and mob results, and we'll we'll take a look at that. We'll let you know. On the rail here, we've got Andrea Balea. That's Razvan's wife, and on the right is Jordan's partner. That's Shore Marja. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like the only one. Must be nice to have fans on the rail. <laughs> it's a deep stretch over there as well. <laughs> a little flex, a little flex from the rail. Very nice. It really is the year of Romania. The Paris even friends. It's actually quite the opposite. Makes yeah. sense. It's like Paris Berlin, Berlin and Germany. Inside friends with different kind of deep food, different culture. They are wearing white and yellow boots. <laughs> <laughs> 
Dutch has folded around to Constantine held. Jack eight suited. Casper folding 10 6. You have like 3.8 for it? Delaney. That's okay. 8 That's 5 off. off is dominated. That's a raise and take it for help. Bear Totem says Joe should play more attorneys. I think he would do better than 90% of chat. Disagree. Disagree. I'm not even that good at it when I can see all the hold cards. And it's not even. All of us three were involved. Plus, you know, the most unlucky poker player ever. That doesn't help. Like a pair? And there was a nine. Yeah. Well, it would have been. Busted what? Fifteen. Both of the tournaments are crazy. Alea, back in the mix. Pocket eights under the gun plus. Two. One. Bambalea. Year of Romania. Bambalea. Folding round. Casper now sitting on about 17 bigs. Don't think he's going to want to get mixed up here with the Jack Five. It's a fun hand in the small blind. And Jorgna with a six. You'd all tempted to squeeze the a six here ever? Um, if I'm in Jorgna's spot in third in chips at this stage with those shorties behind, I think you just keep it chill. Keep it chill. You just okay. keep it chill. You want to be aware of the fact that, you know, ace high isn't necessarily going to be the best plot for you here as well with that earlier open, but Balea is playing a oh, much wider range. Oh, that was the chip range. leader who opened. Yes, all right, indeed. fair enough. Top pair for Delaney. Checks over to Balea. I think Balea's got a, a hand that you probably continue about 50% of the time. I was going to say, probably not always, yeah, right? Yeah, I was going to say it's, it's probably pretty close because a lot of the flats there will contain 10x. You obviously don't want to inflate the pot against some uh, some sets. Trays, fives, tens will still be in the mix here, especially against one of the other chip leaders. Balea and Delaney, about 35 big blinds separating them, but still over 100 big blinds each. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, basically, almost no good players because it's all. Yeah, with the general Checks over to Balea a second time. Flex. Might be tempted to protect his hand at this point. I think Delaney checking back the Queen's hand here. Very interesting sort of trap. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that changed. And it's getting even more so. Yeah. It's almost impossible to play with the German account if you're, if you're trying to make money. Yeah. Right. Oh, it's 50, you can only play the delayed games, continuation right? back from Balea. And you can only cash in 1,000 euros a month. You can't do player up trend for sure. So. Yeah, like how they come up with that solution. The organ folds. But you, but you can. We're going to the river, Joe. And that river is. Yeah, but the nine of hearts. Theodora says, you need to put the accent on the yeah. first E in Belea, Joe. So, Belea. I'm going to put the accent on the first B in ya band. Nice. Very good. Pronunciation, 10 out of 10. Thank you for your comment. All right. Queen Sen's going to win it. Not much else to add to that one. Nice little trap there on the turn. A lot of players might be tempted to start leading the Queen Sen first act there, Joe, but... You know, just keeping it chill, letting the money come to him feels good. No change on the river. Sometimes, sometimes it's 
Yeah, I think Everybody now guaranteed 187,000 euros. Ladder up one more spot, and you're getting basically a quarter mil ball. Valeas finally folded a hand, so the chip leader's out. Who's going to take over? Well, looking like Constantine held with the A7 of clubs. This is a hand that people like to play, especially from the hijack. 200k to go, two times a big blind. Casper has a pretty hand, but there's lots of players back behind him here, and he is the shortest at our final table here in Paris. Makes the fold. Action on Jorgna in the small blind. Oh, yeah, a little set mine with the three balls. Was it a set mine? Set mime. Or a set mime? Toi, toi. I mean, set miming in Paris, honestly. Got to do it. Here, hold on. I'll be trapped in the box. Set mime fail. Seven, eight, nine. Ten for health. Ace high, good. Excuse me, no, it's not. Threes are winning, technically. I'm looking at this board as if I have the three, and I'm already <laughs> defeated. I'm That's like, no, nah, I'm out. The, the Joe Stapleton mindset. Yeah. Well, there's three over cards. I'm out. There we go. Now it's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now it's a straight. I don't think anything else is going to happen in this spot. A couple of people in the chat asking about what the hijack is. Hijack is a position in poker. So we have the dealer button, which is that that sort of transparent disc you can see there in front of Del Delaney by the eight of spades, bottom right. Directly to his right is the cutoff, and then directly to the right of the cutoff is the hijack. So it's just two positions to the right of the button. And is this Jorgna betting out here? Bad timing. Bad timing indeed. Bets a third of the pot. It's going to be pretty tempting to raise, I think, here. Yeah, not a very big one either. So like 2.75. X. Yeah, betting the take, it seems good. Uh, they just don't get rake back. So, so poker sites, yeah. the poker sites play, uh, pay taxes in the Netherlands, and therefore uh, the poker sites so don't, don't, don't pay rake back to the players, but otherwise it's every but awesome. Not, but there's no rake back, technically a rake and free. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah. So, so you, they do technically pay. So you do pay taxes by paying more on the buy-in, essentially, right? But it's it's still it's I think it's the that most reasonable approach wow. that there is. That's I mean, they also obviously have now some regulations with um, Sorry. with cash and end money, but you can um, you can increase it if you pro provide some source of wealth. So that's from everything I've heard. That's so much better than what Germany did. That's for sure. Hand number 81 here in Paris. Casper, our 17 yeah, big blind, the shortest stack, the makes the fold with ace deuce off. At 1K. No person oh, can like cash in more than 1K a month. It's in, it's in. Yeah, it's where Delaney we're with the Grafton Joe. I mean, that kills it for everyone who wants to do it. 10 9 suited, aka the Sam Grafton. Jorgna wakes up with the Kings, though. Pocket Kings yeah. for I mean, Peter some Jorgna. Play, some guys who play for fun, $2 tournaments, they can play. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So just to give you guys some context here, Delaney obviously second in chips, 109 big blinds, 84 big blinds for Peter Jorgna. So these are two very deep stacked players in a very good position at this stage in the tournament, both sitting with a mountain of chips. And what do we have here for Balea, who is dwelling? Okay. Okay. Not gonna do something foolish with the 10-3 off the kitchens. 
So yeah, no re-raise from the Kings. Actually, looked up Estonia. Sneaky, sneaky. Enemy Top video. pair for Delaney so, could really be that. trouble. Explored if that might be an option. That's right, Jorgen is just flatting here. Very unconventional, Joe. You're giving your opponent the opportunity to improve in a very serious way, absolutely for free. And Delaney continues for 230,000, and in his mind will be very happy to be called. Will Jorgen continue playing it slow? Nope, looks like a raise is being announced. Wow, this is so unconventional, Joe. The no three bet pre-flop with Kings on a final table is just really, really interesting. Dessert Fox saying, I guess that's why you flopped flat to let your opponent flop top pair. And you certainly can't go folding top pair now. Especially not with the backdoor clubs. I mean, he's underwrapped his hand in such a degree that I, I just don't think 10 is ever getting away. If you're playing against decent players here, you just got to look him up here. You just got to get sticky. Not a ton of semi bluffs that could be raising there, though. Oh. And it's two pair on the turn for Delaney. Kings in big, big trouble. Now, I don't want to venerate the chat pros, but this is why you might want to three bet Kings pre. Your hand is so underwrapped, and he's got top two with the over pair. And Delaney checks, knows Jorgna is likely to follow up the flop raise with a bet on the turn. And Delaney has really absolutely nothing to fear. Wow. Maybe was afraid of something being slow played pre-flop like jacks, like queens, like kings. And now has all of those hands crushed. 2.1 million. This was an overbet. Thank you. On yeah. the turn. Exactly. The overbet turn here, just putting so much in the middle, guys. It's like Delaney sitting there with a monster, and his opponent's overbetting the turn. Delaney just calls. Six million in the middle. That's good for third on the leaderboard, by the way. This pot in and of itself. He's got to be concerned about some sets, though, Joe. River card. Is it king? Oh, surely not. Concerned about a set of kings, maybe. Surely not. Unreasonable rivers here in Paris. Unreasonable final table rivers. Dirtier than the Seine. Three kings for Jorgna. Delaney checks. Likely licking his chops for another overbet. A stack of 100K chips. More than a stack. Unreasonable. 2.6 million. I think Delaney was rattling off some sets that might have him beat here, twos and threes. Jorgna shifting in his chair, time banks being deployed. Did you see that just now though, Joe? He looked really, Jorgna looked really uncomfortable all of a sudden. He's been rock solid and just then he looked very nervous as Delaney looked at him. But like, you just always have it on the floor. That's the question. Delaney with some time to pontificate. Ah, it's 2.6, right? Thank you. Okay, okay. maybe letting Delaney off easy here with the sizing down on the river. Six, seven, seven point four, seven point nine. Eight, eight, one, eight, two, eight, two, seven, five. This is so brutal, man. Agreed. You just have free. You just have free. Like, are you really like raising like ace free suited on the flop? Really? No. Oh, 
This is so brutal. He's on to something. Are you not a little greedier though? Like 2.6 is small. You bet 2.1 on the turn. It is a hard line oh, to follow. This is so gross. This is so gross. Are we going to see another hero fold, Joe? Four time banks used. Can I say my hand? <laughs> Can I say my hand? Now you're grasping at straws. Okay. Sorry? Oh, heads up, I can say what I have. Okay. Okay. Hey, I turned two pair. Dorgna's partner leaned way over that rail. She is Thank all you. of us right now. Nick is just calling an option. I mean, you, can, you have tons of, right? I mean, you have tons of chips I still. Yeah, but it's it's such a weird line. I just think he always has it here. But he could think he still has it if it didn't come a king. Do you know what I'm saying? Like he could be Seven. making this same bet. Delaney makes the call. <laughs> Sees that filthy river. That is fucking gross. Understandable celebration on the rail. Silent disco. <laughs> it was it was like yeah. Poor Delaney. Really awful spot. And Peter Jordan back in the chip lead. 142 big blinds, 14 million in chips. <laughs> Delaney still with 56 Over bigs, though. Wow. I mean, he could have aces if he has kings. Yeah, I think cool. if you guys heard that just now, he could have aces if he has kings. Yeah, exactly. It's it, re it really is one of those weird spots. I think Jorgna would have kept barreling even if he didn't spike those trips. I think that was the plan all along. Yeah, yeah exactly. So you really got to feel for him there. What a gross run out. We've been seeing some real savagery on this final table so far. We've only played a handful of hands since we've become nine. Well, we must play on for another 12 minutes till the next break. Beckman is raised from the button, king eight suited, Balea in the small, queen 10 suited. And Big Go's turn with kings. Wow. I kind of think that Delaney got let off a little easy with that river bet. Yes and no. I don't know if he does go for the all-in. Maybe he does sincerely just find a fold. Maybe, maybe the, that was the perfect size to get paid. Like I said, I don't think he was like over the moon with turning two pair. Obviously, you're feeling much better about your hand, but the way it was played really felt like he had a set on the flop. That's why he was saying, "Do you just always have it? Do you always have it? I just think you always have it. Do you just always have a set of threes? So even with two pair there, you really got to understand that the way the hand was played, you know, it just felt like he just had the set all along. Let alone the river. Rivered Kings, especially in a non three bet pot. Three bet from Big O is probably going to get a couple of folds. You know, there's a chat pro in there during that hand on the river bet that wrote easy fold. And that chat pro's name was James Hardigan. Although James does admit it was because he could see all the cards. Yeah, he's nodding. 
well, James. It changes things considerably. It's been a long and illustrious career. However, I'm afraid you're banned. <laughs> and yeah, the three bet for Kings takes this pot down for Bigo, who's second from the bottom with 41 big blinds. So we are pretty deep here. It's only Henry Casper edging towards the danger zone with 17 bigs. Danger zone. Maybe not, not get the king on the Also, you know, just maybe a five on the river. Six, a seven, an eight. That's some way. A nine, a 10. Phaser Rambo says he got banned for easy fold. I don't get it. That is correct. You don't get it. Nope. Thank you for your question. Yeah, you're not wrong. All right, Casper. Again, I'll say it once more. Our short stack, 17 big blinds. Casper. Our shortest stack. Go. Casper, Berg, Berg, Casper. <laughs> there it is. Thank you very much, Joe. UTG. Oh, is not. Okay. We're just going to raise it up. I think this is this is a, a good adjustment though, Joe. I mean, obviously, he's probably happy to go broke with nines. Yeah. But what if he raises under the gun and like three people go all in behind him? Sure. You're like, okay, cool. Uh, I'm willing to take the pay jump here. It's only like it does feel like 17 big blinds is a little <laughs> too many to just open shove, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Especially from that position, especially on the final table. At the river, the seven. Four. It's like a 60k pay jump. Hashtag quick maths. Mike the fat man asked, what happens if someone doesn't have a time card and the timer goes out, does he automatically <laughs> fold? Like yes. <laughs> and I was very yeah, scared right. still. That is correct. <laughs> Your hand yeah, is I'm deed. I was, I was scared already. I was scared on the floor. <laughs> With you being the last Frenchie, we have seven nationalities here, right? Everyone's from a different... Raz van Balea, who you would think would be chip leader with 128 big blinds. <laughs> Only second in chips. Makes it 220,000 with Jack 10 off. I'm trying to, uh, to save the country. <laughs> I mean, there's still a bunch of good German players around. Casper contemplating appeal with a dominated 10. It's a weird one, isn't it, Joe? Yeah, but they have keeping it tight, keeping it tight, looking for pay jumps yeah. feels good. I think that's totally reasonable. Casper has been very, very solid in these situations. I don't think he's losing too much by making that fold there. Certainly not in that case. If you like to play results, and I do, <laughs> I like the result of that hand. I'm sure you could argue for the call or argue for the fold, but as one of the shortest stacks, he's going to get bullied, especially from one of the biggest. It's okay. It was, it was very good. It was very good. So I played the game, right? playing high stakes, but they have some of them had to learn skill to be played. Oh, okay. Good morning, yeah. Sure. I would play. Ace four for Balea. Seems like another prime opportunity for an open. Yeska man says, I believe it is pronounced dead. I believe it is pronounced ya banned. Thank you for your comment. Hold trying to be go now. 41 big blinds in the cutoff with queen nine offsuit. And Pocket Kings making their way around the table. Will we 
see action. Not in the small blind. Oh no, not against Five Delaney. Eight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Has everybody had kings at this pa at this point on the final table? I was just was doing the rounds. I'll see if I can do better. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's just difficult to tell when it's yeah, yeah, sure. Twelve blacks or sixteen blacks, you know. Next time it's gonna be nine. Nine, 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 eleven. <laughs> Deep Dive Mask asks, excuse me, Deep Dive Max asks, why are so many people getting banned? I don't know, let me punch your ticket to Bansville. You can ask him yourself. <laughs> Say hi from us when you arrive. Hand number 86 now, European Poker Tour Paris. Final table, seven remain. Right. Ace that, nine off. Ace nine, come on, there we go. Come on. Come on. Alea, one of our chip leaders here, going to go ahead and play the ace nine. Seems good. Casper on the button. He's got a nice hand. Might want to keep it snug here anyway, though, given the earlier open. However, it is one of our chip leaders, as I mentioned, so that range can be significantly wider. Honestly, if he shoves a hand like KJ here, he might even merit folds from hands as strong as ace nine off. So got to weigh these up. I think the fold is probably what we expect him to see, expect to see him doing most, however. Does fold all the way around the table and Balea scoops another one. Bambalea. Dark Ronan says, should just make chat unavailable. How many get banned? All right, we'll start with you. Thank you for your comment. A fold and a fold. And a, hmm, A6. No, that's a fold, okay. Casper, Berg, Berg, Casper. Is this just a fold, buddy? Even in late <laughs> position, queen 10 off. I, I honestly think Casper is doing it right, yeah. honestly. It's, uh, queen 10 is 100% a hand you play from that position, of course. However, you've got a lot of big stacks to your left, and you're going to get bullied super hard. You're going to fold a bunch, so just wait for a better spot. Unless you think that the players behind you aren't going to be doing that, but... We've seen plenty of moves made thus far. Jelani's going to play this as a raise from the button. Jorgna could consider three betting or calling or folding. I think folding this hand is reasonable as well. Here we go. Jorgna and Delaney again. Whew. Take a deep breath. Eight, deuce, deuce, two spades. Nisk, Nisk 21, first time chatter, says these commentators are the most cringe boomers ever. Uh oh. I think you mean hashtag cringe, cringe nation. Ba cringe banners. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? You're perma Ben. Thanks for coming. De Delaney's bet gets the fold. First time, last time. <laughs> you got to wait until comment number five before you can actually just get like the soft band there. Well, especially because. When it's your first time, it puts a box well, around it, so we're guaranteed <laughs> to see obvious, it. Pretty obvious, yeah. I mean, you might slip one through. Good job, chat. Hashtag cringe nation. Hashtag cringe nation. We're making this a thing. I think that comment was actually hashtag cringe nation, to be honest. It was. It's pretty pretty low class. Saying cringe is the new cringe. Uh, maybe <laughs> yes, make it two. I mean, I'm happy to make it more. Take your time for the break. Speaking of break, this is break. probably going to be the last hand of the level. Let's have a small break, guys, yeah. 
Then no break and let's go. Are you rushing? Big go. Queen Jack suited. FTA first to act. I actually thought you were just. <laughs> Casper with the king four. Not going to play this one. Queen four for Delaney. Nope. Not going to play this one. Jorgna. He's out with the ace deuce. It's not going to play this one. Balea with five four Whoa, suited oh, in the big right. blind. Not going to get through this 13 million chip stack without a fight. So I have to I say as well, Joe, I think everyone's lucky he's next to you. He's really happy to get off this table of doom right now. We've had so many weird spots in such a short space of time, in particular Delaney reeling off of that 9-10 hand. See a check from 5-4 of hearts here from Balea. Bigo has the gutter ball backdoor diamonds. King-9 deuce, I think, is probably one you see that quite frequently with Queen Jack, especially with the backdoor di diamantes. Are we switching feature tables during the break again? Same one? Okay. Nice one. Turn card is oh. a 10. And that is a nice hand for Queen Jack. Fabrice Bigo decides to take the check on the flop. I think when you're when you're imagining a good turn, this is a good one. Just probably this a, is it's, one of the best. It's probably this a top one of the three. Best. Yeah, top three turns for this hand for yeah. sure. Wow, convinces Balea to lead out with that check on the flop. Bigo has the nuts, the absolute best possible hand here on the turn. Given the lead being so confident, I wonder if Bigo decides that he wants to actually raise to try and win more. Because, of course, in order to win a bigger pot, he needs to inflate the pot now where it's relatively small. I think playing it slow makes sense, too, if you think that Balea is capable of bluffing turn, bluffing river in that sequence. Opts for the call. Seems good. Six of spades on the river completes of the spade course, flush. Of course it's a spade. <laughs> this is me. This is me playing. This I'm is, like, this of is course the... it's a spade. The one time I slow play it, the one time I do, of course it's a spade. Every time. Oh, it's so funny. Does Balea just lead turn and give up here, or does he actually continue with the story? I'm loving Fabrice's play thus far. It looks Woo! like he's reaching for chips. 1.37 in the middle, guys. Balea with five high. Uh, snap, snap call. Snap call. Don't need to know the amount. I call. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm calling. Got Tem. How much was the bet? It was 1.3. That was a big pickup, Joe. Huge pot for Big Go. Headed into the break. Picks up two million in that hand. Is now third in chips. Just Not barely edging out that. Brian Delaney, who fell a couple of spots on the leaderboard right. due to that insane two pair versus the river set. All right, so we're gonna keep this same feature table, turns out. <laughs> Final seven players of the 1,606 who started. Peter Jorgna on top, Balea in second, Henry Casper, the shortest stack, 17 minute break. More from EPT Paris in just a bit. In, in the mind of the average punter, that's what bo Suave Bond would do. We know that that makes him a total schmuck. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't know. I think for purposes of drama, obviously, it's ex again, it's extremely unusual for four people to be present in, in the final hand of a tournament. Uh, although, of course, it's less likely if it's a, a winner takes all. But I think it works dramatically to have the actual hand as a kind of summing up the whole tournament, to have it funnel down from some also rands down to, to Bond and his nemesis. And of course, most of the action is in the side pot, anyway, the, the, the big side pot there between uh, Bond and the Sheaf. So I don't really have a problem with that. Um, it's not representative of, of the way poker tournaments normally end. And also don't forget that, you know, just poker is going to be boring for a lot of people. So it gives the, the DOP, the, the director of photography, something to shoot to. So he can he cut away from Bond's uh, and Le Chief to one of the other players. So it gives a bit of color there. Um, gives them a bit more to work with. Now, Tom, I'm glad that you uh, mentioned, you, it's the first time the word tournaments come up. And one of the things that I've noticed about these, you know, this last bit here is that it's kind of played like a tournament, referred to as a tournament, but it really feels more like a winner take all cash game. Um, especially that I think they're playing with cash chips even, right? Well, to me, it's always felt like a single table tournament where the buy-in has a direct value of the chips. So that the, they are effectively tournament right. chips, but 100K actually equates to $100,000. Yes, it's basically a cash game you can't walk away from. So yeah. Yes, that's, because that's Bond tip. tips with a chip at the end. So <laughs> oh, let's not go into that. Because no, not but that's what I'm saying. Look, in my mind, which may... In my mind, if it's a winner-take-all cash game, then everything about this works for me. Yeah, that's very kind of you, too. To be honest, I think it should be re should be recognized as a tournament because that's yes. what it was. And, and the chip at the end is, again, it's one of those things where we could have had Bond, you know, root around his back pocket <laughs> stage and, and, and gain out some chewing Can I write gum, you a you check? Know. I would have less of an um, issue if then Herr Mendel <laughs> referred to the 114.5 million that Bond had because 500K had gone to the dealer. Um, but, Tom, you very kindly have shared the hand history because i think it's important to say in the film we join the action on the turn the turn card is dealt but we don't know how we got to this point with these four players and i think the stacks are important here we're talking about 115 million in chips because there were 10 original buy-ins and five players decided to rebuy for five million so 115 million in chips we know because the dealer's already established, or the, the, the floor person who sat in the umpire's chair, uh, that the blinds are 500K and a million. And we've got two short stacks at the table. So we've got Mr. Fakutu, who's got 12 big blinds. We've got Infante, who's got 11 big blinds. But this is comes back to the point I was saying earlier. We can sit here and say, well, they should be playing all in or fault Holden. They should not be just limping. They shouldn't be like calling like 4 million or 5 million bets without shoving. But that assumes that they're playing perfectly. They, they might play not know badly. That. They play badly in this hand, and that's fine. Not everyone plays poker well. Mm. Um, I had always assumed that there would have been some kind of pre-flop raise. But interestingly, everyone just limps. So Bond's in the small blind. Fakutu's in the big blind. That means Infante limps with eights. Le Chief limps on the button with a six. Bond completes with 7-5 of spades, and Fakutu checks his option with king-queen of spades. I do think it's weird that none of these players decide to raise pre, that Infante and Fakutu don't go with these pretty premium holdings four-handed, but it's not impossible. It's not even improbable. It just means everyone's playing either cautiously or imperfectly, right? I think the, the two most questionable players, as you say, are Infanto and, and Fakutu, is that their plays in that hand are probably the least justifiable. But of course, they're supposed to be the weakest players. As, as, you, as you say, there are going to be weaker players there who can get through to the end. Le Chief calling with a six, I mean, it's not a terrible play. And of course, Bond in the small blind with a, with a big old stack of Le Chiefs, uh, flat calling or rather completing with the F7-5. Again, it's, it's not a terrible play for my money. So, Tom, I guess my question about this hand is, how did this hand evolve? Yes. Did it start with, I want it to end this way? How do we make that happen? Either Martin or the screenwriter saying it. Did it start with them saying, uh, with them coming to you and saying, can you design a hand that has everyone all in by the river? Like, what? how exactly did this hand get written? 
basically, it was written when I arrived, it, it, but the actual hands were written as are, oh, and, and I was pretty happy with what was there. The main difference between what we started with and what we ended with was the bet sizes. So in the previous version of the script, um, the main pot between all four of them was, was actually bigger than the side pot between Le Chief and Bond. And, and clearly that just means that the final action it becomes irrelevant because they're, they're being sucked into the pot anyway, never mind the fact that it's supposed to be all about Le Chief versus Bond. So that kind of got worked out on set when Martin Campbell was there and, and Le Chief uh, was on my side here. He was saying, this, this is crazy. It's me staring at, at Daniel across his chips and all the, all the other chips are over there. This is really <laughs> So the, the shooting stopped then for about 90 minutes and God knows how much it must have cost to stop, you know, everything for 90 minutes. Uh, while we talked about it, we sort of moved chips around in real time just to see what would make sense. Um, and then it, it sort of made sense and, and shooting went back to, everyone sort of basically, basically came back from the canteen and said, okay, they've got it out of their system now. Now can we go, go on with making a movie? <laughs> and so would you say that the hand uh, was written uh, already? Was it written start to finish or just uh, from where we see it in the movie? So the, the actual uh, full hand had been written down in sort of a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet, so, so I could see what was happening. <clears throat> and, but the, the script as shown in the movie started, I think, uh, as you say, on the, was it the turn. Or the it's on the turn. Right? It's on the turn. Yeah, the turn. turn. Yeah. So Bond, Bond has ever, has the biggest stack at the start of the hand, 46.5 million. Le Chiffre, only 1 million less, 45.5 million. And we've established that Fakuta and Infante have 12 and 11 million, respectively. Everyone limps, and we get to this ace, six, eight flop with two spades. So Bond already has a straight flush draw. Le Chiffre has two pair. Uh, Infante has a set. And Fakutu has the flush draw. And again, I should say very quickly, there is that infamous meme of Mads Mikkelsen where it says, calls a raise out of position with ace, six, offsuit. Um, loses $115 million and dies. Number one, he's in position. He's on the button. Number two, no raise. We now know there was no raise pre-flop. This is new information. I don't think this has ever I been I mean, we just changed the meme to, to limps the button instead, and yeah. it still works. He, he's, he still probably <laughs> makes a mistake, but that's by the by. Um, so this is interesting, Tom. So in, in the hand history, everyone checks the action to Le Chiffre on the button, who bets $5 million, who overbets the pot with two pair and all players call. And again, at this point, it would be very easy to say, what the hell are players like Fakuto and Infante doing just calling off half their chips? They're committing themselves to the pot. Infante's got a set and should be betting to protect. Fakuto's got a monster draw. He should be going with it. But again, if you establish that these aren't very good poker players, it makes sense. Yeah, also don't forget, Infante might just be hoping that Le Chief will do his betting for him. You know, there are other reasons of the situation. Uh, he might think that Nashif's going to bet this flop whether he's, he's caught a piece of it or not. So there, there's a motive there for him to do what he does. Uh, so I don't mind that so much. Yeah. yeah. So the four of spades is the absolute killer card because that is now giving Bond the straight flush. It's giving him the winning hand. Uh, it also does give Fakutu the, it gives him a flush, a losing flush. And, well... Everyone's drawing dead. But regardless of that, everyone now checks. And that's in the movie. Everyone checks the turn. And I get that from everyone's perspective. There's a lot of slow playing going on. I guess there's some caution from Le Chief. Now the spade has come. And then we get the ace of spades on the river. So now, of course, Fakutu improves to the nut flush. Um, we see Infante river a full house. And Le Chief river a better full house. Bond still ahead with the straight flush. This is one of those situations which I guess is highly improbable, but it's not impossible. And, I mean, Joe, we've covered a lot of poker on around the world. We've covered a lot of televised tournaments. It's not beyond the realms of possibility that you would have something this ridiculous. No, not at all. And so when I first saw this movie, it was, I'd been in poker for one year. And so my sort of I thought I was an expert uh, and I hadn't really I thought I had seen a lot of poker. And so this came across to me as very unrealistic. And then 15 years later, having d watched tons of poker, thousands and thousands of hands, it's become less and less unrealistic to me over the years. This shit does happen. Yeah, there are wild things that happen in poker. And I've really come to realize that, like, I was being way too hard on it at the time. 
Coolers happen all the time. And in fact, I I, I would contend that tournaments are decided by coolers way more often than someone making a hero call. Way more often than someone outplaying someone else. It's almost always, how often, James, are we doing poker tournaments where we're three and four hand and we're like, when will this end? And we're just waiting for the cooler to happen. It's true. And we have seen a four-way all-in to end a final table. It's Yes, it, we have. It, it happened seven years ago at the Canada Cup. But anyway, back to Casino Royale, Tom. And of course, the hand then plays itself because everyone just gets all their chips in, right? I think, you know, we've established that really players like Fakuta and Infante should have got their chips in sooner. But the reality is they're all in on the river, playing for the side pot, the big battle between Le Chiffre and Bond. I mean... I get, again, why they did it for dramatic purposes, where everyone reveals their cards in turn. Did you point out that Bond is effectively slow-rolling everyone? <laughs> no, because, of course, in, in the mind of the average punter, that's what bo- suave Bond would do. We know that that makes him a total schmuck. <laughs> we, we know that. But, you know... Most people who walk into a casino for the first time and play a hand of poker and they get they get a big hand, they think that's what they're supposed to do. And they can't understand why they're getting all the abuse they get when they, they slow roll it. Uh, and never mind the fact that Le Chiffre slow rolled him so appallingly earlier with his, his jack. So, you know, it is poetic justice there. So it, it was always going to be like that, you know. And likewise with the, the very slow uh, revelation of hands in the wrong order, obviously they should sort out the side pot first and then go to yeah. the little tiny main pots. But it, you know, it's just not going to happen because then for Kutu and Infante, all they've done becomes irrelevant. So it's a bit yeah. weird to have shown them in the first place is what is what the, the sort of movie goer thinks and then find out, okay, well, where did they go? What, what were their hands worth? Tom, so, I, sorry, James. I, one uh, question I want to get in there because I think we're nearing at the end of our time. Is, is there anything that you begged them not to do that's what i was going to ask that you like that you're please don't do this please 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 don't do this and they did it anyway <laughs> no not really the only okay. thing i was i was super worried about was was a clangor of bonds basically going all in when he thought the sheaf was bluffing once that was in place i was happy to let the drama roll so when you look Fair back enough. at it now are you generally happy is there anything you think now i would suggest differently or have tried to steer them in a different direction no, not really. I'm super happy with it. I, I thought it was it was great poker. I really do. I might have been winning with Jack. Really. Jack Timmer. Ray finds. Next time there is a shot of Rambuswani. I want to see yeah. if anyone in the chat or one of my two co-commentators can recognize the gentleman who is sat directly behind Ram and occasionally is peering in to see what's happening at the table. Okay. We said there'd be some familiar faces in the crowd. I appreciate that his face may not be that familiar, but when I tell you his name, you will recognize it. Hmm. 40,000. And now they change the angle on Rambus Wani just to thwart me. All in by Ram. We're going to flip for a win here. Potentially for the win. There he is. Oh, uh, that is a Scheinberg. That is Mark Scheinberg, one of the two founders of PokerStars. A rare on-camera sighting of a Scheinberg. And called by Rory. Oh, we've got a call from Rory. And Vaswani with the ace-five. Five. If he wins, he Rory is your champion. So this is a unorthodox race, but it is two over cards against a pocket pair. Like Ash G's versus Geo Cities. And it's an ace-high flop, and that sees round Vaswani move out in front. Turn cards. So seven. It is always and coming seven, card. but unless it comes a four, three which it doesn't, Rambaswani will win the Dublin EPT. Three events, three winners. Alexander Stevich, John Shipley, and now Rambaswani. The second Brit to win a European Poker Tour title.
So right now, Noah Boken has the chip advantage. Ram Vaswani with ace jack. And that is a call. Noah with ace queen. Oh, here we go. Raises 100 more, so that's 124K total. And an all in and a call. Ace jack for Ram, ace queen for Noah. Wow. Ace queen is in the lead and Noah covers Ram here is the flop. Yes, show us the flop. Flop is Jack. Oh, it's Jack High. Domination major. rotation, Jack's although the lead. gut shot draw for Noah Boken. Turn card. It's a and that king gives him the straight. The nut straight. And Ram is drawing dead to a queen. Queen for a tie. Here's the river. He can only chop it. It's a no flop. chop. And Noah Boken becomes an EPT champion. And how weird is that, guys, that we almost had a two-time winner on the European Poker Tour in the fourth event of the tour's existence. But yeah, it's crazy. And uh, Ram Vaswani coming in second place. Real kind of passing of the torch. The first... I mean, if it was going to happen when they were playing 180-person field, that was the time. Yeah. Ram Vaswani gets a first and a second in back-to-back -back events. Noah Boken joins the ranks of early EPT champions. Fast forward nearly 20 years, and here we are in Paris on the PokerStars European Poker Tour. It is day five of the main event. The penultimate day when we play down to the final six. And right now we are at seven players. Following the redraw, Medi Chowie bowed out in ninth. Johan Schultz cashed out in eighth. Now, seven remain, headlined by Peter Jorgner, who's got 115 big blinds, nearly 14 million chips. Henry Casper remains in the danger zone. Danger zone! Here's Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. I am James Hartigan, and sandwiched between us is the cuddly Griffin Bencher. I am the meat in your sandwich. Hello, everyone. He is beefy. So blind's now going to 60,000, 120,000 with a 120K big blind ante. I will try and explain the plan as clearly as I can. We would like to play to the end of this level, to the end of level 30. So even if we lose a player during this level, we will play on and then finish play at the conclusion of this blind level. If we don't lose a player in the next 90 minutes, we'll just keep going tonight until we're down to six. Does that make sense, Griffin? Do you follow? Yes, I think. I, th I think he's got it. I think I got it. Yeah. A reminder of the prize money up for grabs and I guess influencing why decisions are so hard right now and why Omri Casper is trying to cling on because jumps with every single elimination. Big difference between seventh and sixth. Big differences between every single payout, including the discrepancy between first and second. 780K for the runner up, 1.17 million for the winner. And of course, no deals allowed under French gaming law. It wasn't. Oh, okay. oh, so there is a out tonight. Yeah. People saying, what if we don't get to six until midnight? A, improbable. B, we will play to the middle of level 32. That's the maximum we will play tonight. Five and a half levels. Correct. So close at the top, Griff. Obviously, Jorgner with nearly 14 million. Raz Van Balea, the qualifier, with 11.3 million. But they have a significant advantage over the rest of the field. Yeah, but um, no, I was quite a big, big swing that happened right. towards the end of the last level. Of course, the massive hand um, between, between Peter Jorgna and uh, Brian Delaney, dropping Delaney in the counts. But you know, also Fabrizio Bigot with that huge hand, the, the trapping with that queen jack straight, getting that big bluff from the what used to be the chip leader in Razvan Balea. Um, so nice to see Bigot find a way as, as Balea now 
with a beautiful hand facing this open for Speckman. How much do you play? Uh, four. Four point one. Thunder Nick watching on Twitch asks, why half a level? Because we have to keep within a certain number of hours each day. And that's one of the reasons why we need to play on tonight should we get to six quickly, because we can't afford tomorrow to be too long. It has been the thing which has provided more headaches during this entire series than anything else is the working time rules, the regulations that require us to stick within a 12 hour window. You got to think of it like a road trip where uh, you can't drive after dark. So you got to do as many miles as you can while you can because you don't know what traffic's going to be like tomorrow. Do you remember in Doville back in the day when you used to joke about them taking compulsory cigarette breaks? Yes. The reality is not a million miles away from that. <laughs> That was, that was a thing, or is it a bit you were doing, or they actually... It was a bit that I, oh, okay. I don't do as often now because, uh, you know, it's out these days. And I would say even the French have gotten better about cigarette smoking in the present day. Yeah, but the good old days, Deauville 2010, whatever it was. Also, no one was watching back then. Certainly not our bosses. I did notice the spike once I jumped on board. <laughs> we go with the nines. I think it needs to play as a pure call here. You know, you are, even though you're very close with Brian Delaney and Constantine held in chips, you are third. You don't want to be three betting chip leaders. Pure call indeed. Feld. And away we go. Heads up to a queen six three flop. Nine's still ahead. And red cards. So just backdoor straight possibilities for Jorgner. Of course, his king and his jack are still live. I'm curious to see if Jorgner is going to be highly motivated to continue on this flop here as he is reaching for chips. That small blind flat is, is quite strong and, you know, the only kind of hands you're really going to fold out are, you know, let's say the jack 10 of clubs and the like. You know, ace jack of diamonds is going to call here. And then, of course, all the pair type hands like the two nines. It's not like this is just a defend from the big blind and your range can be really wide. It really tightens up once you start calling from the small blind. Five of clubs on the turn. We go now an 87% favorite. take some time here just to make it less obvious that you're in check call mode. <laughs> I just think Bigo is balanced with uh, maybe a bit of a slower check in general. Timing balance, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, okay. But I don't really think he would be leading this kind of hand. Legato loves the way he checks. So we have got to the river with both players checking the turn. 1.24 million in the middle. Action on Bigo. Delightfully unique check. Does Jorgna have to bet here, Griffin? No. 
Temptation is certainly there. You, know, you would hate to lose its showdown to ace-10 of diamonds or something, but at this stage, I mean, even a hand like that might call. So it does get checked to showdown. Bigo wins this one. Um, just to take everyone behind the scenes on the live stream for just a mm. second, when we come in in the morning, like an hour before broadcast, Team Sound always have music running to test out all of the systems. And some of their selections, eh, not so good. It but was today, good today. Today on point, we have Mr. Blue Sky by ELO. We also had My Sweet Lord by George Harrison, which was appropriate because our producer, Chris, tells me George Harrison would have been 80 today. No, four. Wait, what happened to George Harrison? He died many, many years ago. Next, you're going to tell me John Lennon is dead. Well, he's not ready. Don't tell him. Okay. Five big blinds for Bigo here. You have a dirty stack there? Yeah, I was about to say the same. So dirty. Mm -hmm. Held in the small blind, King 10 off. Made a great recovery from being down to three big blinds earlier on. Currently has more than 40. It's just a fold griff, five off, five high off. No use trying to stop and go here, rip and dip. Interesting because I think seven six you'd probably call and but five six four five you know it's starting to represent ten percent of your stack up against a very strong player. You have like sorry me sorry how much you have. the next hand. Just check the Google photo of George Harrison and Open. recognize some resemblance with James Hardigan a bit. I'll take it. I'll happily be compared to George Harrison. Clearly the most underrated of the Beatles. Agreed. What's the connection between the two acts? that were playing this morning, Griffin. We had George Harrison, we had ELO. What connects them? England. I'll give you a clue, it's a super group. Um, Spice Girls. Serious answers only. I think I have a guess on that. That was actually my guess, I don't know, you said a super group. Spice um, Girls are not a super group, Griffin. Of I don't course you understand it, what a super group what's is. A super group? A super group is when like you- the super group of foods? It's like it's like Justice League is a super group because it has Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman. The Avengers are a super group. Yeah, so sporty size spice. They were nothing Woman, before spice. the Spice Girls. No, you got yeah, the wrong way around. and then they were super. Nice Seems pretty obvious to me. I didn't look at it. if it was aces. I would have traveling Wilburys. <laughs> traveling Wilburys is the answer. Oh yeah, I would have gotten that. Just you should have given me more time. <laughs> If there are jacks, you want to just smile. Can you name another super no. group? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you can't. Are there any oh, uh, uh, North American the super groups? groups? Yes. Okay, name one. Audio, Audio Slave. Right. Audio Slave is a super yeah, group. Chris Cornell yeah, with one, Rage Against the Machine. Okay. Uh, Temple of the Dog <laughs> was Eddie Vedder and Chris Cornell. Like a stone. Like a stone is Audio Slave, yes. Could you could you consider Band Aid to be a supergroup? <laughs> I 
I guess. Technically, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steven's got a joke on YouTube, Joe. You ready? All right. How did Red Bull break up the Beatles? How? It gave Paul McCartney wings. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't mind Can that. Someone explain that one to me. Fine. Are you aware of the bands that are referenced in that joke? No. I mean, you're a lost cause. Okay, I'm sorry. Love Take Me Down is my favorite Wings song. How did Nickelback come up in conversation? Now there's a super group. Am I getting it? No. Nickelback is something else beginning with S. Serendipitous? Shorter. <laughs> 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 that was a good hand for educating Griffin. Uh, yeah, blind five. on blind, no, check it down. Five. For educating me? We're just saying we kind of had a bit of a diversion on that hand, and we didn't really miss a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. The other guy table king high, and he marks his hip four. On the final table. That's an expensive mistake. Oh, it wasn't the biggest one made, though. Oh, really? One guy jumped, thinking he's PVB. He, he didn't put the UTG open. Oh, no. So it's like he, he didn't jam. One million EV spot. He, did, he didn't quite jam, right? He just put in he put oh, yeah. in a lot of chips to put him all in. Called the point. Nacho Supreme. Big point forwards, the UTG jams. <laughs> and he, and he, he had to fold, fold yeah. yeah. Wow. So, so. UTG had jacks, though. Ray oh, Ray, that show. Ray Ray says, yeah, at least. leave Nickelback out of this. They were the best thing to come out of Canada until Griffin and Ryan Reynolds showed up. Basically, we can't make such big mistakes. Just, just be riding on that That's lightning good. all week. <laughs> you have a good lawyer. <laughs> I said you have a good lawyer. <laughs> Is that a walk? Yeah, it is uh, a walk. walk. That's the winner. Ah, nice. So here's a hot tip, guys. Now we're down to seven players. If everyone is sat around a single table. If someone is not at the table, for example, where is Lena 900? Where is Harry Lodge? Chances are they were eliminated earlier on today. Rune writes in to say, kind of boring final table. People are afraid to actually play. Rune, where have you been? You've been tuned in for at most 15 minutes. Where have you been? More like, where have you banned? <laughs> All right, I'll allow it. Yeah, OK, fair enough. You banned. Thank you, Rune. Yeah, that last level had some phenomenal hands. Afraid to play. Get out of here. Quing suited. Brian Delaney. Raising the button of his nemesis, Peter Yorgna. Not going to face York to this hand. He is going to face Speckman. Do you have some chips behind? Thank you. 
And then a just call here. Yeah. Of 32 bigs. I think that, you know, a lot of players would just shove this as opposed to three betting or calling. You can get it through so often, and you don't really want to get, you know, four bet shoved by a pair of sevens or something or sixes. But deciding to stay under rep, keep in the worst, you know, queens and aces that your opponents will have. And that's exactly what's happening here. I mean, if, if you do just shove the 3.8 million, you're getting folds from the king queen suited. But if it comes queen high, you might make a lot of money. But then it came king high. But oh, you got the ace of diamonds. Boy, oh so boy. many narratives. Jeepers, we got a gut shot. <clears throat> we got diamond draws. We got top pair. So look at look at these guys afraid to play. Well, <laughs> it is a good point though, is how will they play through the streets? How aggressively are they gonna play these hands? Delaney does not want to see another diamond. You gotta charge him to draw. For 60? Checks it for the bank. Yeah, I think Delaney has to kind of play this big draw slow. You know, you have to consider the massive 60,000 euro pay jump that you get when and if Henry Casper busts. I was curious to see if Balea would call because, you know, there are some times that you're just drawing dead and someone has a flush. A pair of sevens now for Belair to go with that straight draw. Delaney still ahead with top pair. I'm very curious to see how Delaney decides to play this. You know, of course, sometimes one of your two opponents can have a flush here. But most of the time, this king queen's going to be good, and, the, and your opponents are going to have exactly what they do have. You know, if Balea had a, a flush, for instance, in the big blind, if this was 7 5 of diamonds, probably would have come in for a squeeze on the flop to protect against hands like the ace queen, ace of diamonds. So. What about two pairs and straights? Well, only Balea can have two pairs, really, right? Speckman's not calling the. Right king eights and the king four, or king seven type hands. Even seven eights suited would have been folding from the small blind here. Not really any reason to get involved with that short stack. Balea, on the other hand, certainly could be turning some two pairs, but two pairs aren't check raising here, right? Like you could just be up against a flush and you don't want to lose six million here with, with a turn two pair. So you're gonna be able to check back a lot of rivers and Speckman has decided to call and it's gonna have under pot back. Wow. Speckman really needs to drill this river. Balea folds, heads up to the river, a pot of 3.18 million. And the river card is the Eight of Hearts, pairing the board. Delaney has a lock on this. And yeah, just snap checks back and gets full value from the King Queen with that turn bet. So Delaney <coughs> recovering some of the chips he lost last level. And Speckman. <laughs> I think so. No, I think so. Plus this moment, I think so. <laughs> yeah, no value bet there because you have to respect as as that your opponent's going to have, you know, a decent amount of flushes there. On the phone. Most of the hands calling from the small blind are going to be suited, like the ace-10 diamonds, yes, ace-jacket diamonds, queen-jacket diamonds, and the like. Fold, fold a lot of better. I, uh, sorry. Deep Dive Max is back again. He says, you have an opinion, banned. Well, if you insist. Under the gun raise from Constantin Held. Uh, 4.9. King and Queen offsuit. Made it 240,000. 
Fold is the button. Denzel Speckman with ace, ten of spades. Speckman now in a very awkward spot, chip-wise. Just 21 big blinds. Henry Casper with 10. Yeah, and Speckman trying to decide what to do with this ace-10 suit. You know, ace-10 off here, I think you got to let it go. You know, if he still had a 3.8 million, I think would have felt way more comfortable in calling here. But, you know, it, it is a bit on the loose side because of Henry Casper's stack. And when you talk about how your range is doing against Held's under the gun open, not that great with something like ace-10. Christian Bale meme, three bet right here. Wow, we just making it a clean milli, putting held in an absolute guillotine. I mean, you're sitting there with your king queen, and this is why this ace three is a nice hand to do with because you are blocking, you know, all those better hands that would go for it here and just get all the money in something like ace king. But even something like ace queen, it's like, what do you even do if, you, if you're in held shoes? Speckman, on the other hand you figure is pretty capped. And look at this, just really, really nice. Hold on. Oh, Specky. Good for you. This is pretty impressive. Yeah, way to pull the trigger with a much shorter stack out there. hi -ya! Yeah, I mean, some players will I see a, uh, empty yeah, the yeah, clip. Yeah, yeah, I see empty the clip, exactly. This is pretty gangster, I gotta say. This is badass. Not something you see every day. Oh, it's not over yet? I mean, it's, you know, you've put in Eight big blinds, and it's another. It's another thirteen to call. Yeah, he got a fold. Wow, Specky! You could be a, up against Ace Deuce sometimes. <laughs> Don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> that was a rip and dip, actually. Nice one, Alan Skin. That was the definition of the rip and dip. R and D, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the guy that said they're afraid to play? What happened to him? I don't know, but it looked like Spectrum's to, but, uh, rail he doesn't want had to uh, the spirit of the <laughs> oh, horse on it. <laughs> You still have all time wings? Sorry? You still have all your time wings? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Times. How many you have? Uh, what's it? 18? 18. He has 18. <laughs> yeah, every time back still. So if you need to pee, tell me. I'll use them for you. Thank I mean, you. at this point, can I have some? <laughs> <laughs> you can buy them. How much? You can make a deal. No deals. 100k a time wing. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd quiet down about unless you want to hear that. E -aw, e -aw. That's what the cops I sound like here. I was just stationed with them. And that's before they turned their sirens on.
Look at these guys, afraid to play. Unbelievable. Are you scared, little boy? Any chance of a Chat Pro Sunday as reward for positive behavior today? <laughs> In the words of Arnold Schwarzenegger at the end of the action masterpiece Commando, no chance. <laughs> Still one of the greatest what ifs in cinema history. What if Fox had got their way and Die Hard had actually been made as a sequel to Commando? Did you watch that mini doc on Netflix about Die Hard? Yes. Because I I had always heard the same thing you had heard that it was like a John, what's his name? Matrix. John Matrix movie, but apparently it was lots of different. I mean, it's based on a novel. There's lots of different yeah. influences, but I think there was. But it was like supposed to be for Arnold. Then it was supposed to be for someone else. Then it was supposed to be another thing. It was. Is it Stephen E. D'Souza who wrote Commando and did the screenplay for Die Hard? Certainly, the draft he did was envisaged as a sequel to Commando, and the John McClane character was John Matrix. Yeah. Another time. Sinatra was supposed to be the guy originally, originally, yeah. Well, no. here we go, guys. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah. Do you know who we're talking yeah. about, by the way, Griffin? Do you know who Arnold Schwarzenegger is? I do, but I've never seen Commando. Believe it or not. Griffin's more of a jingle all the way guy. I am, yes. <laughs> Every Christmas. Delaney betting 150,000 with the gut shot straight draw has been outflopped by Henri Casper. Domination rotation in effect. You can tell me. Hmm? You can tell me. I'll tell you. I mean, Casper has to. Casper has to continue in some. Way, whether this is a shove or a call is really up to him. It's green. Cobb, watching on YouTube. What channel is this being streamed on? Which brand sponsors the EPT? That will give you the answer to your question. And does force a fold from Henry Casper and I you know, I know it's easier when we see the cards, but the reason I don't like the fold is that, you know, Delaney is going to be c-betting there with full range. Yeah. You flopped pretty well with this king-10 here, as we saw. You actually outflopped your opponent. You don't have a lot to, to gain here by folding. You have seven big blinds behind. You, you flopped a good amount of equity. I mean, you know, if, if you had had... 10-9 and the board had been king-nine-deuce, you probably would have just gone with the 10-9, right? So what's... How has this changed when you flop the mid pair? You know, if Delaney has two sevens, what's he going to do? Probably see that yep. and then fold to the shove. So, yeah, mistake there, I think, from, from Henry Casper. Well, that will be a walk for Brian Delaney. Yeah, I could deal with the, the emotional pain this time. Before, I was still too traumatized. <laughs> Understandable. Still got an hour to play on this mm -hmm. level, regardless of what happens. Even if we do see one or even two eliminations, we will play to the end of this Pink level. Yeah, yeah I dream that. Yeah, sure. I that. It's a weirdly cogent comment. Griffin sounds very intelligent when he is talking about poker. <laughs> From VJ. Even if his... They're falling for it. 
concept of a supergroup is <laughs> fundamentally flawed. I wrong. That's another commando line. So you gotta cooperate, right? Wrong. Shoots him through the head. Oh wow. Great movie. So many fantastic one lines. Is that the one with the they get to the chopper or is that Predator? No, that's Predator. Yeah. Predator I've seen many times. Both movies involving the island of Valverde. What do you think of Prey? I have it downloaded to my iPad, haven't seen it yet. So good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good, yeah. Although one of my favorite internet trolls, Joseph Kahn, brings up a good point. He's like, how good could the Predator be if it just keeps getting beaten every single time it comes to Earth? Up and down draw for Jorgna. Delaney with Nada, but it's not going to stop him betting. This is a blind v blind confrontation. It was unraised prey. Yeah, if you're going to find a way to win this hand, you got to start telling your story here. And Delaney doesn't like it. Seeing the call. Love on the turn, ooh. A straight draw and a flush draw. And pretty much nothing for Delaney, who has slowed down on the turn, checking. Usually I'm rooting for the coverage to end early so we can go to dinner, and now I'm rooting for it so that my girlfriend doesn't wake up and see Jorgna. <laughs> Real man playing poker. Yeah, this is not a good card for the machinations of Delaney, I think. Might think now, oh, well, you know, if Jorgna has just the jack or 10x red, is he really going to make some big hero call here? Does he really care that much about this pot? Unfortunately for Delaney, Jorgna does have a flush and will be calling. I think. There it is. Oh, that's a time big chip. Mort says, I haven't seen Commando in ages. I need to rewatch it. I think it's on Disney Plus in most parts of the world. I rewatched it recently. It's one of my favorite Disney movies. <laughs> <laughs> now all I can think about is Jenny. All right, it's less than two big blinds. You have a flush. You got to call here, Jorgna. HTC, have to call. Stop wasting my time. That's a line that I imagine Arnold saying. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know if he ever does it. <laughs> That's true. That's a good bad look like for Jorgna. Powerlifting Planeswalker says he looks like Nate's dad from Euphoria. Yeah, that's pretty bad in a good way. <laughs> Isn't that McSteamy, right? Yeah, McSteamy, yeah. And McSteamy was in a horror movie I absolutely loved called Feast. I don't know if you guys have seen that one. No, I don't think I have. So Vernon Wells, who plays the villain Bennett in Commando, I believe is on Cameo and will do videos for you as Bennett. I think he may even put on the kind of chainmail vest to give oh, you the wow. full experience. Wow. If you look closely, though, the chainmail vest he uses is made from soda tabs. <laughs> Go on, following the advice. Come on, what are you doing? Take the advice, you're right. Boons asks, have you tried Arnold's soundboard on internet? What is it, 2002? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's surrounding by happy. I have two waters as well. Oh. I don't know why I have two. Yeah. All your batteries. This is a man, this is a man. What color is that? 
Huh? Advantage okay. York now. Cherry Cola. Drilling that free. Now I'm going to sway someone. Jorgner betting 125,000 with a pair of threes. Uh -oh. That's a raise. By the way, what is going out on in the room that requires someone to be on the PA system like every 30 seconds? What? Yorg, no, nah, don't even think about it. I know it's nice when everything's easy peasy. And you're just betting and people are paying you off and you got kings, you're ever set, but this is the little attrition pots. You gotta you gotta fight with these guys. You gotta call with the river flush five of clubs. You gotta if you bet here, you gotta call the rays. You got this, man. I believe in you. You're Cheekbones and your ah, damn it, Jogna. Nice hand spec. Ruck the Mark says clearly they're announcing on the PA that folks should rail the final table to get a glimpse of Jogna. <laughs> Amazing specimen at TV table. <laughs> a specimen and a specimen, side by side. There you go. Mark's asking what watch is Jorgna wearing. We established earlier on it's a Rolex Yachtmaster 2. Is it nice? It's, very I mean, nice. it's, it's, it's a nice watch. It's personally not to my taste. No disrespect to Peter Jorgner. It's not something I would want to wear. But mm. it's not that I can't objectively see it. It's because you can't off. pull it off. I understand, yeah. Well, let, let me, I, I, don't know what, I don't know what your kind of style is, Griffin. So let's have a look. Let's see if Griffin would go for this. James wouldn't be able to raise his arm after a while if he wore that watch. I mean, I bought a tag in 2012. And it stopped working. I never got it fixed. So I'm not really... Watch expert. It's expensive. Oh yeah, we can never pull this off. I bet he can though. It's a little bit busy for me. Yeah. I feel like to wear something like that, you really need to have yacht energy, which Peter Jorgenen has. Okay. Tough crowd, this final table, huh? Just some real blasters. Everyone's oh. too good. And I think Held is getting a little bit punished here because, you know, He's in that six, five, six slot with Speckman and himself around 35 big blinds, and he's getting some playable hands that normally you would raise seven-handed, like the king queen under the gun and the 10-9 suited under the gun one. But my friend, these guys know they can put so much pressure on you. You saw the king queen get squeezed by the ace three, and just there, ace nine suited comes after his 10-9. You gotta tighten up. And I think he's, he's kind of recognizing how Handcuffed he is at this final table until Casper busts. Speckman on the button. King Jack. Makes a 240,000 8-6 suited in the small blind for Bambalea. 
pembeli ya. Nine hundred. I could articulate what's going on right now. You show me your phone, I show you my phone. <laughs> Seven-handed with 47 minutes left to play on level 30. What's her name? Sorry? Katya. 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 Hi. <laughs> Here it is, Casper. All in. Oh, no, that's how you go all in. She'll be proud of luck. The luck your wife brings you. You get the hand to go all in as we speak of her. Get him, Casper. What's it gonna be? Nope. Wow. Oh, you won that action this time. Fantastic. <laughs> Let me just have to talk about your wife more. <laughs> you have kids? Do you have kids? <laughs> <laughs> I do. Thank you. How many? <laughs> two. So, two more jokers. <laughs> Are they here? Uh, no. Macy says the day will end with six players left. <laughs> exactly. Yes? Question mark? <laughs> I like throwing myself. The plan is to get down yep. to six, but if that happens before this level is up, we will play to the end of level 30. We'll play the 46 minutes left on the clock. Aren't you glad, Joe, that I vetoed chat pro Saturday? I'm so glad. I could get used to this, actually. The frozen Zebra wants to know what time is it? 7.17 in the evening, Central European time. Here you go, Griff. Quack, quack. Quack, quack. Ducks, fly together. But probably not this hand. Maybe you should fold. He's <laughs> 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 like, oh, someone saw I folded a pair there. Remarkable success. <laughs> it seems like so unsure about it. Like, do we do it? <laughs> uh, that was really unsure. Yeah. You need to walk on the a reminder table. of the mini EPT Paris series. <laughs> because late okay. registration is open in the second event of the day. It's a $25 buy-in, unlimited re-entry. And there's one more starting at 8.15 tonight, which is a $1.10 Hyper Turbo freeze out. Most bank rolls should be able to fit that one. Tomorrow, main event Sunday, mini main event, $5.50 with an EPT Monte Carlo package added and awarded to the winner. Um, there was a question, which of course I've now lost. Uh, from Scary Crazy Butter Knife. What's the next big tournament after this one Ooh. that these guys are covering? So there's a few things coming up I want to tell you about. Obviously, we've got the Sunday Million Anniversary in March. We've got the Irish Open over Easter weekend. Mm -hmm. And then EPT Monte Carlo, end of April. Plenty going on. Speckman opening here with Ace Jack in early position. Layout with Queen Nine suited. Has been finding some spots to assert his dominance, his eight figure stack. And finds another one here with the Queen Nine of Spades, and I'm not surprised that he goes for it. Speckman 
does open maybe a little wider than he should be on these stack depths given Casper's stack. However, Ace Jack, you know, I don't care who you are, you're going to be opening up this hand and maybe we might expect to see Speckman shove sometimes. Wait, but with, instead, it's just going to call. With Casper having seven big blinds? Well, I just mean, you know, if, if, if Speckman is going to be opening as wide as he is, he's going to have to protect that activity by, you know, being willing to put in a little wider than maybe some other people would. Now, having said that, it plays nicer as a, as a call because you don't just blast all in into the, you know, nutted range that, that happens to be there for Belia. Belia. So I like the call, but, you know, it's still a bit unorthodox to be raising and calling a three bet with ace jack off when there's a big pay jump like this. Well, it's paid off the Speckman. Top pair, so decent kicker, 93% <laughs> equity, and facing a continuation bet from Balea of 425,000. I mean, in the same way the ace-10 suited was very, like, unexpected. Right. Because of Casper's stack, you know, Speckman's willing to, uh, to go with it in certain spots to sort of protect all that activity that he wants to bring to the table. I, I don't totally disagree with you. All I'll say is that Casper being at seven big blinds is different than Casper being at like 18 big blinds. Yes. Queen on the turn gives Balea a pair. Speckman still around a nine to one favorite. Checks a second time. And Balea checks behind. River card. No. Is a nine giving Balea two pair. No. 7%, less than 7% on the flop, running cards to make two pair, and Hello. Speckman shoves the river! Oh, no. Sorry? <laughs> All in for 3.1 million, and ah. I don't see Balea folding this. No. I don't like the term ICM, you know what, but this is it. Belair getting an accurate count. Oh, this is so unfortunate. Belair calls, and that will see Denzel Speckman eliminated in seventh place. Oh. Good game. Good game. Everything is not funner. Unlucky, bro. Gross. Wow. Yeah, man. When Balea goes runner, runner. So Speckman cashes for 187,650 euros. So I guess How much day? laddering no, has Casper to done today? 40 more. Oh, uh, yeah, with 40 oh. more Seven big blinds. Uh -huh. Not even a million chips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> End of this level. We're done. All right. All right. But we finished this level. So, nice answer. Mario confirming with the players that we are going to play out this level even though yeah. we've got to six. We are going to play to the end of level 30. We've got 40 minutes left on the clock, so we know we will be done in less than an hour's time. Yeah, and a little, uh, you know, obituary there for Speckman. Really, really well played all over the coverage on the feature tables. Someone who is prepared to battle in all these different scenarios. And uh, I was really impressed with what I saw. Just a, a spot of really bad luck there with seven left. Can my family for everyone? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm no, seeing no. a lot of people. <laughs> you can talk about how many cats I have. I think I have about <laughs> being critical. And I think that's just unlucky. I have two. Huh? Can I have it here? No, because right? I met some Because I, I, I kind of get, getting. Well, Balea has retaken the chip lead, 136 yeah, big yeah. blinds. It's on yeah, on, in the left. It's confusing it feels, a bit yeah. otherwise. Yeah. The box on the Especially when someone bets like this from the small, uh, yeah, from the button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I was watching this. I'm always a maniac that takes it like, over there. Yes. Oh. I'm glad I'm not the only person who yeah. is really irritated. Thank you. And so we play on now six-handed with everyone so guaranteed well, the better part of <laughs> a quarter <laughs> of a million. Do you have cats? I mean, pretty jubilant table here. Everyone got real chatty all of a sudden now that they're guaranteed a quarter million. Yes. And pocket heads for Fabrice Bigot. And by the way, I, I, a lot of people noticing that uh, Balea missed the handshake from Speckman. I don't think that was intentional. I think he was just wrapped up in the moment. 
I still can't quite get over how Casper has just watched player after player go out, <laughs> sitting with around <laughs> 10 big blinds. Face. Currently <laughs> seven big blinds. Yeah, scared to play, reminder. What are you looking for? He's trying to come. He's stuck. He's the same position. He's like 17 million. Mike is only from the position. Boy, oh boy, did they get chatty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What are you guys doing later? What are you having for dinner? Where are you guys going to go? You guys want to hang out? You guys want to do some? 16 and a half. Yeah, okay. Well, it's great right. knowing that you're going to be yeah, done at a reasonable time. You can make dinner plans without having to worry about there only being a 75-minute break. You can make dinner plans without worrying about how much everything on the menu costs. <laughs> I'd like to think they were already at that stage. Sixteen. Yeah, I think this is uh, spot on from Rosenmadge. Casper has seen like 10 people get knocked out while three. always having a sub 20 big blind stack. That's really my dream. Just laddering? Just laddering, yeah. Yeah. Jorg now with the king seven, king of clubs. It's not the worst board to find a continue here because you're going to have some equity against hands like the one Bigo has. And you're going to find some free cards on cards like that. You can even bluff on the river with the king high. If I had pocket tens on this board, I'd be like, come on! I only hope his lawyer doesn't contact our lawyer. Yeah, then we're can't wait to get counterfeited with two tens here. It's so pretty. How can I fall? Thirty-six minutes on the clock. Confirmation that play will end when this level concludes. Okay, well, not counterfeited. I just saw Jack then I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself forward. Excuse me. Bold prediction from Zampa. There have been more than 140 EPTs and no Romanian winner. Until now. Okay. Year of Romania. It is a bit of a tough river to bluff. And Jorgna. Gonna check it down and be shown the best, the best, but the best two tens. No, nope. you win. I need to take it down. You win one more. Can you? Yeah. The only pink card. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that one you would have appreciated. Hmm? And that one you would have appreciated on the river. Oh, yeah. You have nine. Uh, you have nine. Uh, two, four, six, seven, eight, eight point four. Can I move here? He wants to move over. Yeah, it would be good. I have eight, I have eight four. Eight point four. Uh oh, I'm so close. I have eight something as well. <laughs> you have eight, eight six? Huh? Eight hundred six? <laughs> I have eight ninety, I guess. And there's eight four. Ah. <laughs> The, uh, the chip leader has 134 big blinds. Henry Casper has seven big blinds. Oh, bless Maria for making an appearance in the live chat. You're not going to get to hear Maria today. She's not here gonna for us. Going to be finishing earlier today, and we've already deep powered down the uplink to the Eiffel Tower transmitter. Something tells me Maria might not be in the chat if, uh, you know, certain players weren't still at this table. 
Are you saying that Maria is simping Jorgner? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. On the street. Remember the street where he jumped on me on the bus? Yeah. I blocked. He also blocked. Oh, really? Yeah, really? Block. What did he have? What did he have? He has eight ten suited. Eight ten suited. It's a pretty gangster line. Wow. Yeah. I like it a lot. What did you have? I had like eight. Yeah. yeah. Look at the disrespect with these guys. <laughs> what did you fall, ace queen? King queen. So that's some great commentary there on one of the more impressive hands that Speckman played at this final table. If I fold ace queen, I'm, I'm a bit more mad, maybe. <laughs> that's no way. The ace ten of spades, flatting on the maybe button, facing. Yeah. yeah. Constantine's held king queen under the gun open, and then that squeeze from Bigot with the ace three. Yeah, I would totally and I agree. Pretty gangster line. line. Like he's being the man, but yeah. We see. For the, for the, <laughs> now, if these rivers have taught me anything, we're about to see a three hit. <laughs> I, I don't pull the big... Oh, no, you don't know nothing. Ones, no. No. Not sure. yeah. Especially because Jordan has checked trip playing. tens. I'm saying, uh, it's not that obvious as it looks. Palaya checks. Okay, not this time. <laughs> Better check ten more. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Give me a screen and that's what you know. I ain't for them. Then it's good. Yeah, river. Ooh. That is good. That is pretty good. That is good. Yeah, some random innocent people that we can do. It's okay. That's fun. And big one. So, need to be so James, what if we yeah, got another elimination? Will we play through the whole yeah. level? So weird. No, whatever. Okay, it's 30 minutes. It's all all like the way. way. Yeah, I know. It's okay. It's okay. And no one is half an hour. Half I mean, an hour. I mean, we can see each other better. Yeah, yeah. I agree. It's fine. So it's only 31 minutes. Yeah, we play one more. 31 minutes. Yeah. I mean, obviously, playing another 30 minutes, there is a chance we could lose someone else. In which case, we'll come back with five tomorrow. I would say. If we lost two players, and again, this is an improbability, but if we Yellow lost two players, stop the count. I yes. think we'd have four to stop. <laughs> Can't come back with fewer than four. No one more. We'll call it, ref. Time. I can even show pictures. <laughs> <laughs> now you're using my track. Oh, is it? oh, they took my phone. Away. Man, this is you know, great. How much fun they're having. I'm right not now. appreciating this home oh, game okay. energy. Like we're playing for <laughs> a million plus dollars here. Cousins, neighbor, everything. Cool. <laughs> well, Delaney has raised oh, the yeah. cut off with jacks. Bigo has queen jack in the bag. Still unlucky. Yeah, of course, of course. Absolutely no way to get out of defending this. Ace, 10, 8. So a gut shot for Bigo. Double gut a shot. Double, yeah. A double belly the buster. Like, any What's the thing where they force feed a goose till its stomach explodes? Foie gras. Foie gras. There you go, belly buster. <laughs> the foie gras. I like it. Delaney continuing 220,000. <laughs> Go with 40% of the equity.
220,000 apiece for a diamonds on the turn. Delaney, three to one favorite. Was it a four? Is that one of the straight? No. As our French colleagues like to say, second bow. <laughs> second bow. 580,000 into 1.1 million. Again. This pot is getting huge. The pot is 2.26 million. And the river card is a deuce. <laughs> yeah, I'm very surprised to see this call on the turn from Bigo. You know, maybe if you had a diamond in your hand and your plan would be to sort of lead out bet big on the river, but you don't have a diamond in your hand. Maybe that's still the intention, because you're not going to hit your nine and your king very often, and that looks like a give up. Check, check. Jack's win at showdown. Brian Delaney up to nearly 9.6 million. It's 9.6 exactly, actually. 80 big blinds for Brian. And knocking on the door of Peter Yorna's second place stack. Yeah, and really the table feels very much divided 50-50 right now. Yeah. You've got Balea, Yorgna, Delaney, the three big stacks. Then you've got Bigo, sub 50 bigs. Constantine Held, sub 30 uh, bigs. And then Henry Casper playing just seven big blinds. Thank you. Yeah, you know, especially with the, the big edge that you have over Constantine Held and Henry Casper stack, you know, calling those six big blinds on the turn out of position with that double gutter, with the ace on board, I think it was a bit ambitious. Yeah, but if he got there, oh, that would have been sweet. Yeah, but he makes no money. But it would have been sweet. <laughs> okay. Good luck. Let's go. Casper all in. With pocket fives. Casper, Berg, Berg, Casper. Aren't they just talking about pocket fives? Talking about something about a set of fives, I don't know. I like Casper's odds here. Not that many players to get through. Works again. Whoa. One more. Oh, no. That oh. one's folded. Nice. Not a big fan. <laughs> is that 3.5 no? 3.5? 3.5? Uh, uh, 3. 5, yeah. A bit more, no? Three point, yeah, close to 3.6. Oh. Ah, okay. Sorry, I didn't realize it was that close. Casper okay. still playing seven bigs, because of course now he has to post. Delaney. Under the gun, folds. Jorgner passes King five. Chip leader, Razvan Balea, King five offsuit. He's 
out. A bit more. Uh, a bit more. Ace Queen on the button for Fabrice Bigot. Players in the blinds have 29 and 7 big blinds, respectively. Yeah, this is a great spot for Bigo. Raises to 300,000. Ace 9 for Constantin held in the small blind. Has Casper looked at his hand yet? He looks pretty interested right now. I think held needs to tread pretty lightly here. Of course he is though. Oh, no, oh no, 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 no. Held moves all in. Casper folds and Bigo has to call. And we're gonna have a domination situation. And the prospect of Constantin Held going out in sixth place when he had near enough 30 big blinds and Henry Casper was sitting there nursing a seven big blind stack. I mean, this does feel like top of the Eiffel Tower straight to the pavement. Yeah, you know, Hell just thinks there's going to be so many raised folds from Bigo here. So hard for him to get a premium. But this is pretty darn close to a premium. It does call. Oh my goodness. Bigo gets the count, makes the call. A domination situation. One time chip leader, Constantin Held at risk and behind. Look at the percentages. It's Queen. One point. Yeah, and this is why Bigo decided he has to call because of those ace jack, ace ten. No, no, And apparently ace nine type shoves. Okay, sorry, I Jeepers. This is good for you, sir. Let's see. The flop is Jack eight six. Pick a seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like two spades game. in the favor uh, of Bigo. Oh. Are you off me? I would say no. Desperately yeah. looking for some much. additional outs because on the turn. Off. Seven of spades. Yeah. So a seven of spades is a friendly one. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> Does have an open-ended straight draw, so queens okay. and sevens now I'm not gonna ask are working you know for it. I'll take a queen. <laughs> Held needs hit on the river. And he does not. And he's out in sixth place. It's Constantin Held who I mean, cashes for 244k. Two big blinds. That's all good. Incredible. Okay. Okay. That was a big one for Horace. Yes. <laughs> well, if that was a jump from the Eiffel Tower, Henry Casper is using a ladder to climb the outside. <laughs> and look at these chip stacks. Casper is making money by just not doing anything. Casper is now guaranteed 317,050 euros. The ghost of EPT oh, Paris. Did you count it? Henry Casper. I mean, look, he's yeah. still a super short stack. He's still unlikely to win the damn I'm thing, but like Henry Casper I'm not used to have so many has <laughs> laddered this tournament like a champion. Ah. Well, maybe not a champion, but. It's around nine. A ladderer. <laughs> and I still, I still yeah. can't quite believe that Constantin Held shoved ace nine from the small for 30 bigs there, Griffin. Believe it. I mean, we've been watching Constantin Held play for a few days on the feature table now, and someone that has, you know, lived and died by his aggression, and, and in most cases has been right on the money with That's some a good of his point. moves. And, you know, it's, it seems so disastrous because he, he ran into that, you know, really very unlikely hmm? situation really where Bigot has a hand he needs to call with. I mean, you know, the times that Bigot's just opening King-10 off there, he just folds and 
We don't really think much of it, even though it is, of course, a risky ICM shove. And this is just the way that the game goes sometimes. I'm sure a lot of people would have played that ace nine differently. Maybe three bet fold. Um, or maybe even just fold and just make sure you get into that top five and that 80k pay jump. I mean, but you're right though, Griffin. That sort of style is what got him there in the first yeah. place, right? So. Yeah, we've seen some great poker from, from Constantine Held, and he should hold his head high and yeah. have technically made the official final table. Oh my word, look at this. Delaney flopping trip <laughs> fours. So, we still have 18 minutes left to play on the level. 18 minutes left on the day. And if we do lose a player, be that Omri Casper or anyone else, <laughs> we'll have to stop there. We will definitely not want to come back tomorrow with fewer than four players. Well, Delaney's got his chance now to get some back from Jorgna. Assuming Jorgna doesn't spike a set again, AKA a full house. Then Delaney is wasting no time raising here. This might put an end to this hand altogether. I know you told me. I was ever seen. They even had the set. Yeah, we've seen Jorgna play a bit on the cautious side in spots like this, and most of the time has been right. But it is a pretty strong hand, and Delaney's going to be check raising, you know, some heart combos and things of that nature. And, you know, Jorgna is still drawing quite live to a 10 if it comes. Like five hours. At the end, my body can move, I guess. That's been a long oh, you know, if man. you think your opponent's going to check raise the 10 7 of hearts here, which you unblock because you do not have a heart, you're probably burning money by folding every time. So I think you are going to, that's why we see a call here. Brick City with the five of spades on the turn. Does bring a second flush draw, but in this context, pretty much irrelevant. I'm very curious to see what kind of sizing we get from Delaney here. And putting out, oh yeah, that's a big daddy. That's a pot size bet. And yeah, to that size, Jordan is just gonna going to get rid of it, I think. $2.375 million. Seems like a good time to go home. You don't have to fold right away, though. Uh, we can just keep the camera on you and your beautiful orange sweater. Yeah, old jawline. Time banks and a little forty thousand dollar watch. Classically, your Burning Man trimmed beads. beard. No hurry. For a guy like me, the trophy might be small. Have you seen it? I want him in my room. No, I believe yeah. He looks like Cable come to life. Oh, yeah, sure. Like what Josh Brolin was trying to do. Young Cable. <laughs> Don't do it, Peter. I'm not sure I can handle much more torching of ICM today. The problem with this spot is you've already visibly given off your dis displeasure with the spot. I mean, I guess we only know it's genuine because we can see the cards, but 
you know, if your opponent did have a bluff here, you'd probably come in for the shove on the river. And you're certainly not going to call another six million. Oh, you are not really, really thinking about this one. Casper just chilling over there. Yeah, yeah, you guys do your thing. Finally lets it go. Casper's just like, let me know when there's no three fault. left. <laughs> Ooh, I had a four. Mm. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, you, said, you said good four, right? Yeah, I had a four. You had that king, right? Huh? Yeah. Top lay down. Me? Yeah. Oh, him. Yeah. Okay, that's good. No, no, no time back. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to be fast. Yeah, yeah, I ran out making a bad coup again. Like the same like yesterday. You should have fought him before he left. He has like 17 of them. <laughs> it's insane, no? He had 18 the whole yeah. time. What is have, you seen, have you been playing against him like a lot and he's always like snapping at this? I mean, not snapping, but like. Oh, he's very fast. Everything below 30 seconds. Everything. Everything. I'm sorry, the left on line. That's a big play. So a maximum of 12 minutes left on the day. We will finish earlier if another player is eliminated. Got 12 minutes. Think he uh, can make it? I'm not worried about Casper. Yeah, I know. I'm He's worried gonna about hold on. else. I mean, someone might just get it in pre for 70 bigs with like pocket threes <laughs> and walk into aces. Good for. That's good, right? Even though they're going to be playing shorthanded tomorrow, I think it should be a pretty entertaining final table. So make I mean, sure you join us from 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, Central European time. going to be deep AF. We might still have to make some level adjustments. There's no guarantee it's going to be done quickly. By the way, when a bunch of stuff was going on, someone in chat, I missed the name, was uh, wanted to share their success. They had won a $1.10 tournament. Didn't mean to gloss over that, but it was a pretty busy level. Congrats. It's been a day where something has been happening most of the time. Yeah. Three pretty darn good hands. Yeah. You, you give me something to play with, I will play immediately. Don't you worry. <laughs> No man's num num. Num num. So this is. Numbers two, three, and four in chips. Interesting decision to play this as a quite a small out of position raise. You know, the raise preflop was to 240. You're not really going to get folds in this right? spot. Especially from hands as strong as these. It's just a 3x. So uh, it's, a, it's a bit weird for Delaney. It's a good price, but you're purely out of position. And oftentimes your opponents are going to have better kings than jacks. In this case, we Ooh. see that. But wow. it being suited, and like I said, you know, you put out 240 and it's just 470 more or whatever. So this got exactly zero folds. So we're just playing a massive pot with pocket eights now. Three ways. High flop. So if you go with the best of it, 81% favorite. And oh boy. It is Jorgna with the eights who's betting here. Yeah, as the aggressor here, three handed, you know, you can't if you if you think about the kind of boards you expect, you're gonna expect at least one over most of the time. And you're gonna have to bet those boards so that they don't get a free card and yep. find their other over if they haven't already found, you know, the queen. So even though we can see that 
you know, the queen has been hit by Bigo. You know, Bigo could have had ace jack off. Could have had ace 10 of spades and be folding to this bet. So you need to protect. If you're taking this line preflop, you kind of need to bet here to fold out the hands with equity. It's almost an eight. There's a 220 open. I feel small, man. We have a comment from Three Beer Please on Twitch, which <laughs> I will read in the voice that should be afforded to it. Worst final table <laughs> ever. How can these guys be so bad and make final table? I am shocked. Oh, that's the life right there. Just chip lead and your love giving you a little, little rub down, a little massage. Playing for $1.17 million. Yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. $1.5. Oh, we are coming in for a bet. Every hand right now is making me really nervous. Everyone has just completely ignored Casper, as if he's a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Are we the only ones who can see it? <laughs> nice, Sam. Thank you. He's just sitting there like Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis and Beetlejuice being like, no, don't do it. <laughs> Last six minutes of the day, boy. Six minutes on the clock. Six minutes until the conclusion of day five. Unless we lose a player in the last Oh, come on. Minutes. Stop it. Not going to happen. Oh, yeah? With Casper and his six bigs? Look Casper at this. is the master ladderer. Look at this, by the way. 131 <laughs> big blinds with the chip leader. 89, 87, 83. All those guys bunched up together now. And then, Murray Casper with seven big blinds. Casper, the friendly coast. <laughs> Button raised from Delaney. With Queen 10 off. Jorgna folding Jack 7. The layer with King 10 in the big. Oh, oh, the layer. Just a little flick in. Have I mentioned, by the way, it's the year of Romania? Year of Romania! A7 deuce or spades. King high still ahead. Check it down next hand. Checks up for the bank, Joey. <laughs> I see bad night you bubble gum. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Well, the see bet wins Delaney the pot. How many hands would we like to squeeze in now? Two, three most? Two, I think, probably. Again, because no redraw, we will or just play to the end of the draw. level. There will not be like pause in the clock and drawing number of hands or any of that jazz. Pointed in the right direction. Oh, okay. nice. I always adjust myself. Oh, yeah. All day long, oh, people have oh, been like saying Razvan Balea is in trouble. Yeah, but he's chip leading. He, what, he was seeing you do it, or? Ah, that's cool. He's very attentive. We only have the class LED to know. Yeah. Trophy could do with a little bit of a spit polish before tomorrow. Uh, unfortunately, it's against French law. You always go deep into high space. Always. To clean the trophy. Yeah, because they're the best, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. You won't expect, like... King 8 under the gun. Stealing, like, and Casper's thinking feet. about it. <laughs> yeah, Oli. Good for you. Shoves for his last 880,000. 
Round to the blinds. The layup folds to the small. Be go in the big. Ooh, count, please. Oh. Count, please. Oh. Count sounds like Queen 10. <laughs> Pocket threes. Oh, yeah, that's getting called. That's the queen ten of pocket pairs. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. How many bigs is it? Seven. Seven. Good luck, boys. snap off. All it's right, we are flipping. This is an unconventional like race, but nonetheless, yeah. it is a race. Good luck. Yep. Thanks. Like Bordeaux I'm versus Champagne. Last child. <laughs> One of these two things has a slight mathematical advantage. Talking regions. Mm. This one's just locked up. You got this one. Yeah. Let's see how I can miss this one. That's the type of confidence you need. Casper so needs to I connect with like the board not. to survive. No, it feels like it's over there. Pocket three. King high flop. And looking good for a Casper double up. Would you take uh, a fight? For, for a Casper? Yeah. Yeah. Same question. Bear, Casper. <laughs> Go ahead. Whatever. Didn't help much, though. <laughs> <laughs> Still has to fade a three. Uh, two outs for Bigo. Two cards. That's a good one. That's Thank you. But that so will see. Now. Casper yeah. double up and become a 16 big blind stack. Ninja. Matan is good. Yeah. And we are only going to be able to squeeze in one more hand today. Uh, one minute left 90. on the clock. 90. And then we will draw a line under day 90. five. And there is a strong chance that five players will be bagging their stacks. Even giving you all in green. And so coming back like to play right. tomorrow on final table. Yeah, day. like yeah. it's still like Reach for a second. Yes. Okay. Okay. Seven and a half. Have a pair versus seven and a half. We're gonna be cold. <laughs> this cat. Sometimes she's doing crazy things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Looks like it's the last hand of the day, boys. A little look at the I rail there. Falls, which yep. I'll be kind of appreciative of. Okay, you see those faces. I'm sure we'll see them again tomorrow. Uh, we know you. We're going to tank for 15 seconds just to make sure. Wow. Yeah, you made it. <laughs> That's not in my principle. I don't do this. You no. make the final day. You're not. Well, Maybe still a chance you don't. Like, <laughs> he was even too fast for me. Not even in the same speed as you. Like, he was so fast. Incredibly fast. Ooh, Malaya. Okay. the night sex. Jordan is going to make it. Big Go is going to make it. one time, last time. Let's go. Oh, no. Yeah. No such luck. Okay. Okay. Tomorrow, boys. See you tomorrow, right. boys, says Henri Casper, as play comes to a close. I have like three times less than I started with today. Casper <laughs> is going to continue haunting this final table. Yeah. Congratulations, yeah. guys. These are the five players who will return tomorrow and play for the inaugural uh, EPT Paris perfect. title and trophy and perfect. the first prize perfect. of more than a million euros. How's the thing? You can't win any. any. You have perfect. I mean, look at this. is beautiful. What day? And he buy my, my belief. I think today might be memorable enough that I will remember it. <laughs> this, is just a, this is a pure 300. What? So they are going to color up the blues overnight. I'm tired of it. Add no more. 300. Thank you. So we're going to kick off the action tomorrow at level 31. Blinds will be 100,000, 150,000 with a 150k big blind ante. Five players returning for the final table, the final day of the Paris leg of the Pokestars European Poker Tour. It's between, it's between you two. 
Oh, and who are those three. players? Oh. It's the start of day chip leader, Razvan Balea, who will come in as chip leader with 15.6 million. Peter Jorgner from Sweden playing 10.7 million. Brian Delaney from the UK, now living in Mexico, has 10.4 million. Fabrice Bigot, the last remaining French player with 9.68 million. Omri Kasper, still the short stack. The Estonian has 1.7 million, just 11 big blinds. And a reminder of what they are paying for. Still a lot of the 7.7 .7 million euro prize pool in play. 317 grand for the next player out. 412k for fourth. More than half a million for third. Nearly 800k for the runner-up. And the winner tomorrow will receive 1,170,000 euros with no deals allowed. Check out what's happening here at EPT Paris. Updates and stories can be found on the PokerStars blog. And of course, we will be here tomorrow for the fifth and final day of our broadcast, the final table of the EPT Paris main event. And we are live at the slightly later time of 1 p.m. Central European time. We will see you then. But for now, from Griffin Bencher, Joe Stapleton, Nick Walsh, and me, James Hartigan, it's good night from Paris. Thanks for watching.